Yeah, it's classic for some of these Fijians, you know, the way they um, may hold the ball in the way they would. You know. So the score stands um, 12 to the Central Kings. <coughs> and the Western Plex has still got a score. And seven's the team that scores. It kicks off and uh, Eidendorf is there very, very quickly, but so is Matoto, the Tongan born player. Now he flicks it wide, that needed to go to hand. Achong is out there. Two tries yesterday to Richie Achong. Seems to break that first tackle with ease, does Achong. And there he is in support again, Matoto. They need to get it wide here now. They've brought everybody in and now's the time to go wide. Achong identifies that and that's where they need to try and push the ball here, Muirhead has it outside is Falal two on one they should score if they can get it wide Taya Singer one to beat beautiful tackle but he gets to his feet rises and runs around to score the first try for the Northwestern Blacks and that's a great response from the team in white and black well worked Bjorn Jasinger one of the smallest players in this tournament really but uh, surely got cuts as we look at the replay Richard Dharmavala coming around as a uh, a cover tackle but it wasn't good enough he just diamonds his legs spring leg now the key to that try was that they worked it down the left hand flank they drew in all the defense from the central kings and when they decided to go wide it was a matter of the ball will always beat the man they just ran straight they drew the players and then they got it wide and there is your try scorer taya singer so the blacks comes right back into it well, the gap has been closed now to 12 points to 7, 5 the difference. you here with ball in hand. That is the siren for the end of the half. Aidendorf goes high and rises and brings down the ball, tries to kick out of the tackle that's there. Extra defender comes in and so now there will be space out wide and Mulivoru identifies that and he goes wide. Now they get it through the hands. Here's Turner. Turner, that acceleration that he's got. The offload now and then the break. Vilvara scored one. Here comes try number two for the young man. And that's just how dangerous the Central Kings are right from the kickoff. They brought it down beautifully from Aidendorf and then they pushed it wide. Yeah, a beautiful uh, created try there. Uh, Nigel just flicking, flipping it to, to Vilvara. And of course, that far from the line, he's their goal man. So dangerous right on the strike of half time and they go into the breakdown with a psychological advantage as well the gap had closed to five it's now been extended to ten this to take it out even further Willie Bodder struck it well no wind to speak of today he struck it very well <coughs> converted it there 12 points the difference and the Central Kings are leading the Northwestern Blacks at half time by 19 points to seven absolute delight pleasure and a thrill to have the first lady here supporting her sons but just the love of the game of sevens as well I'll tell you what i've traveled all around the world and very rarely have i seen the president <coughs> and the first lady turn up to sporting events as they do here in sri lanka it's absolutely brilliant yeah their support has been enormous uh, right throughout um, uh, their, um, of course their, their three uh, three boys career and uh, of course for sri lanka rugby as well and she's, she looks very colorful with really. I think she's wearing the, the young son's uh, <laughs> uh, jersey. That one please, Yoshita, <laughs> uh, the older son. Might be a little bit of rivalry between the, the brothers, but yeah, some lovely stories we were told about uh, the First Lady and how she supported the eldest son in particular and uh, would travel with him to every single match that he played in, regardless of where it was. Mulivoto gets us underway. The lead is 12 points to the Central Kings. Don't write off the Northwestern Blacks. They've shown in the first seven minutes that they can be very competitive as Ah Chong has the ball. 
Now he pushes it wide to Abzal. Abzal out to Muirhead. Breaks the first tackle, does Muirhead then. It's been stripped off him, but he's got it back now. Aiden Dorf comes in to effectively make the tackle. Muli Voro is there over the ball, and he's won the rights for a penalty. Yeah, he just fell straight into his legs. Muli Voro, of course, was very quick to, um, to get on that ball. And he kept his body weight as well, which is the key. In sevens here is Rajapaksa on the outside, Susanta. He's an interesting character. Last year he uh, had a wig. I don't know if it was a wig, but he had a big mop of purple yes. hair. Or was it pink hair? Now he's at this year, he's uh, like Spider-Man. Speaking of Spider-Man, there's Abzal. He just breezed away from that tackle. That would-be tackle. Adendorf has been good on defense, but he's lost it forward. And Turner is there to pick it up. Now the offload. Looking for space, and that's where it is out wide. Adendorf has it. Plenty of defenders in front of the big South African. And he now just takes it into contact. Turner, so quick, so electrifying is Matt Turner from the English setup. Lovely running style and good lead oh, drive free. on that occasion as well. Muirhead with the tackle, ineffective as well as he kept his body weight. No, okay, says the referee. Three, white. Just lost his footing there. Um, could counter ruck, but he's just lost his footing there. Three. He's going back to Jordan, you know, if you can get a, a camera a camera shot on his hair, uh, on his haircut, it's, it's quite nice. It's a spider, it's a red spider at the back of it. In the morning when I came, I... Chula's, um, Chula's hairstyle you're asking for? Yes, yes. Tell us tell us a little bit about uh, Chula, Sasanta. I haven't uh, had um, much time with uh, with Chula. Um, he played for Navy um, Navy Club uh, last season in 15 aside, but uh, I, I believe he's from Candy. <laughs> <laughs> and there is that distinctive hairstyle. Is, is that red, is it? Yeah, yeah. He looked like Spider-Man yesterday. He's, maybe he's not the Green Lantern. He's the Red Lantern today. And here they are looking, brushing off the first tackle. Naikasu, Naikasu just losing the ball there on the tackle of Richie Archong. Good defence from the Western Samoan. Well, you don't call them Western Samoan. It's all <laughs> Samoan now. Of course, in 91, in the first Rugby World Cup, they were known as Western Samoan on that occasion. But now, Samoa. And he's a good player, is Richie Archong, isn't he? Yes, so we, uh, some of these guys will come through the come through the, the, the ranks. Well, I mean, the, uh, the system in, in New Zealand, of Rose. course, yeah, you've been, been uh, drilled properly. Um, Set. So you certainly know where, where, where you, you know, the basics and the fundamentals of the game. Muirhead out to the man we've been talking about. Archong has a player on the outside. He's got three defenders in front of him. So now he puts on the pace. The big fend. One, two, and then he feeds it back into Pereira. Lovely offload from Pereira. That hasn't gone forward, but it's gone now into the hands of Rajapaksa. Lovely pick up there from Susanta. Players out wide here. They need to try and push the ball. Naikasu goes into contact. Defences holding up at this stage. And now it's popped back. One defender to beat. Just cut short is Rabatte. Muirhead goes in through the legal process according to the referee. And now they've got the ball. They have the Northwestern Blacks. They need to break out here. Abzal. Well, he's been hit and he's just dropped the ball cold. Advantage. Advantage. Knock on from the referee. Naikasu advantage is over. And Naikasu will run and score. Bizarre sequence of play there. Abzal was free and then he just threw the ball away. He got slapped in the face and he just threw the ball away. He just, I don't think his teammates will be very happy, but so the Fijian just capitalized and just picked the ball up. Leo Nakasau says make the most of that. Saw the opportunity. Referee, a Japanese referee just playing advantage and picked the ball up in underneath the post. Conversion is good. And so 26-7. First try of the second half. The fourth for the match for the North and uh, Central Kings, rather. And here it is. This is the final part. You can see the bodies all sprayed around in the different parts where it looked like more like a wall zone than actually a rugby field. Yeah, well, some of the Blacks players stopped. They actually stopped when he... Um A good lesson for the kids at home watching. You've got to play to the referee's whistle. You don't play until he blows it. And here's Archong. Richie Archong. He's offloaded, but he's given it to the wrong team. Bulimoto gets it and back to Turner. Now Turner just being patient and looking out to the left-hand flank and deciding where do we go from here. And now they push it wide. Back on the inside. Here's Pitu. Pops up beautifully, does Pitu. One to beat. In, out. And there goes that man, Vilvara. That's his hat-trick. It was a good turnover ball. Um, 
our job of, of to take the defence on and then turn the ball over. Central Kings make the most of that play. Get the ball to that man, Vedova, and see you later. Yeah, well, not much Taya Singer could actually do on that occasion. He's the sweeper. Hat trick for that man in screen. Uh, Spider Man's been doing well. Uh, really, uh, he actually turned that ball over. Uh, yeah, he's done very well. Experience, plenty of experience with Chula Susantha. As the conversion is successful. So the Central Kings starting where they finished off yesterday. Three good wins in day one against the Eagles, the Stallions and the Typhoons. Turner now with the kick. That's going to go about eight metres. Now it's bouncing and it's gone ten. Vic Laratne is the captain of the Northwestern Blacks, but he's been driven into touch and now they're just going to slow things down. Uh, the Central Kings players. Five tries in the match. And they're looking good. Anyone? Very much. Uh, Nid Ryan Lemoyce wasn't too sure there. The kickoff uh, was a bit short, but he played it and just got pushed over the sidelines. So crowd starting to make their way into the ground as well. Good <laughs> crowd in yesterday. It hasn't gone the required five metres, and so the Japanese referee will give the penalty indirect to the Northwestern Blacks. It's got to go from the 15. Tupo should know that. Vic Laratne. Now they look to try and find some magic out wide. Taya Singh has got through. Taya Singh won't be quick enough to get away from Matt Turner, but he should find some support on the inside. Buying time and just waiting for that support to arrive. And it does in the form of Pirata. Play on, says the referee. So Turner gets back and now he becomes defender into attacker. Eluding that tackle was Ratwate. And now they've got it wide. On the inside is Naikasu. Pops it up beautifully. Running on is Pitu. Pitu had the angle, now he changes it. Changes the point of attack. And in for his first try of the afternoon, or the morning rather, is Kurunal Hilaka. And that's his first touch, that's his first try. Yeah, well worked. From the Central Kings, finding their players, having enough support. Western Blacks is giving up the, the chase there. Karun Natalika. Uh, is very good in support play. Did everything that was expected of him. And they've given the kicking duties to uh, Matt Turner. He's been successful. And that is it. First game for these two teams on day two here at the Carlton Super Sevens. And two clinical were the Central Kings winning this match against the North Western Blacks quite comfortably in the end. Six tries in total, three in the first half three in the second and just final confirmation 38 points to seven yeah, as we look back on the highlights uh, first try to the central kings out of a just casually throwing it back to video and of course this man Hits the ball that far, he's, he's got some serious pace and we look at the second try, a bit of all just showing the ball, holding on to the defender and carrying him over the lane. Boom chasing and making the most of the opportunities. Not good enough to tackle from Dharamabala, got back on his feet and underneath the post. That's a good comeback by um, by the Blacks. Second try for Vidivada, getting away from the defender and yes, just a little fend there and hit uh, Jaisinger in the mouth. Nikaso. The fourth try for the Central Kings. And looking at the third one in the uh, hat trick for video in and out, taking Boom Jain Singer on. And of course, the, the last try right on the hood by Karuna. Yeah, Very good morning to all our viewers. Yes, it's Carlton Super Servants live and kicking down here in Kogalit. Okay, coming up next is North Central Titans taking on Southern Sharks who's playing in the advantage blue and white over. And North Central Typhoons in black and yellow. That's his big Sharks. Driving forward, going for that kill early in the morning. 
Like our Sharks yeah. had a fantastic run yesterday and I'm sure they want to continue that this morning as well. Yeah, it's important that you start well. You know, these first games in the morning are, you know, quite quite tough at times, but um, um, well collected here in the, from, from the kickoff. Uh, just just not managed to keep it inside. Um, Watomo, Wakavona. We would have would enjoyed it a bit more if the ball stayed back inside. Definitely, and also Chanel Diaz who's going for the jump. We had a quite day yesterday but as we speak <laughs> North Central Typhoons breaking in that's Mark Richards can he go all the way he's got support support arrives in the form of Moon brilliant stuff good driving forward and that's Nell can he go for it yes and he scores <laughs> well, North Central Typhoons draws first blood here good start good continuity play Ended by Mark Richards, well supported by Joshua Moon, and brilliant finish that good sidestep handoff, and that's missing the tackle. That's criminal. He actually did very well there, uh, Clifford. He went through with Tom, and he went through Osea calling us out, and it's not very easy, not a very very easy thing to do. So you got to be very very careful in these sort of uh, tournament. You know, can change very quickly. Of course, the Sharks yesterday uh, doing so well, and now their first game up with the Typhoons. The Typhoons yesterday not managing to uh, to win one. Um, and scoring first, so let's hope they keep it up. Well, putting five points on the board, definitely that'll give the psychological advantage. So let's see what's with the kick. Oh, unsuccessful. Well, it's not, not that easy kicking out here with the breeze, I guess. Well, the wind is very calm. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's actually a nice morning, uh, but you, know, uh, well, you can see uh, you see some of the crowd coming in, you can see, the, you can see them with their fans. Yeah, I agree with you. Well, Mark Richards with the restart. A flat and short kick collected by Pio Tuai. Well, he sets it up. Colin Sao. Driving forward. Brought down. Rabob. Pio Tuai, the big man. Look at his size. It's just a mountain. <laughs> Richard Snell, Moon, yellow, all right, three of them are there trying you. to bring him down. Cuts it through and collected. That is Dinusha Fernando. Well, Usea Colinisau, can he go? Yes. Well, this is what he's been doing all the day of yesterday. Good try. <laughs> nice breakthrough run there. Yeah, really showed his class. Uh, Osea Colinisau, they have a look at that. Just playing around with him, just in and out, playing, turning him around. And when he sees the moment, he went for it. He was just trying to turn him around. But it's never a good thing when you are a defender like that, a sweeper, and you're turning your back into uh, someone like Colin Nassau. You're basically inviting him to go and score, try and lift the post. Well, and he did that in style. Yes, two extra points. So that's going to give them the advantage. 5 7. Well, not Central Typhoon scoring first, but unable to convert that try. But here, Colin Sao's try has been converted, so that two extra points will give them the advantage at the moment. But that is not just enough to finish the game off. You never know. That's the beauty of this game. Oh, Matimo. Bravo with the kick. Come back, come back, come back! Off to go to the middle of the park. Well, collected by Richards. Well, battling hey. with Pio Tuai, it's not easy. Brought him down. Ball on the deck. And Dinushari Pala dishes it out. And once again, well, Moon. And this time, well, that's a very powerful, strong run. Just breakaway run there. And he scores. That's Hashan Maduranga. First instance. Good turnover ball by Shannon Dias. He's got, got down straight away and a quick tap by Ananda. And off he goes down the far side. Dinusha Fernando sends it to Pio Tuai. It was too long to pass, but he uses his feet to send the ball out to White. Oh, stolen turnover. Turnover ball this time. That's Asita Vijay Singer trying to break through in. No support, but intercepted. Well, Colin Sao this time. 
can he go can he do the same thing what he did earlier well he's caught in between moon and richards no way out but still finding his way pure to the big man who's been very quiet Grab advantage yellow well referee says advantage yellow play on not into typhoons over. driving forward this time it seems like an easy one well <laughs> Shana Kumar, a lucky lad, lucky lad, and he scores. Well, that's the beauty of like you know playing the supporting role. Hiran Tapera doing that breakthrough run, and well supported by Shana Kumar. Typhoons did very well there, just scrambling defence, and they managed to turn the ball over. As we look at uh, popping the ball back inside Typhoon, popping it to uh, Sisang, it's going underneath the post. Very important that they get their plays. I mean, these support players, and they're making sure that they're there at the right times. A very good comeback by the Typhoons. Converted by Turner. Well, this time Richards doesn't make any mistake. He has that two extra points, which is very vital. So good, quick response by North Central Typhoons. We thought for a moment Colin Nisau is going to take that game away from North Central Typhoons. Well, but no chance of surrendering at the moment. They are fighting it out. It's an all-important game. They have to win this. Mark Richards with the restart. Well, puts it nice and high. Not a deep one. Well, pure to why? What a lad. Big, strong man. He just goes for the ball. Strong the advantage. Look like a volleyball player. <laughs> Half time. Certainly the Sharks has uh, got a bit of work to do. It seems it's all a bit of an uh, interchange there. Uh, Shano Dyer has been uh, taken off and uh, Anthony taking their spirit by play. So certainly uh, Sharks, Sharks coach uh, Chris has reacted a bit. Well, we've been talking about Shanal Dyer. Shanal Dyer, um, well, he's a big, strong lad and he's fast and he's one of these big names in Sri Lankan rugby. A lot expected from him. But didn't he deliver that much. But then again, let's wait and see what he's got to give yeah. this morning or like for the rest Anywhere of the day. And this run, no anything whatsoever. And thought, oh my God. Well, this is the story so far. Nell scoring that first try for Typhoons and Colin Sao changing hands and inside out, just outrunning that sweeper. And he scores under the post. That's seven points for them. And that Hiran Tepera's breakthrough run. And well supported by Shanaka Kumara, and that gives them an extra seven points. So with that, they lead 12-7 at the halftime. North Central Typhoons. Well, Sharks. Well, they're having some deep talk. Yeah, you can see Chris uh, Roach there, not very happy. Uh, just trying to put it down to uh, to the Sharks. Well, Laga, the best thing out of this tournament, if you look at it, well, so many people have come in to support this tournament. You can see that Elephant House, then you get the Quick Cola, Sri Lankan Airlines, Sri Lanka Insurance. So that's a lot of support. And also dialogue. Well, this is an international event and one of the best um, sporting events in Sri Lanka's sports calendar. For sure, you know, uh, can't really do anything without uh, those people behind the scene and um, putting the chaos in. Interesting to see uh, uh, the Sharks coach there. You know, he's a, he's a, he's a quiet fellow, but um, he wasn't very too uh, he wasn't too impressed. So it's very important that these guys mentally stay with uh, stay with the tournament. Um, not only from yesterday, uh, they've got to let go yesterday and look forward to today. So, all important for the for the South and Sharks now. They've got Hello. seven minutes to make up for it. The referee's ready with the restart. Roll with the ball. He's going to put that ball holding, high. Holding. Let's see whether it's going to up for deep or short kick. Yes, it's a short kick. Collected by Nell. And he drives through. They're trying Stop. to break away. Well, the ball Blue. lost there. It's knocked forward. Good well, sensible play by Sharks. A well pressure kick by uh, Robovo. And rewarded by pushing that ball, um, pushing that ball out of the Typhoon player and got themselves a knock on, a knock on. So a good Stop. spot for them. You got to draw first blood, uh, the Sharks from here. Well, scrum in favor of Sharks and sends it out. Whoa, whoa. Well, it's time Colin Sao. Well, he's the man, he's the danger man. 
Well, as we speak, shots breaking through, brought down. Well, surprising to see Pio Tuai. That's a big lad we've been talking about. Yes, he's been very quiet. Well, Richards had no chance. Now bringing, trying to bring Tuai down and successful one. Well, once again, that's Rovu. Well, sends it out to Colin Isau. Colin Isau. Vishwamitra Jaisinghe standing on the left and that's Vishwamitra Jaisinghe scoring his first try. Good support play there and it's all created by Colin Sao, the danger man for Southern Sharks. Yeah, just looking at that, uh, Colin Sao is uh, on full force, taking two players on, holding on holding on to the ball, throwing one out of the way and just popping it back to, uh, on the inside to uh, Vishwamitra Jaisinghe. He's their speedster, but it was interesting what they did on the side. Clifford, um, with Bill taking the ball in, not forcing the pass, holding on to it, placing it on the ground, so they had to just to go, just have to be a little bit more, more patient. Well, it's a nice ploy because if you look at Pio Tuai, he's a big, big lad, and everybody wants to see him like he's just breaking tackles and running. <laughs> but what he does is he just draws the players in, and well, it's an unsuccessful kick as we speak. Well, what he does is he simply plays, draws the players in. And he just takes one, two, three, or maybe like in you know, four some occasions, yeah, and that gives the numerical advantage on the other way. Yeah, but they just uh, they just subbed him out. But uh, yeah, he's, he's a big lad. It'll be hard to hard to counter that sort of impact every time. Every time he has the ball in hand. I would agree with that. Not a big lad, huge lad. <laughs> well, restart. Probably puts the ball this time slightly deep in. Six, six, six. Whistle's gone. Leave it alone, please. Oh, it's a beautiful kickoff. It was um, Sharks kick it deep, and it, um, the the Typhoons was just holding. They were just sitting back watching the kickoff. It actually pounced inside. Why well, yes. he, he run the pillar actually? Well, that's the tackle. Ooh. Yeah, that was bang. Yeah. yeah, that was just after. But they let the ball pounce, and they, they ended up taking it out. Samuela Sakiva just slamming Shana Kumara. Just giving him a bit of a reminder. Well, nicely taken. Sharks with the ball. Colin Sao, the danger man. Robovu. Well, once again, Colin Sao with the ball. Sends it out. And this time, it's a long one. And that's with Dinusha Fernando. Driving forward, Sharks. Oh, straight down off your feet. That's, that's having, disappointing. They're having trouble keeping the ball. They're just throwing the ball on the ground all over the place. Well, as we speak, Joshua Moon quicks it, takes it, and sends it out. And this time it's. Six, blow away! Well, in fact, Joshua Moon trying to break it in, and Stephen Hunt was the. Sean Kumara. And that's Hiranta Ferreira, creator of the first try. Well, stolen. Well, it's not forward during that process. 12 ball. It's going to be a tight call in the middle of the second half. Very tight. Sam Willow was a bit unlucky there. Uh, counter ruck and he's just knocked the ball on. He had no one in front of him. These two sides, especially Southern Sharks, coming in very strong into this tournament. Good to see combining very well. But disappointed to see Chanel that's not delivering, but hopefully he'll come Five, back today. On the other hand, not from Typhoons, Chana Kumara, the Dushanta Luki of big names. Four blue, hands away. Well, quickly taken this time. Samantha Lakshan, who is charging in? Whoa, nice one. Nice one. Well, the bounce was a little bit high. If not, that have been definitely a five pointer. Well, as we speak, Sharks breaking in. That's Sayuru Anthony. Blue Serrano tackle, release! Don't call! Well, since now, that's Sayuru Anthony. And Samuela Sakiwa. And this time, it's Srinath Suribandara. Can he break through? No, he's been brought down. Well, picks it up, Samuela Saki. Is he through? Yes! Seems like no challenge. And he scores. Good try, good pick up and run. Well done to the Sharks. Uh, little sort of bandara he had to keep, he had to keep that ball on a very steady ruck, and somehow will capitalise. He just saw no one in front of him. So 
unchallenged. Well, I was a little bit, but then again, he has scored by then. It was a good run by, in fact, by. Um, started off with uh, Saiyu Anthony, and from there, uh, Samuela Sakiri, and also Srina Suribandara chipping in. That's, that's brilliant stuff. It's fantastic teamwork. Touch on your left, um, Typhoons. It's certainly not making it easy for the for the Sharks. Sharks really had to work hard for that try. Still a bit of time left. As we see, uh, Provovo choking back, just taking a bit of time on that uh, restart. Well, Provovo with this restart. Sharks leading at the moment, 17-12. Matter of a try. Oh, backward, flat one. Collected. Hunt refusing to go down. Joshua Moon. Hands wide, boys! Samantha Lakshan clears it out and sends it out to Hashan Maduranga. And it seems like Stephen Hunt. Backwards! Back. Oh, it's exciting time. The Huda's gone. Huda's gone. And Typhoon says they have to hold on to this one. This is their opportunity. Ten, go away! This big ask for the Typhoons, the well, they can't afford to lose the ball, well, they have the advantage. I see advantage. Well, Sandili sends it out to Hiranta Perra. And that is Joshua Moon. Sandili goes down, needs support, he has to release the ball, he has to release the ball. Oh, oh no, he didn't release that. Well, the English ref was very fair. I mean, he, he, he was calling it out. Uh, advantage, uh, advantage over. So uh, the Typhoons had their chance. As we look at that, oh, that's a bit, um, yeah, it's <laughs> a bit of a bit of a funny call there. I think uh, you got to support yourself. Uh, Rob was very lucky. There's a referee who blows the final whistle. Well, Sharks that's a, well, that was the final whistle actually. And uh, Sharks, all what they had to do is just send the ball to Ted and Srinath Suribaldara comfortably kicks the ball out. And that concludes, and Sharks win this first game, and not since the Typhoons, but it's unfortunate for them. They played a good game. 17-12 is the final score. Well, it was a tussle, and uh, Chris Roach will be a relieved man after that one. As we see uh, Vishra Jaisinger putting a jink on as he scores the first one, and we see uh, Samuela scoring that winning try that gave the Sharks a 17-12 victory against the Typhoons. And the next matchup is Uber Vipers taking on the Northern Gladiators. The Vipers second in Pool A yesterday. Three good victories and just the one loss. And the Northern Gladiators in the red, yellow and black strip finished third in Pool B. So just reminding you, uh, for those of you just joining the broadcast here on CSN, yesterday there were uh, five, two different pools, five teams in each pool. And basically today is the best plays against the worst from the other division. And so just reminding you, Uber Vipers, three victories, just the one solitary loss. And uh, so they finished second in their pool. And the Northern Gladiators, well, they had one draw, two losses, and one victory. Hence the reason they finished third in pool B. And that's the reason why these two teams are squaring off. And joining me in commentary is Sean. Sean, really looking forward to this. It's a different atmosphere. Absolutely. Good morning, Sri Lanka. Good morning, Kokola. Good morning, Carlton Super 7s 2014. Tomasi Thama gets us underway. The Uva Vipers playing from left to right as you see it. And Northern Gladiators in the red, yellow and black strip. Well, they'll be desperate today to get on the score sheet, man, to turn the tables around from yesterday. Just the one victory. They were competitive in a lot of the games, but then just lost it at crucial times. Halai Fanua has the ball now. Links and looks on the inside. Is it now? And now they look to try and get it wide. Here is Halai Fanua. And that pass was forward. Saw them in the pool this morning, Sean, at about six o'clock, where they were just going through some stretches and a little bit of a, a sort of different mindset. And their coach, of course, Adrian Ferris, he is desperate for them to try and turn the tables here. Absolutely. I mean, it is a critical game. All of these matches on day two are for points and for placing, so it really is critical. They had a little blowout in the morning. I saw the uh, the Vipers just running through the strides and getting in the ocean. DJ Forbes, quite nice. 
Uh, one of the best places you'd want to warm up and uh, stretch is here in Sri Lanka as Tilsley takes the ball and he meets the contact of uh, Vedim Malur as well. Now here's Tomasi Thama. The little playmaker is Thama jinking, jiving, and then he puts it to the air. That could go out on the full. It just bounces beautifully and then into touch. Well, Tomasi Thama, 2,006 points in the overall standings on the HSBC Sevens World Series. Only Ben Gollings has scored more points than him, 2,652. And what that equates to, Chan, is 145 tries. That little number 10 has scored throughout his career in the New Zealand shirt. Well, we've got both of them here in Sri Lanka at any given stage, which is a fabulous story. We had Ben Gollings as our national coach for the Sevens last year. Here we go. Oh! So now the Gladiators <laughs> brought down illegally, says the ref. And so the quick tap here by Hapagoda out to Neula. He finds Marija. Now it's out to Halafanur. He's big and strong. Halafanur trying to get on the outside of Tilsley. One to beat. Too big and strong. Just like that, the Gladiators are back. Well, there you go. Just as we were saying, it's going to be a precious story. And the first try is so critical for this side. Day two, game one, always tough. Have a look at this. Halafanur, just, just a little hitch kick. Has a go on the outside. Turns on the charm. And he gets away from Tilsley. Just strong enough because the muscles are still stiff from overnight work and this depends on how good your recovery and that's you see the ice towels are out already it is going to be a, an unforgiving day uh, Willie for everybody and yeah, Tongan born Tongan representative very good in the 15 assign has been used at both wing and fullback just a powerhouse player and on that occasion got on the outside and this certainly wasn't what the script was written for remember the Vipers finished second the Gladiators finished third and the two respective pools that they played in yesterday and nobody was picking this side to uh, to do well Neua unsuccessful with the conversion but Halai Fanua with the try well, it's an all or nothing theory and so much will depend on how Tomasi actually goes as the playmaking yeah good point that you've made too because that all came from the era where he was in trouble and he just kicked it in the air and basically gave possession back to the gladiators now it's popped out the referee says illegally Coming on the side says Rafa Willie. Tell me about the players' mindset getting up in the morning for a second day. Well, the aches and the pains after four games yesterday. They get pulled and just try and release the body. And then it's a matter of getting to the ground, going through your stretches, and then executing it on the field as they are trying to do here. One way and then the other. Viratne. Viratne. Striding out big and tall. Had Mickelson on the inside, but just opted to hold on to the ball just a little too long. Yes, absolutely. Should have really offloaded that ball once he got through the first tackle. Uh, he just needed to get Mickelson going because he was actually motoring up Mickelson. Have a look at this in the replay. There he is. He's got away. And he just popped the ball now. Mickelson was away and underneath the post really. So Vipers still need to get it sorted. Neyua there with the tackle and their set piece is working very well. Neyua feeds it and then he comes around, beats the first tackle. Thumb, thumb to beat. Steps on the inside and that's where it's gone to ground. Referee says advantage here. And so perhaps some obstruction advantages over here's a try score hello for Newark. The interception now and going back is Ranjun. He hasn't secured it. Thama is there. He scored plenty of these, Thama, but now he knows that he didn't have the legs to go that far and he just slows it up. Ranjun. Headeth. Back out to Thama. Counter ruck is good. Hapagoda wins the contact there and now with the Thundri. One of the highest paid players when uh, the competition in 2012. Well, this wonderful competition got underway. Now the quick hands out to Neua. Has players out to the right. Vipers down to six players with that player there down on the ground. He's been there for quite some time as Tilsley. Now the kick and chase. He won't win the race. Because getting back is Patirana. Well, Sham Patirana is the skipper for the Vipers. You can see the players gasping for breaths, uh, gulping up as much oxygen as they possibly can. We're at sea level down here in Kogula with the ocean right next door. And he never really recovered once the initial break had been made and it looked like he'd caught a boot or fallen awkwardly. Looks like that. Let's hope he's okay. Oh, he seems all right. Well, it's nice that he's up. Sean, that's the most important thing is you, you, you dread when you see players that are injured and they can't move and uh, the stretches are brought on. So the fact that he's now making his way gingerly, as it may be, to his feet. Good crowd yesterday. A lot of spectators now starting to make their way into the ground today. Absolutely, I know there's lots of people driving up today from Colombo. They're hitting the highway as we speak on the Southern Highway. 
So uh, that'll be look for something to look forward to, sure. Vera Ratne, my apologies. I thought it was actually Toosley because I hadn't seen him on the field in the defensive line. But uh, again, Vera Ratne, thankfully, is back to his feet. Well, I think he got clattered in the face when he hit the deck uh, off that tackle, Come Willie. On. And uh, he seems okay, which is good news. Crouch! Bind! Well, it's a critical Set. moment here for the Vipers just before the break. They've break. got possession and now they've got a penalty as well. Mickelson taps it, gives it to his New Zealand teammate Thama. Now Tilsley, there's the acceleration and the power from but George Tilsley, brought down by Hello for Newark. Thama is there, as is Hedith. Now they push it wide to Costa, gets it out to the man that was injured just a little while ago. Stay Better play from the Vipers, good patience. Thama looking at the options left to right, going into contact, and then just a little pop pass. Needs to go straight, does De Costa. Feeds on the inside, two on one. They've got it wide now. Tilsley should have too much pace, and he will. Big and strong is George Tilsley, and finally the Vipers are on the board. Well, much relief to the Vipers. I'm sure the management down there are holding their breath a little bit. But uh, finally, Tomas Sikama fashioned something out of nothing. And well done to the uh, young Costa for having the patience to pop the ball at the right time. It gives Tisley a, a drag on try, so the Vipers get on the score sheet. It's important, if you don't get that try, you seem to be working so hard and the petrol seems to be used up, and you tend to run out of breath more than anything else, and then you really have to fight your recovery. Once you score that first try, it comes a little easier. The second breath picks up quite nice. Hey, I made the point that it was the critical moment of the game with the scrum that they had, because they hadn't scored at that stage. They got the penalty. Managed to retain the ball, good patience, good calmness, and they've tied it up. This to take the lead. This for the two-point lead before the break. Whatever anybody says, day two, game one is an unforgiving story. And if you haven't got the level of fitness, then say thank you very much and enjoy the tournament. But you won't be playing in the big one. Just short. After 2,006 points in 11 seasons of the IRB 7 circuit. Tomasi Thama, the man they call the young general, and he's called Tomasi Thama Jr. because he's obviously named after his father with the same name. And his father, Renan, in the, uh, these pictures I'm sure will get to Fiji at some stage, he scored one of the greatest tries in the history of sevens in the world in Hong Kong to Tomasi Thama Sr. And now it's just a sprint race here, taken right from the kickoff, the lovely feet on the inside, and racing away to score their second try. For the Gladiators is Verimalua. Jesse Verimalua ran on the inside, just tracked it on the inside. This is lovely play. Absolutely, Willie. My goodness, so simple when you uh, when you see this. It looks so simple, but of course uh, the hard work element and to be able to run under that ball and just uh, get over the line, quite uh, delicious for the players. The Gladiators do well just in the stroke of half time. You were talking about Tomas Sikama, Tomas Tama, the elder. I was actually in Hong Kong playing for Sri Lanka when he scored that try. Goodness, I just remember when you reminded me. Thank you very much, Willie. Yes, Thama was uh, Thama Senior. There's the conversion, and so a lead of seven points as we head to the break. Beautiful run by Hapagoda. That's what created that try right from the kickoff and the acceleration from the young man down that right hand flank. That's what set up the try. We go to the Oranges, and the Vipers are trailing. The Gladiators by seven points, and it's 12-5. Well, I think that's going to change somehow in the second half, but uh, when you talk about Hapagoda, that's the speciality that he brings to the game. That's the skill level that he brings to the game. He does that very often for his club, and now for Sri Lanka as well on the Asian circuit. The likes of Hapagoda, Suri Bandara, they're the ones who make the difference, the playmakers, the game-breakers. have got a rare turn of pace. They can turn off on a, in a five-cent piece and take off, and that's something special. There's that uh, imposing figure, the bearded figure of DJ Forbes, who uh, only will shave it once he gets into the big final on the, on the second day. That's a promise. Coaches going through their yards, just making sure Mushtaq, support coach for the Gladiators, the Cargill's franchise, of course. Wonderful to have all the franchises step up to the mark here and uh, create this uh, very special environment. Sean, tell me and, and tell the viewers actually what the whole purpose of the Carlton Super 7s I mean, what are you hoping to achieve through these tournaments? Well, the initial thought from now Raj Paksa was to uh, stop what was international teams coming here and playing against us and beating Sri Lankans and then going back. And the learning was really not that much. 
So he wanted to try and combine young players, give them the opportunity to play with the best players in the world, to live and breathe and see how they operate. And this is the reality. And now, four years down the road, it's becoming a very special global story. Well, they would have learnt a few things during the week about training sessions at 6 in the morning to prepare the body for a 9.30 kickoff. Well, that wasn't the ambition, I think, but that was part of the growth process. Falao Niua gets us underway. That's gone out on the full, and so immediately back onto attack go the Vipers, trailing by seven at this stage in the green shirts, playing right to left as you see it on TV at home. Costa, the playmaker, Farmer to his left. Mickelson now runs to the centre, Tilsley to the right. So they've got the foreign players out each side. How do the defensive lines set up? That's the question here. Costa. Thamer on the late cut. Mickelson comes on another cut. Mickelson so big and strong, breaks the first, second and third tackle. Now he goes to ground. Neua tries to get the ball and the referee no says no separation. No Costa taps, quick ball. Pitharana was there. Needs to get in and support, but it's been well, stolen great. by Hapagoda. And he's oh, won a penalty for his team as well. Terrific work. Neua wants to get on with it. The quick tap and the release. Hello for Nua. Farmer in front of him. Tackle is effective, but so is the quick hands shown there by Mutha Thundri. Love the way that they actually get into a contact area and then decide to just pull back throw the ball back to a player in your own team hold on to possession gone is the kick from the Sri Lankans that we saw yesterday which is a great sign now they try and release it big defense coming in from Mickelson Hedith is there as well to help Mickelson in on the strip backwards says the referee play on and trying to steal the ball is Viratni coming back is Hapagoda he's been very good in this game no, ain't the thunder no, he's there the and the referee says that that's a fair steal from Tomasi Tama Thamer with the steal. Now they need to clear it. Costa gets it wide. Tilsley. Tilsley on the outside. He won't be caught. Shut the gate. Tilsley's in. Much relief from uh, Tilsley to score that try. Getting around Danish Karanjan. He really should have had him. Danish Karanjan had him in his sights and just needed to tackle him from behind. Have a look at this. Here's Ranjan now in the red shirt. The gladiator. There you go. Going too high again. It gives Tilsley the luxury of a try in the corner and much relief for the Vipers. I know it was a little bit premature from me, Sean, to say that he scored as soon as he got the ball, but I just knew in a one-on-one -on -one situation that he's going to beat you with either pace or the step. That's true, and if he didn't, uh, there would have been words from his coach down the, the dugout. So the Vipers get back to uh, where they belong, and I'm sure that there'll be a lot of thought about what needs to be done next with this kickoff coming up. Viratna needs to uh, take a decent catch. They're going to have to try and uh, power up some petrol here because if they leave it to the Gladiators, they're going to come back strong at them. Tharma to try and tie it up. That's the reason why he scored over 2,000 points on the seventh circuit. Marcy Tharma comes to play on game two, on day two rather, in their first game here against the Northern Gladiators. We're all tied up, it's 12 all. My goodness, what more can you ask really for all of you watching at home, for all of you youngsters, boys and girls? take a good note of this one because this is what it's all about this is relentless this is what the game this is what you practice for and this is why you do your fitness right up front Tomasi it's a good tactic as well to push it wide into the 22 and ask questions Hopagoda Nehua big long pass coming up very very quickly was Hedith and he makes a good tackle too but the referee said too early love the speed from Hedith on that occasion he read it beautifully more possession for the Gladiators. Halai Fanua try scoring the first half. That's not a good pass. Well, yes, and there was a very good tackle, slightly high from Hera, but had he managed to get there slightly sooner, it would have been fabulous. In the meantime, terrible pass, really, under pressure, and they had an extra man as well, missed out. Like the defensive work from Patarana as well. He held his line, he didn't, uh, didn't rush up, didn't commit himself too early. And now the line out, the all important line out. Big pressure moment here for Costa. Needs to find his jumper. Good throw. Very good throw from Costa. First job is done. Possession in the hands of the men in green. Kaka, new man on the field. Thama loops. Kaka tries to break out of the first tackle but can't. 
And now they recycle Costa to Mickelson. Mickelson, Patadana on his left-hand side, but he opts to go into contact. Yeah. Now they need to secure it here. Counter ruck is good, says the referee. Hapagoda picks it up, gets it out to Halai Fanua. Good tackle Back coming on, in from Tharma, tackle. It's fine, says the referee. Laya goes oh, in to try and clear it, and he's offside. Mickelson's done this on a number of occasions. This is when he's at his best, Tim Mickelson. Patirana, he's been good in this game. The big forward, breaking on the outside now is Hedith. And losing the ball forward, but no advantage from the referee. And so it's the yellow card. Oh dear, oh dear, that wasn't anticipated. And then six versus seven now, so the Vipers have the luxury. They need to get on the score sheet really quickly. Well, they need to get into the hands of this man here, Kaka. Can step and can draw in two players. He just did there. That was the key to that try. He held it up for a moment and then he released it to Costa, who's raced in to score his first try of the match. That's it. And uh, make it a little bit more difficult for the Gladiators. Tired legs, tired minds. But this is what it's all about. This is the nature of the game. And the ones that stand up, there is. Uh, Kaka standing up and then holding it up for Costa, who eventually came into support. Well done. You always talk about the tackles, will you? When you tackle the man, hit the man and ball at the same time, so he can't offload. And that was a classic example of that. Yeah, the other problem there was one of the gladiators didn't need to go in. Once he went in to actually try and close the tackle off of Kaka, it created the massive gap in Costa. Read it beautifully, really playing with a lot of confidence. And I've got to say congratulations to DJ Forbes yesterday, player coach of this team because in their third match of the day against Central, he sent out all of the Sri Lankan players. There were no foreigners on the field. And I spoke to him this morning at breakfast and he said, mate, how are they gonna learn if they ever don't get the chance to play along inside each other? And he said, what it's done is it's taught us how much guts they've got for day two today, but also for next week. Absolutely, and that's a sign of a good coach. Sometimes you tend to rely on your, you know, the experience and the old reliables, as we say. And you tend to forget the youngsters, but they had the bench strength, and they're the ones who made the difference. Well, it was the difference, definitely. Guys like Costa, Patirana today, they've been instrumental. They've been a huge part if they are to get the victory today. Playing very, very good sevens. Don't write off this uh, glad out of side just yet, though. That's where the space is out wide. Now they need to try and get it into the hands of Mawalu. It falls into his hands as well. The step beats Forbes. Coming back on the angle. Just slipping and I kind of wonder whether they've got the right foot apparel on today. Surface, a little bit of rain overnight and so it's quite soft on top. Beautiful warm weather. And now what can the Gladiators cook up? Hapagoda. Hapagoda's been very good for them. Feeds it back. Here's one of those foreign players, Tambu. Big tackle coming in there from Dananjaya. Look at him chasing down everything. The fresh legs coming in off the bench. Dananjaya. Now he's racing up as well to make his third tackle in a row. Good Kaka tackling. Is there. Really. Good tackling. Sorry, but I just had to say that. And they've won the turnover. They'll kick it out here. Well, take a bow. A few of the players in the Vipers team, not the foreigners. Patirana, Dananjaya, and Hedda. They've been a massive part of the victory here today. Congratulations to the Vipers. They, they were down by seven points at the break. They've managed to score two tries in the second half. They've kept the Gladiators trialless in the second seven minutes. And the Vipers have won this match by 19 points to 12. Absolutely good result. You can't ask for better than that from the Vipers shed. And really, you talked about Patrona, you talked about Dananjaya, you talked about little Costa and the work rate on them. Fabulous. Here's the highlights. Alai Fanua getting around uh, Tilsley and scoring that first try. And then it was uh, a chance for Tilsley to reply. It's all about really keeping those engines on and running at pace, but the fitness level is coming into contention. That's what matters now. Nothing else matters really. People will talk about skills. Skills come down to fitness. Part of Super 7's 2014. Vipers take the big W. They'll be relieved, I know for a fact, Willie, there'll be much relief in that camp because they were they were had a little bit of reservation about what the Gladiators because the Gladiators have really shown what they've got. They've got the quality players and today, as Willie mentioned earlier, it's the Sri Lankan players that will make the difference in the fray because if they step up to the mark, then the uh, internationals can get on with their job and then the blend will work. So far, coming up, Eastern Eagles, Western Warriors. Impact game.
And here they are, the Western Warriors and the White Strip Eastern Eagles in their alternative pink jerseys. First time we've seen those here at the Carlton Sevens, but what a match. This should be an absolutely brilliant match. Two top teams, impressive were the Western Warriors winning all four games yesterday. Not so much for the Eastern Eagles, but today is another day. Absolutely, and uh, I can't imagine what's going through the, uh, the skipper's mind there, Yoshida Rajapaksa. Pressure on him to deliver this game. Rakambula will step up to the mark. Here we go. Lotte Rakambula from the Western Warriors kicks off. Rising high for, well, he like it, like one of the Eagles was Leo, Lolo Leo. Samoan representative and so first position to the men in pink, but that is hands in the ruck. Was formed first, naying it, giving away the first penalty. So the Eagles hot on attack. There's one of their playmakers. We'll see a lot more of him, I'm sure, throughout the game. There's Lavasa now takes it into contact. A big tackle coming in from Wanga Valulangi. Adam Adagola. One way and then the other. Trying to get on the outside there. Big and strong is Naingi. Throws him down, but the tackle was high. Nanya Kata tried to get on the outside in jersey number nine, but just pulled down. And here's the man that took the ball from the kickoff. Lolo Leo, South Samoan representative, pushes it wide. Samahirate is taken in, and uh, Roger Paksa is there as he lost his body weight. Yes, says the referee, but scooped up beautifully by the man that we've mentioned. Oh. He should have scored there. Lolo Leo. But he's lost the ball forward. Unbelievable. It really was an academic fact that he was going to score the try. But somehow, let's have a look at the replay and see exactly what happened. Here he is getting underneath the post. Oh, just two tackles and the ball dislodged from his hand. Couldn't protect the ball well enough. He should have dived slightly earlier maybe. So Lolo misses out and the Eastern Eagles a chance of getting in front and putting some pressure on these... Uh, very, very fancied Western Warriors side. Well, the Warriors get to drop a game. And we've seen this from them last year as well. Similar situation where they won all four matches on day one and then came out on day two and lost the first game against one of the minor teams. And that's what you don't want to be doing. So on paper, they came in as the hot favorites, the top team in section B yesterday and yet to get possession. You don't want to repeat for sure. I think they've spent some time looking at that. Underneath their own goalpost. There's a Rakambula that takes up the first contact now. Roger Pucks up. Pushes it wide. Here is uh, Naingi. Young Tuck Joseph Naingi from Rock. Fiji. The clear out comes in. Ball is there. That's hands in the ruck. Referee says you can't do that. No relaxation. Well, holding. Just the interpretation of the new refs that have come in. We'll get to that a little bit later on because Lavasa now has the ball and gets it out to Leo. Nice wide pass on the outside is Debare. Debare breaks the tackle and rushes around to score. Well, what a start. Yes, indeed. Debare just looked at it. He looked at uh, his opposite number and uh, just thought, I, I might have the, uh, the gas to go on the outside. One hand off. Thank you very much. Well, not an easy feat. Debare made it look easy, but Wangagulangi uh, is one of the better defenders for the Western Warriors and that's confidence that's what we're talking about all the time the Sri Lankan players all of a sudden now facing and confronting foreigners are no longer thinking I need to kick the ball they're saying try and catch me if you can that's it they're quite happy to go into the contact now to try and run round that's what you want from your number one back back yourself that's why I always say back yourself and see what you can do with the skill Dabre on that occasion fabulous indeed and just stepping around you know, he can give him so much confidence that and when he sees that on replay, it'll feel good too. Well, they should have scored earlier through Lolo Leo. And just the point, we've uh, got a change in some of the referees that have flown in for day two as well. And so the interpretation from how it was yesterday to today is going to take the players a little bit of time to really just get come to grips with it. Tap back beautifully again by Leo. Buthango has the ball and he gets it out to the try scorer. Good awareness as well. The Eagles looking good at this stage. The big wide pass that was forward. Referee saw it. And Nanyakata thought he was away. Well, I'll tell you this much, but if uh, the Eagles can deny the Western Warriors possession and 
they just hang on to that ball and just frustrate them well enough things might change for them here it is here's that pass the skipper this is the, just running a little bit too much maybe should have offloaded a little better not a bad pass but he was uh, way forward with the breeze you're gonna have to measure that a little bit Gross. Well, the Warriors yet to get out of first gear as they push it wide now. The transfer from Lutu Mailangi out to the man that missed the tackle. He's so good on the attackers. Wanga Lu Mailangi breaks the first tackle but then can't get away from his compatriot in Butango. He's throwing the ball away and he's going to get the penalty and he's also going to get the yellow card. Oh, so dear. some real little discipline shown there. Here's Butango. Have a look at this. One on one right around the boot laces. Eventually he gets down there. <laughs> The intention was to try and clatter him into touch, but uh, he earns himself uh, a yellow card for throwing the ball away, and that's ill discipline. Well, this is crazy stuff from uh, the Warriors. Better than that, and uh, they've just it's been shell shocked. Really, they've been uh, denied possession, which is the key, which is what you've said, Sean. Absolutely, and of course, then uh, you tend to rely on things that you don't uh, really practice too much, and that's something he would have not practiced to throw the ball away. That discipline is all based on uh, thinking. Well, they need to get some of their players like Pushpa Kumara and Raja Paksa. They need to start now leading from the front as that man there spends a little bit of time in the naughty chair. Mangavulangi. So the Western Warriors down to six. They trail by five. Just a short release. Pass there, release says the referee. Was there separation? No, there wasn't. So a penalty here. And now they look to try and break out from their own half. Here's Voto. Voto, one of the uh, Fijian players, gets it to Lotte. And he gets it one wide to Lutumailangi. Lutumailangi on the outside. Should have too much pace. And he will. Won't be caught. Just like that with six players. The big pass on the inside to Raikam Buller, who brings it around to improve the position. And that is so. The conversion will put them in the lead. That's good thinking under pressure. And that's what you need, the clarity of mind. What you do in practice is try and make sure you get as close as possible to the uprights so you can get the seven for. And that's what uh, Rakambula will do now. So the Western Warriors come back. Uh, much against the run of play, the Eastern Eagles have really controlled this game, Willie. Really. Uh, and they'll go back to seven players as well because Wanga Vulangi, the man that was Sinbin, will be able to go back on for the second half. Good play there from Lutumailangi. Great support from Lake and Buller. The conversion is good. And as we head to the Oranges, or half-time break, the Western Warriors are back in this match. They lead by two. The Warriors seven, Eastern Eagles five. That's true. And of course, all of you joining us live on CSN. Nice to have you on board. Kogala, all dressed up for the occasion. It's finals day today. Every game matters. Five, seven, seven, five, two. The, uh, the Warriors there. And uh, that might change dramatically. The Eastern Eagles have controlled the game really well. And we also like to say thank you very much indeed to all of our sponsors, to uh, Easy Cash. Thank you very much for our platinum sponsorship. And then, of course, to uh, Sri Lanka Insurance, Sri Lanka and Airlines, and Dialogue, and uh, Elephant House, Kick Cola. Those are the boards you see around as, you, uh, as the game goes on, on your screens. So important that we have that uh, support and partnership and the Carlton Super 7s can be delivered. Today is uh, the last day here in Kogala, and then down to Colombo to the race course, all dressed up. I'll tell you this much, I haven't seen a, a better looking stadium. The only other stadium in the world I've been to in this part of the world that has looked that good is the Hong Kong 7s National Stadium there. And uh, we are looking forward to what's going to happen. Willie, I know for a fact, was really glad to be back in Colombo because he's able to uh, soak in the sun and, and enjoy the food and the hospitality Sri Lanka my country our paradise I tell you this much it's getting bigger better faster Willie I love that phrase my country our paradise it's an absolute pleasure to be here as well I don't know how many times throughout the World Series 7 Series circuit that I mentioned Sri Lanka I think people got sick of me talking about it <laughs> well we'll have an IRB circular going around now we're underway it's been all one-way traffic apart from the last 30 seconds of the first half where the Western Warriors were able to score and just on that occasion the ball being let tap forward and Lolo Leo thought that he was away but uh, now they're back to their full complement Wangavulangi back on in jersey number 10 for the Western Warriors out on the wing 
They're going to split that up a little bit because I know the Warriors need to try and keep their nose in front for the Eagles. It's important that they try and score really quickly and then put the pressure back on the West Warriors. There it is. Out to the man we're talking about. Mangabi Levu and Raikambula just taps it back and it's still onside but going back to retrieve it is a Volta tapped and uh, playing basketball style with it now pushing it on the inside and here's a break for Ida Matagola and he's in I think he's got there and the referee agrees with me yes that's uh, Ida Malgoda from the uh, Sri Lanka Air Force now graduated to the Eastern uh, Eagles franchise here's the finish a little bit of uh, volleyball there or basketball whatever you want to call it managed to control the ball well and Ida Malgoda just had the pace get underneath and uh, Yoshi is just uh, flanking him there, couldn't get the tackle in. So the Eagles come back straight away and that's what they really would uh, look to uh, plan up. Levasa now trying to add the extras. Edmar Gorda just ran a beautiful line, got the, pass, the basketball pass that you mentioned and then just raced away. Levasa now tries to convert and he has done so. So 12-7, the five point lead. And Yoshita Rajapaks has got plenty to say to his team. He certainly has, and this is when leadership comes into play. You've got to try and get the uh, the boys motivated. There's no shortage of experience on that side. They just like tipping players out to the right, and here's where try time arrives. The man in the naughty boys chair comes back to score the second try. Wanga Bulangi scores, and we're all tied up. <laughs> Tantalizing tormenting the uh, Eastern Eagles defense is Rakambula. Have a look at him inside out. He could have gone himself, but he chose to wait for Wolangi to come on the outside and then almost falling over the dead ball line. So the strike scored and the Warriors start to control this game. Push Kumar on down as the little marshal there at scrum half makes such a difference because he really does have the ability to step either side and create space. Yeah, 12 all here in this first game, match number four here on day two of these impressive Carlton Super 7s. We're all tied up and uh, really that was just one mistake and it just goes to show too the value of possession. Pereira, his pass didn't go to hand, they go to the line out and one minute later the Western Warriors are even. Well that's it, uh, we always talk about percentages, you give that chance, you know it really comes down to uh, uh, the fact that you have 100% possession and then you gave it away and make it 50-50. Well, they've lost a forward first, it's double knock on. And of course, uh, if you want to live stream, you're more than welcome to join us on www.csn.lk. Stop the big man, the former Fijian captain goes in to score. Thakao is back. What a nice sight and so coolly done. He really is Mr. Cool for all those watching and for the youngsters. Look at that. Just runs hard, puts his shoulder down, moves the ball into the other side just shrugs away one tackle and then gets underneath so strong imposing sight beautiful I'll well, take a bow Sri Lanka of course he is your national coach and what a tremendous job he did with the sevens players in Glasgow I know talking to DJ Forbes and some of the players that are here all just big reps on the Sri Lankan players and how much better they are getting we saw it four years ago at the Commonwealth Games where you struggled to beat Uganda and on that occasion on day one in Glasgow you had them on the rope and then you just lost a little bit and lost that game. I know for a fact, and uh, wonderful sight. She's got the colours on as well today, fabulous. And uh, she'll be pleased now that... Uh, well, the first lady's back in the younger son, so how does Yoshita <laughs> feel, do you think? Well, I'll tell you this much. There is a little bit of uh, Ajibaj there at home, I'm sure. You know, the younger lad's the favourite, and she will wear the colours, but here we go. <laughs> Nangalevu takes it in. And there is the man we were talking about, Roger Pass going in to clear the ball, and that's been done illegally. That's why they've got the penalty. Now, Captain Roger Parks just slows things down. He says to Lotte Rakimbula and the team of experienced players, I'll do what I want here. It's, uh, it's my ball, it's my game. Now he gives it back. Rakimbula held up, gets it back. This is Nanga Levu. The offload isn't good because it's come into the hands of one of the Eagle players. Takao tries to get the turnover. No, no, says the referee. And so the Eagles looking to try and come back into this game. Buthango, Emosi Buthango gets it out wide to Pereira. See if he can make up for that little mistake that he had earlier on. But just the pop pass, not forward. And there is the try scorer. Wangavulangi just slowing things down. Roger Pax has run out. 
And he's received the ball. He can't believe that. The referee. Can't throw it into touch. He can't throw it into touch, he says the referee, but he's trying to pass it to his teammate, referee. <laughs> I think the referee decided that uh, on the wrap there, Yoshida went out in the process. So here's oh, a chance still on for the Eagles. Needed to be given earlier. And the referee, what's he going to say here? Was it forward? That looked forward to me. Yeah, of course, no try. Well done from the assistant referee on that far side. And there is the pass forward here, yeah, clearly in front of the man with the ball. Otherwise, we would have been going possibly to extra time. Just there. Yes, I know, but it was interesting. He knew it was forward. He scored the try. And he looked up in disbelief, saying, Come on, ref. <laughs> We've got to take a chance, mate. Exactly. They've dodged the bullet, have the Western Warriors. Tremendous effort from the Eastern Eagles. Harley Tapoli, their uh, inspirational coach, former Tongan representative of both 7s and 15s, will be delighted with what he's seen today. Not good enough, though. The Western Warriors unbeaten at the tournament, and their reign towards supremacy continues. Beating the Eastern Eagles 19 12. Here are the highlights. Very true, and uh, Dabre, of course, the highlights. And the Eastern Eagles looked the side at the start. They really did outplay the uh, West Warriors. And then uh, finally, they managed to get uh, Rakambula on the scoreboard. And then Edemar Goda almost made, made it uh, a sure thing for the Eagles. So Stefano Dachau came on and then shrugged away the tackle to score and bring the uh, West Warriors up to scratch. We're going to go to a commercial break here on the CSN. When we come back, it's Carlos Super Sevens 2014. Stay with us. Enjoy the best rugby in the world. Rock with 
It ain't gonna stop till we cross the line Pabila Dura duanna paninna vetenna SP veradala Tava langvi langvi javen makvi pinna seema Pana pudanna dinanna vedilla baage ekvila Jaya gosha vahenna Nam kai kote Babu mi ai bel bo min che Karana lei pole Ho ya man che po bolage Uyalin begam Adu bin vaandu yem munne Thadegalude Vetchi daan engal kai Yam yam rock we mu rock we jaega mu Gamu gamu jaega mu ek bi jaega mu Yam yam rock we mu rock we jaega mu Gamu gamu jaega mu ek bi jaega mu Yam yam rock we mu rock we jaega mu Gamu gamu jaega mu ek bi jaega mu Yam yam rock we mu rock we jaega mu Gamu gamu jaega mu ek bi jaega mu Jana gena Jaya gen na din an na vidin na lang di panatila. At the egg bi rock bi diri an sa kita kataru sena. Dara yodan na din an na asin la pa sa uradila. Chena din na hamena. Yamu yamu rock we mu rock we jaga mu. Gamu gamu jaga mu egg bi jaga mu. Yamu yamu rock we mu. Rock me, jaga mu, gamu gamu, jaga mu, ek me, jaga mu. Avila, dura dua na panin na veten na ek me vera dala. Tava lang vi lang vi java yen mat vi. Pinda sima, pana puta na din na vedil na mage ek vila. Jago sha vehna. Yamu yamu, rock me mu. Rock me, jaga mu, gamu gamu, jaga mu, ek me, jaga mu. Rocking and rocking it in the game of rugby. Super seven now all over the country. Unstoppable, international. Pick up the mic if you know this is official. Utsa hagalakuna, give me try. Utsa hagalakuna, give me try. Utsa hagalakuna, da give me give me try. Utsa hagalakuna, jaga kena, jaga kena di na na vi di na lang vi panadila. Yamu yamu, 
javagena jayagena dinanda vidinna lang di panadila ada ek virok pidiriyan sattaka tarusena vera yodanna dinanna asilla pasa uradila chena dinna hamenna yamu yamu rock pemu rock me jayagamu gamu gamu jayagamu ek pi jayagamu Yamu yamu, rock we mu, rock we jai gamu. Gamu gamu, jai gamu, ek we jai gamu. Avila, dura dua na pani na vete na ek we vera dala. Hava lang we lang we java yen mati. Binda sima, pana pudan na dina na vedi la mage ek we la. Jai go sa ve na. Yamu yamu. Rock me mu, rock me jai gamu, gamu gamu, jai gamu, ek me jai gamu. Rockin' and rockin' it in the game of rugby. Super seven star all over the country. Unstoppable, international. Pick up the mic, cause you know this is official. Utsaha galakuna, give me try. Utsaha galakuna, give me try. Utsaha galakuna, na give me give me try. Utsaha galakuna, jawa kena. Rugby, superstar, star all over the country. 
unstoppable international pick up the mic if you know this is official utsaha kala guna give me try utsaha kala guna give me try utsaha kala guna da give me give me utsaha kala guna chava dena jaya dena divana vidindala ni paladila ada ek pirat pidiriyan santa ka parsena dario dana dinana asila pasa uradila Cross the line, Babila. 
Duraduanna paninna vetenna SP veradala Tava langvi langvi javen matvi bila seema Pana pudanna dinanna vedilla vage ekvila Jaya kosha vahenna Naam kai kote Babu mi ai velvo minche Kadanale pole
Good afternoon, Sri Lanka. Welcome back to the Carlin Super 7s here in Kogal at the BOI facility. The two schools are out now because we've got a schools format inside the Carlin Super 7s. Uh, the signs are playing out in the background and you can see it's all about how much commitment these kids have. And for them to be here in Kogala with the world's best players, the likes of DJ Forbes and Thomas Itama. And of course, uh, when you look at uh, the quality, these young lads can see them up front, close up and personal. Fabulous. Stood next to me is perhaps one of the most recognizable faces from the IRB World Series, the seventh competition around the world. He travels. He's perhaps the most renowned rugby traveler I know. And to be able to hold him down here in Sri Lanka is very special on CSN Live. It makes it even better. Willie, we talk about the quality of sevens. We talk about the whole story. I mean, it's wonderful to see the spectacle for, for spectators, for fans around the world watching on television. But for the player in the middle, day two, tough ask. What do you do? Well, you forget about what happened on day one, and so it comes down to finals footy. You need to make sure that you prepare well. So most of the teams this morning got up around 6 o'clock, 5.30, 6 o'clock, would have been in the pool, just going through stretches, just trying to limber the body up, and then they arrive, and then they go through their strides. And it's all about executing the plan. And the coaches have put together a plan of who they're playing and where their strengths and weaknesses are, and it's a matter of heading out there and applying it. One thing I've got to say, Sean, that, and I mean this sincerely, I think that the Sri Lankan players have been the standout in the first four games that we've seen today. No longer are they reliant on the foreign players to actually go and do the dirty work or to make the breaks and do the things. They're actually doing it themselves and it just goes to show the worth of this competition. Well, I was just going to say that because, you know, if we can get the quality of the Sri Lankan player to be able to blend in and power up and get their level up of thinking as well, then the whole quality of that team is... Right oh, up there. Of course it is, and I mean there, there were Sri Lankans that actually won games for their teams today, and um, that's something that I didn't see 12 months ago. They kind of like held back and said, "Well, you're the foreigner, you show us the way." Whereas now they're saying, "Go away, foreigner! I'll actually do the job myself." And I think it's a credit um, to the coaching, but also to the management. And it just goes to show that with a little bit of development, with a few tweaks, and getting the right personnel here, Sri Lanka can certainly be a force in World Sevens rugby. Carl and Super Sevens, we've got the schools included as well, which is a great opportunity. Uh, for yourself, when you see the development, which is actually uh, good progress over the last four years, but what should Sri Lanka do, for example? Here's a tough question for you. IRB World Series slot up for grabs. Can Sri Lanka realistically get one of those slots here in, 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 you know, on this wonderful wonderful little land of ours. Well, Sean, you know, if I had a vote that this is where we'd definitely be bringing the, super, the sevens, IRB Seven Series, because it's all about developing the game, growing the game, and that's what Sri Lanka is doing better than anywhere else at the moment. And so I have no problem with that, and I hope that the IRB watch this and actually realise that you've got to take it to the places where people are keen, where they're developing it themselves and where they want to get better. And so I think that everything's been done that's, that, that, that's correct. Um, whether you get it or not, that, that's a hard one because they'll match likes with likes and there's a lot of politics and there's also a lot of decisions that's outside of our hands and everybody's hands. Um, but if they are looking to develop the game, and who knows, if Sri Lanka keeps knocking and the Carlton Super 7s continues to be the wonderful tournament that it is, perhaps they will sit back and say, we need to be there. Well, we've got a good ambassadors with uh, DJ Forbes, Samasika Amatama, and then yourself. Now, talk about the game, but you know, if we pull some really big strings and get you onto that IRB decision process. But of course, the, the way forward for Sri Lanka sevens 
is the Carlin Super 14 and then how you grow from there as well. Yeah, I think so. And I, I think that um, introducing the school teams there, congratulations to the tournament director and organizers or whoever's responsible, because this is the future. And these young guys here in six years' time could be representing Sri Lanka at the Olympics. That's what realistically is up for grabs. It's an Olympic sport now. It's always going to be an Olympic sport. And so young men or young boys and girls, because it's both codes at play, had now, realistically now have a chance of doing that. And so developing by getting these guys around the best players, as you said in your intro, nurturing them, getting them into camps alongside the top players. And I hope that some of your top players actually start giving back to the schools as well, because that's one of the strengths of New Zealand rugby is that the top players go back to school level and they impart their knowledge and they help and they give back. And so, you know, the Surya Bandaras and the Hedis and the Rajapaksas, if they get some time and they go back to the school that they were educated at and start talking to the things that they've learnt, I'm sure that the young boys and girls will appreciate it. Well, that's very much on the radar. And for, uh, last question, because I know it's live on CSN. We've got the schools playing in the background while the rugby starts in a little bit before, after a break. Willie's been here uh, now the second time here in Sri Lanka. He's got a big smile. He gets a good tan before he goes back. He's in the water. He loves the pool. But of course, Sri Lanka. Willie, how does that sit close to your heart? Well, it's incredible. I mean, I, I, my father was Tongan, and so I'm, I'm used to the island sort of build up, and, um, you know, this is very much very close to me. And the reason why is because the people make me feel so welcome, and that's, you know, that's a given. And so the hospitality has been unbelievable, but I love what you're doing with the development of the game. And, you know, Sevens is close to my heart. I want every country in the world to play it, and the fact that Sri Lankans and so many of you are enjoying it puts a smile on my face every day. Well, thank you very much indeed. We've got to go. We're going to go say thank you very much indeed. Carlos Superstar is just around the corner. Two island brothers talking about it. A little bit older, perhaps, but hey, this is what life is all about. The heart for Sevens, the heart for Carlos Super Sevens 2014. It's always there. We're going to go back to the MCR from now onwards. Break time when we come back. Jamagena, Jayagena na din na mi din na lang bi panadila. Ada ek bi rock bi diri an sa tiba ka tarusena. Dara yodan na din na asin la pa sa uradila. Jay na din na heaven na. Yamu yamu, rock bamu, rock bi jay gamu. Gamu gamu, jay gamu, ek bi jay gamu. Yamu yamu. Rock we move, rock we jai gamu Gamu gamu, jai gamu, ek we jai gamu Avila, tura tua na pani na vete na ek we vera dala Tava lang vi lang vi java yin mati Vindo sima, pana puta na dina na vete na vage ek we la Jai go sha mehen na Yamu yamu, rock we move Rock me, jai gamu, gamu gamu, jai gamu, ek me, jai gamu. Rockin' and rockin' it in a game of rugby. Super sevens now all over the country. Unstoppable, international. Pick up the mic if you know this is official. Utsa hakalaguna, give me try. Utsa hakalaguna, give me try. Utsa hakalaguna, now give me, give me, give me, give me. Pavila, dura 
දුවන්න පනින්න වැටෙන්න XP වෙරදාලා තව ලංවි ලංවි ජවෙන් මස්වි බිල සීමා පන පුදන්න දිනන්න වැටිල්ල වාගේ කිවිලා ජය ඝෝෂ වැහෙන්නා නම් කයි කෝතේ බාබු මිය වෙල් වෝ මින්ෂේ කරලලේ බෝලේ ඔය යාමල් ජේ පොබුලගේ උයලින් වේගම් අද පින් වාගම් යම් මුන්නේ කඩගලුඩේ වෙච්චි දාන්නින් ගල් කයි යම් යම් රොක් වෙමු රොක් වේ ජයගමු ගමු ගමු ජයගමු එක් වේ ජයගමු යම් යම් රොක් වෙමු රොක් වේ ජයගමු ගමු ගමු ජයගමු එක් වේ ජයගමු යම් යම් රොක් වෙමු අපිට හසල්ලන්න බෑ මගේ පුතේ අපිට අපිට උරුම මේ මහ මුහුදයි මේ පොඩි පැල් කොටේ විතරයි උඹ ඒක තේරුම් ගන්න Super Sevens, and it's a match between Jaffna Challengers and the Northwestern Blacks just to kick off. Referee Priyanta Gunratna blows the whistle. It's a short kick off off to the right from the Jaffna Challengers. Martin taps it back. A good take from the Northwestern Blacks. They put it in. The chasers are on here. Done chasing it behind for the Jaffna Challengers. He runs around, turning back. Now has space with him. Brilliant step off to the right. Looking for support, Salia and the Pangod was just too fast there. Arriving support, Salia Kumar now putting the boot in. Now picks the ball up, looking for support. Asitarat Naika comes in. He has one man to beat, and it's been pushed into touch. Good start from the Jaffna Challengers Laga. Yeah, very good start um, from the Challengers. Murad with the ball now, tapping and running inside his own half. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Pim Jasinger breaking up there on the right side has one man to beat Jordan and he steps inside and beautifully done from the Northwestern Blacks excellent work and uh, it's Pim Jasinger goes under the post and scores the first try for the Northwestern Blacks yeah this Pim Jasinger I have a lovely story about him uh, out of St. Joseph College um, of course, at, uh, lucky enough uh, this year, to, uh, as we look at the replay, Jasinger taking that sweeper on Joe um, Tavang, and he made me, he made him look a bit silly there. Uh, uh, Pium Jasinger doesn't look very big, but he's got a this boy's got a big, huge heart. Uh, he, he went the distance here; he went about 60 meters. Yes, it is. There you go, the prize scorer, Pium Jasinger. The conversion goes through. As we hear uh, referee Kumar this morning, um, number 12 there uh, of the Chapter Challenges. So first score to the North of the Western Blacks. Underneath the post too, seven pointer. Eh? Seven points, we're ahead to kick off now. Looks like a high kick, short kick, 
1,400 could take. Could tackle on him too. Takarun is hit! Runs and becomes singer. The ball comes out to just no challenges now. Salia Kumara with the ball on the outside. David cutting across in. He steps through, held up on the tackle. Putting the pass back to Dunn. Long cut out pass from Asita Ratnaika to Heshan Kunratna. This is the man who's with pace. We saw him yesterday. He has one man to beat. And he sends him off. Salia Kumar arriving in support. Not a good pass. Now the Northwestern Blacks have the opportunity to come back. Inside their own half though. Here they come, the Blacks. Murrayhead has men on the outside. He cuts back in the Black. Beautiful. Beautiful step up there, but no. just held up on the tackle by Dan. Now he picks up the ball. Has support with him. Jaffna challenges. Opportunity. And he cuts back in right and left and he goes under the post. Nice bit of footwork there. Wow, good respond by the by the Western Plex here. As we see Tavanga just planting the ball in the trial and he made it very look very easy there. Just uh, playing around with the defender here as we look at the step back inside. And off he went. Seven point eight. They had to respond back straight away. The, the Western Blacks, uh, the Champion Challenger, sorry. Yes, they had to. They were not expecting Northwestern Blacks, Blacks to come out all guns blazing. Western Blacks, of course, uh, losing the first match of the day to Central Kings. <coughs> Conversion goes through. Seven all. So uh, the challenges will restart as in sevens. The dream team that scores will, of course, kick in the restart. He doesn't look. Um, he doesn't look very, you know, uh, off a player, you know, a statue or anything. It's uh, manga, but he's shown himself he's got some tricks. He is high ball. It's been sent out on the full. Big mistake there, Laga. Not very good, not very good from Taranga, you know, kick off on the full and um, of course it's a free kick um, to the Western Plexa halfway and Bjorn Jaisinger has the ball. Jaisinger tapping the ball, has Murid on the right, gives it to him. And inside comes uh, Pubudu Godagoda. And now once again good supporting yes, line from uh, Kavindu Ferreira there. <laughs> Penalty for the Western Blacks. Tackler not releasing is the call from referee Priyanta Kundratna. Maria taking it quickly. And gives it to Jordan on the outside. And that'll be the try for the skipper. Niranjan Vikramaratna scoring on the left flank. Good hands. Right to left on the screen. And lovely hands throughout to score that try on the left. Just very basic. Um, we look at Bjorn just giving that last pass out to Jordan. And Jordan just doing the draw and pass. Couldn't have to just uh, yeah, just do it on watch. Yeah, just do it done a bit better. But just just making it very simple, basic stuff. Putting ball in front. We look at uh, the try scorer walking back. Uh, skipper uh, Niranjan. Yeah, that started um, as we look at the conversion. Yes, Morad has made um, extra two points for the Western Blacks. Just looking at the kickoff. You know the the restarts. Uh, of course, uh, Tevanga kicked it out on the full and it cost him um, cost him seven points. So those are the small things that um, can can really come back and fight you. Yeah, agree, Laga, and also that kick was superb from uh, right out from the corner. As the Blacks restart once again, Martin on the high ball, taking it quickly, dummy pass, held up in the tackle, gives it to Ratnaika now. He's been held up. Now the ball comes out to Salia Kumara. Off to Salia Handa Pangoda. Handa Pangoda steps. He's been held oh back. Murray had trying to play on playing the ruck. He's successful in doing that. And now once again, Northwestern Blacks come out. This come into Pereira. He scores in the same spot once again. Good turnover, Paul. Um, as you see, um try scorer there. Yeah, he had a free run to the to the try line. Just putting out the fin, and we see Tevanga there just trying to make an effort. Oh, a little cheek, a little uh, swinging arm at the end there by Tevanga, but um, that was a good turnover ball. If you 
go back to the replay of uh, how Morad won that ball on the ground and the referee just played advantage, you know, it was good advantage played by the referee. Yeah, it was uh, since half time, the Blacks leading 12 points, or rather 19 points to 7. Yes. I can hear one of the Chevron challenges uh, asking Kurunakram about their last play. Ball is available, he, uh, he, re he replied. It's a bit warm, so these guys have got to sort of manage themselves and make sure you get um, get a lot of fluid in themselves. Uh, mental, you know, mental part of it is going to be very vital how they push push themselves along the way. And, uh, uh, second day. It's very important, uh, like uh, yes, they have been uh, some tiring legs last evening. Uh, today in the morning they have been doing a recovery session in the hotels. And from there on, uh, coming back here, it's very hot, unlike yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, we saw some of the teams uh, coming here early in the morning and spending about 10 seven, or 7 to 10 minutes uh, just blowing it up, getting their second win uh, and making sure that, you know, you get that tiredness out of it. Um, just just getting the legs stretched out a bit more. Uh, after yesterday, some of the teams, um, you know, playing uh, four games in a row was a bit heavy on the body as well. So uh, it was good to see that. Um, obviously, the other teams prefer just to turn up and, and, and go through their warm-up and, you know, get straight into it. Like these are the other things that Sri Lanka will learn uh, during this international sense how these international men prepare for the match even on the second day these are little things that they would like to know rather than just turning up on the match and uh, stretching yourself and playing on from there yeah the Western Blacks were here earlier on in the morning and they were going through um, quite some intensive right. stuff uh, surprised to see but uh, it's just a way of uh, you know uh, looking after and treating their bodies Yes, uh, Andrew Murhead puts in the kick, taken down by uh, Glenn Rose. Release it! Release! Referee playing advantage for the Jaffna Challengers, not releasing the tackler. Yeah, Jordan Topo just a bit guilty there of um, having uh, playing the ball while the referees call it. Quick tap by Devanga, step back on the inside. And he slips in the meantime. Now support arrives in the form of. Uh, Glenn Rose, he gives it back to Salih and the Bangoda. Tavanga now with the ball, gives it to Glenn Rose once again. Has men on the outside. That's uh, Salih Kumar. Salih Kumar goes under the, goes past the try line and he scores for the Jaffna Challengers. Good reply after the half time uh, lag on that. Yeah, Tavanga there. Were, um when the ball came back into the middle, I thought he was going to come out wide, but he opted to go back into the right hand side. And uh, as you see, Martin there, just offloading back inside. And Sally has, also, uh, has always uh, being a very good support player. Yeah, he had to do a bit of work on the try line, just had to turn the body and make sure the ball was planted on the on the deck. Sally Kumar, one of the finest uh, Sri Lankan um, sevens player for for a while now. It's been very long, I think, since you started coaching Candy, he moved there. And, uh, yes, he's been in the scene for a while. Um, I think he's uh, 28, 29, if I'm, uh, if I'm correct. So he's still got a bit more to, to, uh, to give. Tevanga not successful there with the conversion, so the score um, remains 19-12 to the Blacks. As the kickoff goes in, Murad, long pass to Pium Jasinga. Jasinga stepping from inside his own half. Now gives it to Achang. He stands on the tackle looking for support. He's been brought down on the deck now. Back, get back. Pium Jasinga taking it out of the rock. Gives it to Murhead. Black support arrive and a good step from there. Has support on the outside in the form of Murhead. Does he have the pace to go all over? He steps back in. Once again, support arriving. That's Matthew Garland. Ball has been turned over now from the Jaffna Challengers. Inside pass. And a knock forward. There was Glenn Rose who picked up the ball and it's a knock forward unfortunately for the Jaffna Challengers. Good opportunity missed. Good advantage play by the referee there. Um, interesting to see. Uh, yeah, that was a bit marginal. Salia Kumara just going for uh, Bjorn Jansinga when he's trading back for the ball. That ball. 
fresh legs on the park till Navijay Singh coming on and also Dilip Metruan coming on for the Jatna challenges Asita Ratnayaka and Sali Handapang got to take an out and also for the Northwestern Blacks Richie Achang comes in in place of Murad Yum Jai Singer to put into the scrum now ball pops up Richia Chang throws it a long pass. Boot. Referee le letting it go. Boot, boot. Release, tackle out. Get back, get back. back. Referee letting it go. Pium Jasinga once again. Long pass now. Out on the outside is. Uh, Release, Kate! Kosa Latisera. Referee playing advantage for the Blacks. Offside. Back. Offside entering Ruck. In the offside position, also Laga Kosalati Sera also has been in the scene for a while now. Yeah, he's been on and off, um, and of course, uh, another boy from Candy. Here we go, the Northwestern Blacks. Good step, has support Release on the it. outside. Back. Play on. But wants to go himself, referee playing on. Back. Good turnover Back. by. Uh, in the meantime, the ball comes out to uh, Martin. Now Jordan. Good tackle. Sali has pace now. He's running in. Has support in the form of Heshan Gurratna. This boy is speed. He has speed. He goes around. Niranjan Vikramaratna and scores. So back to back tries for the Jaffna challenges after the halftime. And they. Two points behind with the conversion to come. Sali there just seeing the space out wide of course Kunti out wide look at the size has a very good style of running Willie Willie was um, rapping about this guy yesterday uh, he actually scored very you know he scored a very good two uh, two quick tries yesterday uh, at the end of the uh, in it yesterday's um, yesterday's uh, uh, tournament Proceedings for the Jaffna Challengers. I'm off. In the meantime, there's a player down on the deck injured. Medical staff, of course, attending. It doesn't look that good. It is uh, just a bit about um, Kuna Rakhna, uh, 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 out of St. Thomas's, uh, where the Raja Bhaskar boys are from. Um, Fortunate enough to have a bit of time with him um, this season at CR and FC. So he's a development to a. Uh, he's very strict. He's very strict at what he uh, what he does. His diet. So uh, it's working for him. Um, he's time on. Improving every day. Yeah, that's good to see. Improving coming from the coach. Good tap back from Glenn Rose. Release back, go ahead. Northwestern Black secure position. Have men on the outside. Amjad Bucks, another veteran. Sri Lankan rugby. Now Pium Jai Singer. Box arrives in support. Fresh legs on the park. Get back, back. The ball comes out to the north and northwestern blacks. Pubudu Kodagoda. A long pass to uh, Kosala Tisera. They are stepping in. Playoff. Referee playing advantage, letting it go. Here comes the speed star, Gutti. Tilna Vijay Singer now. Amjad Box. Lovely inside steps from Vijay Singer. He has, does he have the legs to go and pick up the ball? Pium Jai Singer, race on here. Just slips, unfortunately, till Vijay Singer. Pupil Koda Koda there, referee playing advantage. That was a good passage of play from Tilna Vijay Singer. Individual brilliance, Laka. Yeah, and Salia Kumar just um, seized the opportunity right in front of him. It's a penalty. It was a bit guilty there, just not letting letting the ball, um, no, not releasing the ball in the tackle. He went on the ground. <laughs> He was just holding on to it, waiting for some support player in. He did well there, just putting his body on the on, on the ground and securing the ball, but he had to let go of it. So he actually played a uh, referee giving away that uh, that penalty, and Salia Kumar, with a lot of experience, just tapped the ball and went through. Yeah, that's what experience all about. And Dylan Vijayasinghe is also another young lad coming from Dharmaraja College. 
Oh, yes, Thank you for Candy. And the conversion to Crump. Just as the legs. And the assistant referee confirms it. There you go. Jaffna challenges win. The Northwestern Blacks go down for the second time in the day. Just to remind you, um, yeah, as we look at uh, Bjorn Janzinger just strolling over in the try for the first try for the Western Blacks, responded by Joe Tevanga, the Fijian scoring in the corner, and we look at second try by the Chapman Challengers back inside to Salia Kumaran. That was his uh, first try. Had to do her work, work, work hard for it. And we see Kunti scoring that try in the corner. And we see the second try by Salia Kumara that um, caught the Jeff and the challenges away from the Western Blacks. And the next match is the Stallions taking on the North Central Typhoons. Of course, the Stallions, their first match of the day. Whereas the poor Typhoons, they suffered a loss earlier against the Sharks by 12 points to 17. And so lots on their mind because uh, this is sudden death now. You start playing for points, valuable points, heading into Colombo next week. Woody Lowe say with your great privilege to be here in Sri Lanka on the CSN. And the main commentator for the game, Clifford, looking forward to this match. Well, thank you, Willie, And very much looking forward to this game. Stallions coming out for the day. And, uh, well, that's going to be their first game today. Talib Salvam, I just had a chat with him and they're looking forward for it. And they are filled with confidence. That's something really good. That's a big start. It's going to be Alatasi Tupu. Puts the ball nice and high. Not a good collection. We'll pick up. That was Hashan Maduranga. He was almost through, but lost it in the process. But once again, Alatasi sends it out to Tulolu. Good run. Nice break of run. Early stages of the game. While well, Richie Dharmapala quickly takes it, uh, looking for support, and Raj Dabekon arrives on his left. And he's got Sasha Mohamed on his left, and Richie behind him. Well, can't get past Josh Amun, who goes down. This is tough. This is tough for both sides. It's a challenging game, and it's going to be very, very tough for Sabragam Italians. Well, that's a loose ball. Now, kick and chase. Well, you don't see. Oh! That is so disappointing. Yeah, that is disappointing too. In Golbo, all he had to do was retrieve the ball and it was try time. And they're living off the mistakes of the Stallions. The Stallions now pushing the pass, throwing the ball into a person in a worse position. And if that had sat up, you saw the disappointment. But there were two of them there and he just snatched it. He didn't need to do that. He should have just cradled it. It was try time. Well, I guess probably uh, he, he mistook Nell as an, as an opponent. So probably that's what happened. Unfortunate for them. Well, that's not Gan Lien again for you. That is Ngobo. Well, quick restart. Oh. Well, Tassi. Looking for that gap. Running through. Takes one. Slips past through. Second one. Yes, and he goes. Shanaka Kumara has no chance. Giving chase. It seems like to Lolo to Lolo this time. And he goes. 5-0. Yeah, brilliant individuals try from to Lolo to Lolo because when he received the ball there was nothing on he received it at the end of a chain after a set piece and then he came back on the angle just a sweep of the beat and Jabbar had no chance of stopping the flying Samoan when he's in this type of mood and that'll put a smile on the face of coach Stephen Beatham not a great day yesterday four losses they've scored a try and they're ahead by five a good start for the Stallions <laughs> made it look so easy there you go the conversion extra two points which is very vital seven nil good start well he's their playmaker too Clifford uh, Alatasi Tupo is the man that um, he's their tactician if you call it on a boat and so everything that he mark architects and puts together comes to fruition because he has got a wonderful rugby sevens mind 
suddenly once again he puts the ball high and deep collected by Samantha Lakshan well Nell this time trying to find that gap well, Lakshan clears it up well sends it to Dushanta Luke but once again Luke with the ball trying to find that gap which is not existing at the moment Shana Kumara cleans it up and seems like Joshua Moon no chance for him too well Nell cleans it up and he finds his own way what is it through no good quick hands this time Hashan Madhuranga comes in for support well he's just going out and oh that's touch and Muthra needs to do better than that because he had a player on the inside it was Hunt who had tracked on the inside channels I'll try and get the quick throw in here but that's really that's experience and I'm sure he'll learn from that Tupo was the last defender and all he needed to do was basically draw him in and just give the ball inside it was try time have a look at it here that needed to be released before he gets close to the touchline there's the supporting player and there's the frustration well obviously he's frustrated well um well, we saw Hashan Madhuranga scoring back to back two brilliant tries last evening during the closing stages. So I'm sure he's filled with confidence. So definitely, this young lad, a player to watch. Once again, a very good morning to all our viewers. If you're just joining us from home and wondering what this is, well, this is the Carlton Super Servants 2014 live and kicking down here in Kogala. And we have the privilege of bringing you exclusive coverage through CSL. A line out. Andrew Benson throws it in. Roger Davikon will picks it up. Nice one. Tupo sends it out. And Otto goes down. Well, ball quickly taken. Big long counter pass. Andrew Bradley Benson collects it. And Sashan Mohamed. Dilip Selvam on his left and Abikon on his right. Well, trying to drill through this defense. No chance. Well, not a good clean up work, Dilip Selvam, but still he managed to hang on to that ball and sends it out. Well, this time seems like for, for two, uh, Otto breaks one, breaks two. Being brought down. Raj Dabikon trying to do the same, but unable to do so, managing only two yards. Well, Alatasi, this time, he's the playmaker Willie was talking about. Yes, we have seen him, and he's been brought down. A good passage of play for. Not central typhoons there. Yeah, guilty of playing the ball on the ground as Sashan goes on with it quickly. Well, Dilip Salam this time breaks one, two. He carries two players with him. Oh, it was a wild throw. Well, this is going to be a good chance for Shanaka Kumara. Well, he's finding his pace. No way. Brought down. Well, anyway, referee is playing advantage. So, not central typhoons. Yeah, they no, have the ball. no advantage there. And uh, just a couple of things that have stood out for me in just the last passage of play, too, is the work rate of Andrew Benson. He's come onto the field, he's really made an impact. His, his role as the hooker was to find the target, he's done that. And just a couple of nice little tap-ons as well. He really has a high work rate, has uh, Andrew Benson. Got a good throw as well, good afro. Yep. He looks like a fidget to me. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew Bradley Benson. Well, good tackle this time, Benson. Shana Kumara, no chance. Well, Tilolo. Well, that's Otto finding his Mike Tololo on his left and Tololo arrives with support and he scores well <laughs> he doesn't score and he goes for that two-pointer extra he wants to get that so definitely he's going for that under the post try good one former Samoan coach of the seven side Stephen Beetham will have a little smile on his face he's a hard man to please for those of us that know him but uh, this is the form that we've been expecting to see from the Stallions four losses yesterday today is all about putting your game face on and his key players are stepping up. Faltua was brilliant in breaking the tackle and getting it there. Tulo, Tulolo Tulolo scores his second try. And I'll tell you what, it was that man that we highlighted earlier as well. It all came from the turnover at the scrum where Andrew Benson got his little hands on the ball and turned it over. Very true, Willie Andrew Benson. Well, that tackle, Samantha Lakshan, didn't stand a chance. Well, that was a good move. Good team effort and good team try by the Stallions. Well, the captain Dilip Selma must be really happy. We are ready with the restart. And that's Alatasi Tupou. Well, cute one using the breeze. <laughs> I 
at the distance seems like full so the free kick goes to North Central Typhoons yeah well Tololo Tololo has done everything except uh, be Michael Jordan on that occasion he reached high <laughs> tried to keep the ball in but just couldn't do it oh goodness yes just like Michael Jordan well Samantha Lakshan quickly takes it no brought down by Otto Lakshan tries to clear it up no not releasing the tempo well he might be going to the chiropractor after that tackle from Faltour as well Otto just lined him up and he gave him the whole 95 kgs of Samoan beef. <laughs> well, it's the half time. During half time, it's 14 0. It's a good start for the Stallions. North Central Typhoons trailing them, but North Central Typhoons had a good start. But this is not the way they wanted this game to be. But anyway, they got another seven minutes to come and they want to give whatever they got in their package and they are planning that in the half time talk. Well, that's the half time score 14 0. Well, it's a Saturday, you can still make it to Kokola. You have beautiful motorway now. Maximum one hour and 20 minutes drive. Unless otherwise you stop in Valley Penda for, for some refreshments. <laughs> what a beautiful country you have. It's have an absolute pleasure to be here. It's, uh, I've been lucky enough to travel around most of the world and the invitation to come back to Sri Lanka, I'll tell you what, I started packing about a month before I arrived here. I couldn't wait to get here. Well, well, it is beautiful beaches, they're colorful, even though like you know, me being a Sri Lankan, every time I walk to this place, like this down south, that always mesmerizes me. Uh, well, we're spoiled, there's no doubt about it, and um, I can tell you on behalf of all the foreign players that are here, they can't believe just how well treated they are, also the places where they're staying, and just how friendly everyone, everyone has been, and just everybody helping and making themselves available, because they come here with the ambition of helping Sri Lanka player get better and better. And that's what they want to do, but they just overwhelmed by just the hospitality. So, thank you, Sri Lanka. Wonderful to be in your country. Absolute pleasure. 14 0 is the half time score. Stallions leading. North Central Typhoons, they have to hit back hard. Let's see. What have they got? Well, what have they got in their package? Well, big names again. Sandele, Ingobu, and Joshua Moon, Mark Richards, Stephen Hunt. Ruhan Nell, along with the likes of Dinusha Aryapala, Arsha Maduranga, Dushant Luke, and Shana Kumara. Let's wait and see. Good kick and collected this time. Hiranta Pereira. One step, two step inside out. Look, AC. It made it look. He made it look so easy. Willie, what a what a start for them. Are you kidding me, Pereira? Where have you been for the first seven minutes? That's what I can ask. Right from the kickoff, he kept his eyes on the ball. That was the key to the try. And then once he caught it, the dummy. See you later. Gets around the outside of uh, Tupo, which is not an easy thing to do. Alatasi Tupo is a very good defender, but on that occasion he was made to look very average from a very good try from Pereira. Don't write off the Typhoons, they're back. They are back with a bang. Well, trying to explain that during the process I lost my words. It was brilliant. Well, unsuccessful at when it comes to the conversion, but still five points counts. 14-5. Tell me a bit about this young man, Pereira. As I say, I don't, I don't see too much of him, but geez, from uh, from that glance there, it was unbelievable. Yep, he's an under 23 player who's coming into the limelight now. Well, as we speak, Stephen Hunt puts the ball back in. Well, probably they were expecting the same thing to happen. No, fresh legs in the park. Well, it's Tololo, Tololo, Otto, been blocked. Alatasi well, trying to find this man. Well, once again, Hiranta Pereira almost got it. Benson this time been brought down. Well intercepted. Can he go all the way? No. Dinusha Aryapala almost through. Well, ball been sent out. And this time, once again, it's Hunt. He's got the support. It's Hiranta Pereira. Once again, he scores. Good comeback try by North Central Sunfields. And they are back in this. 
Well, it all came from the turnover, so why isn't it appropriate that he actually scores the try? Because he went up, made the big hit on Benson, and then he got back out to the wing position. The big fin there, Abia Kuhn couldn't stay with him. And just in the space of two and a half minutes, two tries to Pereira, and the Typhoons are back to within four. Well, once again, it's nice teamwork there. You know, Shari Pala, Kuhn chucking in that with the tackle. Benson had no chance. Well, it's difficult to kick from that angle because she's kicking against the breeze. It just shaves through the post. Shaves across the post rather. 14-5. Like I said at the beginning, every conversion counts. Two points is vital. Once again, Stephen Hunt. Well, in big moments, you call on big players, and that's where Alatasi Tupo, Tulolo, Tulolo, and also Otto Fautua really need to step up here. This is where you earn your cash. Big moments like this, they lead by four. Well, once again, Hirata Pereira almost got that. This time, Andrew Benson with the ball. Well, he's got support. Roger Zabekon been brought down by Nell, and in fact, brought out and dumped on the floor. It takes some time for Abikon to recover, but as we speak, well, on the other hand, Typhoons, they're on the attacking mode. Well, this time, this big man, Sandili Ingobu, and he goes, and he goes. Well, I'll tell you what, he's not good if they bounce the ball and he's got to catch it like he did in the first half where he could have scored a try, but put the ball in his hands, and it's good night, nurse, without the pill and without the kiss. That is unbelievable. <laughs> That's just, absolutely unbelievable. He just got the ball. Look at that. He just burnt them. Went on the outside. Oh, that's wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. What a comeback from the Typhoons. I don't know what the coach said at half time, but he might want to bottle it and start selling it on the street. <laughs> well, that's fantastic. Stallions can't sleeping again. I'm sure shell shocked Stallions right now. They were leading 14 0 and not even in the space of four minutes, two to three minutes, I guess. They are 15, 14 now. They're down. Good comeback play. Nonsense typhoons. They have this second half magic. Well, Hunt with the restart again. Well, this time, well, he's got support. It seems like Dishan Vikramasinghe coming on. Yes. Dishan didn't have much space to run through that. But good long take. Well, Nell. Nell and Hunt teaming up this time. Ingobo coming into play as well. Not many numbers for not Central Typhoons. Yeah, Counter Ruck was brilliant there. They had more numbers and that's why they tapped. Here goes Tupo. Well, since it's out to Suyalo. This time Suyalo. He goes. Well, good support play by Suyalo. Tupo, well, he just got it and, and he was just going for it. Well, it's a try fest in the second half, isn't it? There was a drought in the first half, we're wondering what would happen. And in the space of the second half, we had four tries, three to the Typhoons. And here is Soyalo Fale. Look at that, the big fend off. It all came from the turnover. They sent in more players, so they won the counter ruck. And then, as I say, you need your big players at this time. And Nalatasi Tupo, he didn't need a second invitation. Trailing by one, he tapped it quickly, got it out to his compatriot, Fale Soyalo, and said, tell you what, son, you go and run and score a try so that we win. <laughs> well, that's words of wisdom. Well, this is very much kickable because he's going to be kicking with the wind. Well, had the distance but not the direction. So once again, Stallions, their lead. 15-19, what a game. Yeah, quality game this one. I'll tell you what, put this on the archives and show it back when you're doing some coaching manuals as well because this is how sevens should be played. A couple of mistakes are crucial. But both teams have come out with a real positive attitude. Alatasi Tupo with the restart. He's going to put the ball back in. Yes. Well, short one. Well, sensible play by Typhoons. Well, it seems like Ruan Nell to Hunt. Back to Nell. Ingobo on his left and he collects. Ingobo versus Alatasi Tupo. Well, once again, Nell. He cuts through. And good support play there by. Typhoons and they go. That is Prismir Jabbar, the young lad. 
Well, brilliant support play there. Nice teamwork. No, there you go. Carrying through. Jabba coming in from his left. Well, the pass was expected to go to Ingobo, but Jabba cutting in through. And that left no chance for the defence. Well, I'll tell you what, take it back even further than that. You're calling the game, but it was Pereira who got the ball and threw the quick line out. And that was the reason why they scored the try and won the game. His presence of mind to get the ball in play because he knew that the clock was running out. So well done, he scores two tries and was influential in that try as well. Jabba finished it. What a comeback from the Typhoons. What a match of rugby we've seen. Well, day two is really live and kicking. It's fantastic. This is the one. This is what Carlton Service is so, so unique as well. Because we've been talking about some electrifying rugby, mind blowing rugby, and that is what you've witnessed in the short while. Well, the final score is 22 19. There you go. Well, let's have a look at the highlights, and I'll tell you what, there's some beautiful moments to watch in this game. The Stallions got off to a flying start. Tulolo, Tulolo crossing the line and then just moments later there he was on hand again to bring it around to improve the position and so we went to the halftime break with the Stallions ahead by 14 and then they introduced Pereira right from the kickoff he scored it and then he was on the end here and ran around to improve the position then in Gobu I don't know what he was doing for the first half but on this occasion brought around and improved the position and then they were back with Soyalo and when they thought they were done, the Typhoons came back and there is one of the smallest players on the field, Jabbar, going in to score the fourth try in the fourth half to win for the Typhoons, 22 points to 19. Let's head downstairs to Shan. Let's go down to the grounds and see what Chandashan got to say. He's down there. Wait. Oh, fitness expert. Let's go and see. Good afternoon again everybody uh, watching CSN live around the country. This is of course the Carlton Super 7's 2014 day to pressure day. You've seen some of the games, unforgiving and it really does come down to how big the heart and how much fitness, how much petrol in the tank. Now we've been doing some fabulous stories because we've got perhaps some of the best people in the world traveling, visiting, working with us, which is fabulous too, uh, in Sri Lanka with the franchises. Stood next to me is Idu Tusitala. My goodness, very nice to see you. Here you are now. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Well, you're, you are a global traveler. You are a rugby first. You've been around the world. You've seen the whole story. You've trained some of the best in the world. And here you are now in Sri Lanka looking at this country and what you can do to take it to the next level. Oh, fantastic. Thank you. Uh, thank you, brother. It's awesome to be here. What an amazing, amazing setup and an amazing tournament. Wow. You know, if I, if I can say this, that people out there who have never seen this, this kind of, uh, you know, tournament before, you must come here and see it because it's unbelievable. It's a fantastic setup. Uh, you know, it's great, great weather. And, you know, it's just a great atmosphere of actually like coming into this stage. You know, it's very good, very good. Home for you is Samoa, but of course you're all over the place, you're all over the world. You've been in America, you've been in Australia, you've been in England. Now in Sri Lanka, you look at the quality, you look at the sevens, you look at the school kids, you look at what needs to be done in Sri Lanka. Uh, do we have the ability and the skill that we can take it forward? Yes, uh, oh my gosh, the, the, the quality of the, 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 the Sri Lankans, it's amazing. It's like, uh, it reminds me when you go to Samoa, uh, the kids. The kids are just, the, uh, you know, so natural in a way. The, the the way they move, the way they, they challenge themselves. But like, there's no different. Just on a on the other side of the coin is that Sri Lanka's, uh, you know, size are a little bit more disadvantaged. So I think uh, we we you know that's that's the other thing that we're looking at it. My my coming here is actually looking at how they improve the you know the quality of their you know their their, their size and also it's not about size but just the quality of the, the players. You know. You're also a very big champion on the nutrition side of things about eating natural. You need to tell people this in Sri Lanka because in Sri Lanka and I fight with the people uh, all the time. It's about eating food that is good for you as opposed to food that you like to eat. The you know, taste. You know, I've been all over the world. And I've never found any of my, you know, natural food that we come from Samoa. But when I come here in Sri Lanka, you have, you know, the amazing plenty of food that actually we have in Samoa. So you have so much uh, natural, you know, food that I think that will help, you know, for me to look at the Sri Lankan, uh, you know, to go back into that sort of a nutrition uh, that they knew, used to eat in the, in the years ago. So I think uh, if they can just go back a little bit and take all the, the, the food that they have here, it will be like quite a different... Um, 
you know, size of uh, their players and also the athletes. All right, I'm going to put you on the spot now. You've been to Sri Lanka, you've seen it, you've been, you're part of the Sharks now as, as uh, in charge of their training and conditioning. Sri Lanka, you're going to come back? Oh, absolutely. I'm, I'm here. You know, you're looking at this guy with the long hair. You're going to see more of this guy very f in the future in Sri Lanka in sports. So, you know, that's what you're going to see. Brilliant. There you go. He's a global star here in Sri Lanka. Very proud indeed and a privilege for us to have him here. You've got to check his hair. Look at that. That is very special. Wherever you go in the world, wherever, in America, in Australia, in Fiji, in Samoa, when you see those locks, you know it's the man. And we're very happy indeed to have him here. Fabulous. Island Brothers, this is it. CSN Live. One more can you ask for? That's right. Sin. Jama gena, jaya gena din anavi din lang bi panadila. Ab ek bi rok bi diri an sat lag thar sena. Vera yodan na din an na asil pa sa uradila. Chena din na havena. Yamu yamu, rock bamu, rock we jai gamu, gamu gamu, jai gamu, let me jai gamu. Yamu yamu, rock bamu, rock we jai gamu, gamu gamu, jai gamu, let me jai gamu. Avila, dura dua na panin na betin na ek vi vera dala. Tava lang vi lang vi java yen mas vi. Mina sina, pana puta.
never run peace So it's never stop, all over that country Unstoppable, international Pick up the mic if you know this is official Utsaha Galakuna, give me try Utsaha Galakuna, give me try Utsaha Galakuna, nah, give me, give me Utsaha Galakuna Chava Tena Chava Tena Dina Navi Nindalan Vipala Dila Adha Ekvi Rakvi Diri En Santa Gata Arsena Dario Danya Dina Na Asila Pasa Ura Dila We were born to survive We're the chosen kind We reach for the sky It ain't gonna stop till we cross the line Babila Dura duanna paninna vetenna SP veradala Tava langvi langvi javen matvi bila seema Pana pudanna dinanna vedilla vage ekvila Jaya kosha vahenna Nam kai kote Babu mi ai velvo minche Kadana nai pole Oya manu chai pomula gai Jaya gena, jaya gena din anna vi din na lang vi panadila. Adha ek vi rock vi diri an sat lag dar sena. Vera yodan na din anna asil la pasa ura dila. Chena din na hamena. Yamu yamu, rock vi mu, rock vi jaya gamu. Gamu gamu, jaya gamu, ek vi jaya gamu. Yamu yamu. Rock we move, rock we jai gamu Gamu gamu, jai gamu, ek we jai gamu Avila, dura duanna paninna vetenna ek we viradala Tava lang vi lang vi java yen matvi Vinda sima, pana pudanna dinanna vedilla vage ek we la Jai gosha vehenna Yamu yamu, rock we move Rockin' it, rockin' it in the game of rugby Super seven star all over that country Unstoppable, international Pick up the mic if you know this is official Utsaha Galakuna, give me try Utsaha Galakuna, give me try Utsaha Galakuna, nah, give me, give me Utsaha Galakuna, Java Tena Jaya Tena Dina Navi Nindalan Vipala Dila Adha Ek Vi Rakvi Diri En Santa Gata Arsena Dario Danya Dina Na Asila Pasa Ura Dila Jaya Na Dina Havena Yamu Yamu Rock We Mu Rock We Jaya Gamu 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 Jaya Gamu Ek Vi Jaya Gamu Yamu Yamu Rock We Mu Rock We Jaya Gamu 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 Jaya Gamu Ek Vi Jaya Gamu We're the chosen kind We reach for the sky It ain't gonna stop till we cross the line Babila 
unstoppable international pick up the mic if you know this is official utsaha kala guna give me try utsaha kala guna give me try utsaha kala guna da give me give me utsaha kala guna chava kena jaya kena dina navinda nanvi paladila ada ek pira pe diriyan santa ka tarsena periyo danna dina na asil pasa uradila Tu 
ගුවන්න පනින්න වැටෙන්න SP වෙරදාලා තව ලම් වී ලම් වී ජවෙන් මත් වී බිඳ සීමා පණ පුදන්න දිනන්න වැඩිල්ල වාගේ ක්වීලා ජය කෝෂ වැහෙන්නා නම් කයි කෝතේ බාබු මිය වෙල් වෝ මින්ෂේ කරනලි පෝලේ ඔය යාමර ජේ පොබලගේ උයලින් වේගම් අදු බින් වාඳුම් යම් මුන්නේ තඩේගලුනේ වෙච්චි දාන් යෙන්ගල් කයි යම් යම් රොක් වෙමු රොක් වී ජය ගමු 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 ජය ගමු එක් වී ජය ගමු යම් යම් රොක් වෙමු රොක් වී ජය ගමු 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 ජය ගමු एक भी जाएगा मु यमु यमु रोक में मु रोक भी जाएगा मु गमु गमु जाएगा मु एक भी जाएगा मु यमु यमु रोक में मु रोक भी जाएगा मु गमु गमु जाएगा मु एक भी जाएगा मु जब गेना जाएगे न दिन न दिन दिन न लंग भी पन दीला अब एक भी रोक भी
Unstoppable, international Pick up the mic if you know this is official Utsaha Galakuna Give me try Utsaha Galakuna Give me try Utsaha Galakuna Nah, give me, give me Utsaha Galakuna Chava Kena Chava Kena Dina Navi Ninda Langi Paradila Ata Ekpi Rokpi Diri En Santa Kata Parasena Dario Danya Dina Na Asila Pasa Uradila We were born to survive We're the chosen kind We reach for the sky It ain't gonna stop till we cross the line Babila Dura duanna paninna vetenna FB veradala Tava langvi langvi javen matvi bila seema Pana pudanna dinanna vedilla vage ekvila Jaya kosha vahenna Nam kai kote Babu mi ai velvo minche Kadana lei pole Oya manu chai pomulage Uyalin begam Adu bin vangum yem munne Thadai kalude Vetchi daan yengal kai gil Yamu yamu Rock we mu Rock we jai gamu 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 Jai gamu Ek we jai gamu Yamu yamu Rock we mu Rock we jai gamu 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 Jai gamu Ek we jai gamu Yamu yamu Rock we mu Rock we jai gamu 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 Jai gamu Ek we jai gamu Yamu yamu Rock we mu Rock we jai gamu 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 Jai gamu Ek we jai gamu Jama gena Jaya gena dinanda mi dinna lang di panadila Ata ek vi rock di diri en sakta kataru sena Vera yo danna dinanna asilla paasa uradila Chena dinna havenna Yamu yamu, rock we mu, rock we jaya gamu Gamu gamu, jaya gamu, ek vi jaya gamu Yamu yamu, rock we mu Rock me, jai gamu, gamu gamu, jai gamu, ek me, jai gamu. Avila, dura dua na pani na bete na ek me gera thala. Welcome back. Welcome back. Carlton Servants live from Kokola. The match coming up next is Chapnas and Challenges versus Northern Gladiators. It's been a beautiful afternoon. Though it's been sunny, there's a nice breeze blowing around this ground and it's a fantastic scene right next to the beach. As you can see, both teams head by Fazil Marija and Salia Kumara run out. Alongside me in commentary is Willie. How are we enjoying it today? Well, absolutely brilliant to be back here in uh, Sri Lanka, in particular this part of the world. Gosh, it's been sunny as you've mentioned, but uh, these two teams have had one match each. The Northern Gladiators losing to the Vipers, the Uber Vipers, by 19 points to 12. And earlier, the Jafta Challengers, well, they lost, to the, uh, they won actually, against the North Western Blacks, 24-19. So this is the second match for both teams. I'm expecting that uh, the skill level and also the decision making will be a lot better. I hope so, and uh, as you can see, both teams ready to kick off. Nina Flau, jersey number nine, playing for the Northern Gladiators. Right there, ready? He's ready to kick off as Pradeep Fernando, the referee. <laughs> Here we go. Nice high kick, holding up in the wind. Asita Ratnayaka taking it down. Let's get back to the black. Salia Kumara looking for players. Once again, Saleh Kumara in support. Now comes Sajid Saranga as Astirat Naik on his outside, not letting it go. 
Să fii fără acolo, să fii fără acolo, să fii fără acolo, să fii fără acolo, I saw a shot there of Mbatiratu, the man uh, for the Jaffna challenges with no number on his back. It certainly is a challenge getting the team list for some of the players and uh, their numbers. Seems to change. It's a commentator's nightmare. Obviously, we want to get it right. And so Mbatiratu out, standing way out in the back line. Here we go. Northern Gladiators now come off to Fazil Marija, Danish Karanjan. On the outside is Molivero. They push the cutout pass. Nina Pulau now gives it to Roshan Viratna as men on the outside. Mavala running to the left corner and he scores. Good pace there shown by Mavala. Yeah, far too easy for the first try. Just a simple set piece of taking it down one flank. And once they got down one side, and then just beautiful transfer of the passes as well. This is an aspect of the game where the Sri Lankans are really learning that you've got to be accurate in your passes. And once they got out to Mawalu, top try scorer for the Northern Gladiators yesterday, and that's try number two for him on day two here at the Carlton Super Sevens. Difficult kick coming on the left corner of Fazil Marija, Sri Lankan servants captain. Just hooks it away off the right post. So they'll be lead five points. Conversion not good from the skipper. And as in servants, they will restart once again. The Northern Gladiators, Nina Pulau. The beat also easing out a bit. Switches and puts in his left boot. Sajid Saranga tapping it back. Danish Kuranjan picking it up. The Northern Gladiators referee playing advantage, it's a knock forward. Coach not happy. Well, there is the uh, hairstyle, the distinctive hairstyle of Sevulu Loni Tambu from Fiji. He wanted to get on with it. The original knock on by the Jephthah Challengers means more position and more territory. For the gladiators, and here's a Falau Niu. Falau Niu putting it in, taking it out quickly to Fazil Marija. In the centre is Tambu. Goes down. Good tackle from Martin. Ball pops out of the rock, and it's play on. Sali Kumar with the ball now. Gives it to Heshan Gurratna. This man has pace. He runs around Pradeep Lee and again. Now cutting it back. Nice to see. Not kicking away position, getting it back. Kumbu now with the ball. He steps off Basil Marja has one man to beat. Standing up on the tackle. Gives it to Batiratu. Puts the ball in. Kicking it once again. Hope it does not go over the touchline. Picking it up. And goes under the post. It's Batiratu. Yeah, the two Fijians connecting on that occasion. And really all credit has to go to the Sri Lankan players that were coming down this right hand flank. And then they pulled back and they threw the ball back to people in a better position. In Batiratu, this is the last part of it after Johnny Kubu had made the initial break. And lovely soccer skills there as well. Just controlling the ball, waits for it to pull, the ball to bounce on the tackle, bounces up beautifully, takes it around and scores their first try of the afternoon in this match. In Batiratu from Fiji. Here goes David Batiratu, the try scorer. Conversion is good, so they will lead by two points. The Jaffna challenges. So far, it's all, really it's nice to see Sri Lankan players today have improved from yesterday, not kicking away a position. Yeah, you caught it well in the commentary there, because nothing's more frustrating than having possession and then trying to break through a tackle that's not really on or kicking the ball away. On that occasion, they threw the ball back and got rewarded with seven points. There go, Kupu restarting, nice high kick, held up on the wind. And good tap back by Martini, but it's... Martin puts it out. Long pass to Pradeep Lian again. Referee playing advantage, Fazil Marija with the ball now. Gives it to his speed star, Danush Karanja. Referee calling it to release the ball. Roshan Viraratna, now comes to Pulau. Long cut out pass to... Uh, 
Mawala. And he steps off Kubu and he goes under the post. Mawala's second try. Beautifully done. Yeah, and well that's class again. Right from the initial mistake where the challengers threw Martin, knocked the ball out into touch. The quick line out. They pushed it wide and then they came back down this flank here. Mawalu, one player to beat, steps off that left foot there. Just too big and strong. Very little that Kubu could actually do on that occasion. The last sweeper for the Japanese challengers. And just like that, the gladiators are back. Yeah, conversion is through. So it'll be 12 points to five. will restart proceedings with another gladiators. Here we go, interesting to see where the kickoff will go. This time it goes on to his right. Nice high kick. Tabu waiting for it. Not collecting it clearly in the meantime. Martin knocks it off. Referee playing advantage for the gladiators. The play will come back. Fazil Marija gives it to his partner Roshan Viratna. Nicely done by Fazil Marija. Here comes the Sri Lankan captain. Scores his try. Beautiful. Well, that's what we've been waiting for. Is to see some of that Sri Lankan magic. And it was two of the smallest players on the field as well. Just the interaction there. Viratna there and giving it back to his captain and says, "Here you go, boy. You go, Marija." You know where the try line is. He's done that on a number of occasions. And brilliant play from the two Sri Lankan players to score that try. Yeah, the try converted by Roshan Viratna. Once again, really nice to notice that these both players are the half combinations in the 15 side for the Candy Sports Club. So it's nice to see both of them working. Roshan Viratna and Fazil Marija. They've been played together many, many years for the Candy Sports Club and also Sri Lanka the 15 in the format nice to see both of them working together much happy coach will be Adrian Pierce Northern Gladiators have uh, come good today Billy yeah they really have and they've taken their opportunities that's the most important thing there is Adrian Ferris sets very high standards um, for the team and nothing better than seeing the development of the players in particular the Sri Lankan players that are on the field making good decisions because that's what sevens is all about it's a split second, in fact, I think in kids' terms, more your age group. It's a nanosecond, they call it. In my generation, it was called a second. Now it's a nanosecond. Yes, it is. <laughs> Time runs too fast these days. And, uh, yes, you're correct, Willie. Really. The most important thing is to make the decisions correct. And that's what Sri Lankans were lacking, but they're coming good now. That split second decision is very important. And, and, and the thing that you're trying to teach them with all the coaches that are coming here is when you get to the outside and you're running down the flank, if it's not on, if you haven't got the pace, don't kick it, don't go into touch, pull back, pass because there's always somebody in the pocket. And we've seen that too, and that's the biggest development and the biggest change that I've seen in Sri Lankan sevens rugby over the last year since I was here last. Very good. Very nice to hear those yeah. words, Sri Lankan rugby improving. Will restart to restart for the Jaffna challenges. They need to get some couple of quick tries in the second half, early in the second half. No changes made for the Northern Gladiators team. <laughs> Referee starts Kubo. Not 10. Mistake from the uh, Jaffna challenges, will it cost them? Roshan Viratna taking it quickly. Has Pulau on the outside, gives it to him. Danush Karanjan asking for it. Long pass back inside to Roshan Viratna. He's trying to step. He steps through. One has one man to beat. Pops it off. And now the Jaffna challenges have turned the ball over. Asita Ratnaika gives it to Martin on the outside. He has two players to counter with. Good to see two players in seven tackling. Vera Rutni did everything right there. You could see him, they, they, they sort of played with the line. Once he got in contact, he didn't need to throw that ball though. But, you know, that's a split decision. That's the decision you make. It wasn't the right decision, but he'll learn from that. In contact there, you've just got to just, especially when there's opposition players in between, which is what happened on that occasion. But I just love the confidence that I'm seeing from these young players. 
Very nice to see Roshan Viratna stepping up to the mark. For the Jaffna challenges, it was a knock on. Kubu will put in. Red advantage! Red playing advantage. Pradeep Lienage breaking off the scrum very quickly. Salia Kumara now. Back to Hesha and Gunaratna. Good TS to know. In comes. Now the gladiators run advantage. over on top and the advantage with them. Now the ball comes to Mowalu. Has Tabu with him. Gives it to Pulao on the outside. He has hit the line. Pops it off in the meantime. Fazil Marija. Has men on the outside. Is Tabu. Mowalu. Danush Karanjan waiting for that sprint. No space there. So he has to What's come back. There? The ball is out. Martin looks at it and gets the ball on. Coming off the side, says the referee. Yeah, I'm not sure whether I agree with the referee. Brilliant tackle from Bandari as well. He's been defending well. Here's the young man, Asita Bandari, for the Jephna Challengers. They went right around the bootlaces. That tackle needed to be made. And Martin's going to spend the next minute in the Naughty Boys chair. He's going to the library. I'm not sure whether it's the correct decision because uh, the reason he gave is... Uh, Talking back to the referee in the meantime. Northern Gladiators now have the advantage. Seven on six on the park for the Gladiators. Here comes Fazil Marija. Gives it to uh, loop around from Marija once again. This is what he does all the way long for the 15th side in Sri Lankan rugby. Loops around and scores on the left. Northern Gladiators. One man advantage. And his second drive for the Sri Lankan skipper. Yeah, and they've taken toll over, haven't they? Players in motion, running around, looping around. And how many times have we seen this, Sri Lanka? Your captain, Fazil Marija, putting the ball over the white line. Good space, good decision making, great finish. And that's his second try in this match. Now Adrian brings up fresh legs. Damien Ratwatha coming in for the Northern Gladiators. Fazil Marija is taken out, try scorer. Interesting decision, really. Yeah, well, I think it's the right decision. They've got the one in the bank at the moment, and so you rest your top players, and he certainly is one of those. So you just get him off the field. A bit like a racehorse after he's won the Melbourne Cup. You sort of put him in the shed there and in the stable. A nice long walk through the, uh, the bath. A few more oats. And another change to Lassita Di Costa coming in. Northern Gladiators in place of Sandun Herat. Nice high kick waiting on the wind. Tabu taps it back. And he's on the touch, right says uh, the assistant referee. Then look, you're a young man and we've seen some interesting hairstyles. There's obviously Sasanta with his uh, hairstyle and also this one here from Tambu who's now been replaced. But I don't know, would you ever colour your hair like that with a little stripe down it? I have to try. <laughs> I don't know whether it'll work. But, uh, Nice yeah, stripe down my bald head wouldn't look that good, would it? <laughs> you need to do something to that. <laughs> Jaffna challenges back to full strength. Martin is back. I've only tried once. Uh, I've tried to copy Israel Pulau of uh, Australia. Oh, really? How'd that look? Not bad, but I had to cut it soon. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's not a bad player to follow, Israel yeah. Pulau. There you go. Jaffna challenges with the ball. Back to full strength. Chaturanga. Inside pass to Salia. Kumar has one man to beat. Has support on the outside. Refuses to give the ball. Contact. Chaturanga once again. Now gives it to Heshan Gunratna. He runs around and a good tackle to slow down him. He knocks the ball in the meantime. Gladiators regain position. Advantage. That was once again good defense. You can see both of the players, Roshan Viran and Damien Ratwata combining there. Roshan Viran is slowing the player down. No, he's too fast. Then the other player comes in to drop, make that knock-on available. Yeah, good work from Ratwata, but uh, Chaturanga, I've, I've been really impressed with him. And he was disappointed, you can see, after he had lost the ball, he was uh, filthy at himself for not showing more protection of it. Quickly. It's been a good game. Very good game, in particular for Stop. the Northern Gladiators. Fine. That's been... Set. 
Love has been taken out now. Roshan Viratna switching to number nine once again. Damien Rathbat is a young fly up. Now gives it to uh, Mawalu. Mawalu running on the outside. Stepping back. Look at him. Look at the strength. They are holding on to Martin with one hand. Now the ball comes out once again. Long pass to David Halifunua. Roshan Viratna to Pradeep Lienage. The experienced two working. Halifunua, we're asking for the ball. Viratna going for the last defender. Beautiful. Nice pass. And that's the split second decision. Fail to pass, Billy. Well, the Tongan, he's going to offload as well. He could have scored it himself, but he's given it to Ratwate. And how appropriate because he was the man that caused the turnover in the defensive line when it looked like Chaturanga was going to score for all money. But here's the lovely ball. That's magical. That is out of the top draw. That is class. Vira Ratne. And we've been talking about it all afternoon. These Sri Lankan players are learning. They're getting better. They're making good decisions. And that's a lovely touch as well. So that's it. Northern Gladiators win. 33 points to 7. to come up there is no confirmation northern gladiators beat jaffna challenge jaffna challenges 33 points to 7 good game from the gladiators as we wait for the highlights package here we go the first drive from mavalu on the right corner show speed and then mumbachi Mumbachi ratu going under the post good football skills shown mavalu once again stepping back inside to score the second try for the northern gladiators and from there on, this was Sri Lankan skipper Fazil Marija breaking through for a couple of tries for the Northern Gladiators. And the final, David Halipunua giving to the Damien Ratwatha, young Ratwatha. It's always nice to score a try. Well, game coming up next will be Sabrakam Australians will be taking Eastern Eagles. Italians, they had a fantastic run since this morning. Eagles, they have to bounce back from what they went through. It should be, it should be a good encounter, uh, Clifford. Um, of course, the Eastern Eagles coached by uh, former Tongan um, international, Harley Tupol. And uh, the Stalins coached by uh, Stephen Peterson, of course, uh, a familiar figure to uh, the Seventh Circuit and to rugby lovers. Obviously. Well, Stallions with the kickoff. Nice and high ball. Well, Sasha Mohamed was almost there to collect that. Kidwan brought down East Eagles with the attack. Simosi Wakuga and Tal Dabri this time. Can he go? Is brought out? No. Wakuga. Wakuga. Darumpal has no chance. And cuts in through this time. Leo Lolo. Can he go all the way? No. He's waiting for support. And misses that ball during that process. Knock forward. Referee's playing advantage. Stallions with the ball this time. Sensed out. Rechi Darumpala. Sensed out to Suyalo. Bukfato Otto. Goes down. Dabre brings the tackle, nice one. <laughs> Selwyn trying to clean it up, no chance. Selwyn quickly take it and sends it out to <laughs> Alatasi Tupu. Well, Dharma follow with the ball. It's been like cute hard tackles there. Dharma sends it to Sashan Mohamed. Let's see who's got the skill this time. Is it Wakuga? Oh, moment now intercepted. That is Sashika Jayavardhana. No, no, it was. It was Talia's a little bit slow on there. Yeah, well caught by the referee. Just a slight forward pass there. I thought you could have uh, released the ball a bit earlier there. Yeah, a bit too casual there from um, Leo Lolo, uh, someone international. Had uh, plenty of space in front of him, but just a bit too casual to passing the ball out on the right hand side. He managed to uh, uh, lost it forward. And they gave, um, gave the Stallions another chance. 
and Mosi Bakuga, contender for a leading try scorer. Five, Already with eight tries in hand. Set. Not a clean one, but still ball secured. That is Alatasi Topo going down. Sashan Mohamed doing the clean up work. And Dilip Salwam, poor pass, wild one, but still auto secures it. Tries to go down, no. Brought down in front of their own 25. Not releasing the ball. Well, this time quickly takes it. Emosi Bakuga almost through and he scores. First try. Eastern Eagles, five points. Good one. Oh, surely show a bit of class here. Emosi uh, won the turnover, won the turnover um, very steady on his feet. And he took a quick tap and he went um, around a few defenders uh, from the Stalins and bust his way through. Just cause uh, five meters away from the post and much needed. Well to serve as well for the Eagles. Emosi Bukago. Uh, one of the Well he's been a live wire, Emosi Bukango. Yeah, Emosi Bukango, sorry, uh, one of the many few teams uh, more involved in this series. Pina Lovasa with the restart for Eastern Eagles. Good start for them. Seven on the boot. Nice and high. The short one. Well, almost back. intercepted. <laughs> Referee says advantage, but then again, knock forward. Brought back in for scrum in favor of Stallions. He had, um, he was leaping out um, a bit high for that one. Uh, Lilo Lo, uh, Lio Lolo. Managed to grab the ball, but it just lost it and on, on his way down. And those things are very vital. Um, Crouch! It seems like Leo Lolo has switched off his turbo. Set! Well, scrum, not clean. Yeah, you can see. Sorry, Cliff, you can see this side of the this side of the scrum. Leo Lolo really putting on the pressure on one of the Sri Lankan um, uh, players opposite him. Yeah. Crouch! To see how he puts on the pressure. It's scrum time. Five. That's poor Sashan Mohamed. Set. Who's in the tussle with Leo Lolo? Well, Richie quickly takes it and sends it to Alatasi. Well, now it's well, Raj Dabikan. No, it's just just going through that. Keep Keep tackle ball. brought down, stopped. He says release the ball. Guyan Lienage there. Indication not released. Okay, so go. a free kick has been given. No, no. <laughs> Yeah, bit well, of real discipline. Just there. Yeah, bit of real discipline by, by Guyan. He, he took on. He decided to take on uh, Darbeter and just held on to the ball in the outside. Utango well, quickly takes it and sends it out to Tusta Samartilaka, and this time Leo Lolo trying to break that defense. No. Please. My gosh, look at that. <laughs> that was no, no, crunching no. stuff. Leo Lolo, the Samoan international, ran straight into Dilip to uh, uh, Salvaman. He didn't. Uh, he didn't step away. I stood his ground, huh? Well, crowd nicely building up. Well, it seems like Selvam is up and Leo Lolo is still down. Okay. <laughs> oh, very much. <laughs> oh, Dilip, uh, Dilip Selvam, of course, is a is a is a hard cookie man. He's a, uh, of course, a product go out of Trinity uh, and Candy. Uh, well, look at that tackle. Selvam goes in. Bang! Oh, gets a hit on his face, oh, Leo Lolo. That's why he's down. Okay. That was a hit clash, and um, that that would have been uh, that impact would have been something. As we see, uh, Liu Lolo still on the ground. He certainly lost that one. Play on! Not a clean one, for Tango. Had the chance to pass the um, Dango, but um, opted to take the tackle on. Last on the line. Last on the line, quickly taken by Williami Mata, and Mata scores this time. Two out of two for Eagles. Here, yeah, keeping it simple. Keeping it simple, just winning that penalty. Uh, there was some uh, Eagles player, Dabele, and they mostly yelling out from the outside, but um, Viliame saw the cap in front. It's a quick tap. Second try for the Eagles. Bust his way through and went through um, a couple of casual uh, defenders. That occasion, Otto and Sasha and Mohamed both couldn't stop them. It's too powerful. That's. That's actually not Lahiru Guru Singer, that is Viliami Mata, the try scorer. And a good conversion by uh, Real Pinalevasa. 
stretches um, the lead out to 14-0 to the Eastern Eagles. Well, we're just seeing um, Lilo Louis, um, Leo Lolo, sorry, um, he's got a bit of fixing to do, man. Yeah, I think he's got a broken nose there. Well, it's fantastic atmosphere here. Brilliant, beautiful, nice and shiny. Wonderful day for game of rugby. Fisalavasa put the balls back in. Tap there, Alitasi sends it out to Otto. Leaning in on his left. Does he need his support? No, he just goes down. Brought down by Butango. Well, quickly taken. Well, this time, Dalip Selvan sends it out. Well, nice tackle, tough on there. Fali Suyalo brought down. Brilliant, uh, <laughs> brilliant counter rocking from the Eagles here, and um, uh, they certainly got the right to win that ruck. Well, that time, the perfect was Dilip Salvam coming from the side, not coming through the channel. Well, it's the half time. As we approach half time, it's 14 nil in favor of Eastern Eagles. Yes, uh, certainly, uh, Coach uh, Stephen Pfeffer has got a bit to say here at half time. Uh, finally, saw Yellow just taking that ball into the into the contact without anyone. Um, anyone in support and um, the Eagles did really well to count on their ball and win it back. Well Laga if you look at these Italians I'm sure certainly they're not happy about it they had a good game good start for the day so they wanted to carry that forward but unfortunately things are not going their way so probably the halftime talks has been very magical since this morning we've seen like you know teams turning around the game second half so let's wait and see what it's going to be like for Italians and Eastern Eagles, well it's a good lead, not a healthy one, you can't say much about healthy leads in seven games, but it's another seven moments to go, it's just only two tries, and all what they have to do is hold on to it, keep position, and just send the ball around, but Italians, I'm sure, you can see a strong comeback in this second half, that's for sure. Yeah, they had a. Uh, they they've lost all their games yesterday, so it wasn't a good uh, outing altogether yesterday. So um, certainly, uh, Stephen Buffett got to get got to get used to this sort of uh, format of um, of sevens and this sort of environment as well. Um, uh, with all this Samoan international in their side, um, can can be a bit better. Yeah, that's Pali Suyala and Alatasi Turpu. The other two Samoans in for Stallions, and that's yeah. the local. Fijian look like <laughs> Chamra Dabri. That's the try scorer William Mata and Richie Dharmapal. Okay. Well, Kogala is looking fantastic. We are ready for the second half. Stallions taking on East Eagles. East Eagles leading 14 0. And Rupina Lavasa puts the ball up in the air. Not 10 meters, says the referee. That was a bit marginal. That was almost 10 meters. Yes. <laughs> well, quickly taken by Alatasi, Otto, and this time sends it to Gainlin again. Back to Fali Suyala. Suyala, hands off, goes down. Lien again, trying to break through that defense. No Whoa! chance. Holding on to it, refusing to go down, but this time goes down. Clean up work done by Fauta Otto. Sends it out, Sasha Nomad. Dilip Salam on his right, and Sasha loses the ball. Chamare picks it up, it's a turnover. Eastern Eagles, Williami Mata breaks one, two, and goes down. Support comes in. Well, not releasing the ball. Holding on. That's not good. But well, quickly taken by Alatasi Topo. Sends it out, too wide for Lienagay. Too high and too far. Ball goes out. Richard Dadamabala did very well there to turn that ball over and um, stayed on his feet for a small guy, supporting his weight. Look at that. That's the one, that's the one we've been talking about. Fali Suyala throwing that ball way too high for Leon Gay. That's just uh, a no-look pass to no one, really, uh, from Fali Suyala. You expect a bit, um, a bit better from the Samoan International. Uh, really, Alatasi has got to stand up and, um, you know, uh, work his magic here. Uh, Stalins are in a good spot to score from here they, and they need to. Down by 14 points as we see Dabiri, uh, Chamari Dabiri uh, hopping up, um, limping up the field. Oh, that's not a good sign for this young lad. Well, he's limping. He's a runner. 
Well, Sheriff comes in for Dabri. Well, good one. William, he collects it. Goes down. Mid the Malgoda cleans it up. Tango. Tango back. Sends it back. Williami Mata. Brought down by Rohan Tiagaraja. Nice defensive tackle. Mitamal Gore. Pini Lavasa. Sharif on the light. Loses it during the process. Good tackle there by Alatasi Topu. Yeah, just mishandled the ball there. Uh, Rupina Lavasa. He went through the cap. It was a half cap. Took it back inside. And just mishandled the ball and just lost it forward. That was Delif Salam calling the scavenger. Always his eyes and hands on the ball. Yeah, it's just um, it's just changing hands and uh, looking back on the inside for a friend and just managed to lose the ball forward. As we see a change into uh, the Stalins, um, Tulolo Tulolo going on for Foto Auto. So Stephen Piffin is trying to get one of his speeds on the field. Well, also for his Eagles. Crouch! Abi Salomi, Wakatabu coming in. Five! Set! Well, Richie Darmapala, blind pass. But secures the ball. Not good enough. Alatasi taps it down. And collected by Tulolo Tulolo. Well, sends it to Suyala. Suyala going down the right flank. Needs support. Oh! Goes down. Clean up work is done by Lianagay. Back in, chip and run for Tulolo. Tulolo, he can score. Looks, it's so simple. He scores the first try and he dives over the board as well. <laughs> Probably he thinks he gets bonus points for that. Well executed try by Tulolo. Tulolo, of course, um, a change. Um, came in the right time for the for the Stalins and converted converted his own try and seven pointer. Good comeback by the by the Stalins. It was it was much needed. Just a chipper over the top. There was no sweeper at the back. <laughs> And he had to um, we'll a make a few yards there. And almost got over the fence. Well, 14 7 is the scope. Still, Eastern Eagles leading. Delip Salwan coming off and replaced by Dinesh Kumar. Okay. Alitasi Tupu with the restart. Let's see. Nice and high. Not a deep one. Short one. Well collected Eastern Eagles. This time it seems like no contest. That's Apisolomi Wakatabu. Going strong. Play Needs off. support but loses the ball in the process. Alitasi Tutu collects it. Goes down. Secures the ball. Richie Dharmapala cleans it up. Looking for support. Lienage on the right hand. Dharmapala just had to go on his own. Well good work there by Stallions. Tulolo Tulolo, he's got support in the form of Dharmapala, but he's been brought down still with Tulolo Tulolo. Well, he's got support, and that support arrives in the form of Gayan Lienage, and he scores. Good comeback try, good bit of handwork there, and nice teamwork. Sabargamo Stallions keeping that ball in play. Richie Dharmapala breaking through, creating that move. Yeah, that. The Stalins did really well here, keeping the ball alive, and uh, Gayan was. Uh, had to make, had to really push himself to the corner, and a good chase there by one of the Eagles um, defenders, really chasing and making sure that he doesn't come around. Well, this is going to be a tight contest. I can guarantee you that. Alitasi too poor with the kick, kicking with the breeze, so he's got the advantage. Let's see, he's got the distance. Let's see whether he's got the direction, and it's through. 40 in all. Yeah, referee has called time off uh, as one of the Eagles players. I can't really recognize him as uh, inside the Stalin's half. It yeah, looks pretty serious. Hopefully, he's not uh, not that serious. Well, what a kick. What a kick. Alitasi Tufo giving everything that he has in his back for Stallions. Creating that play, scoring. That could be Jaiwad and um, Shasika on the floor. He hasn't moved for a while. Concern for the Eastern Eagles. Gotta get some medic out there, man. Yeah, that was a you know uh, a very good conversion, and he had to make that play. Uh, just looking at that, how that incident came about. Oh, 
no, it's a bit harsh. Him. He had his shoulder right on his head, landing backwards, and he had um, one of the Stalin's shoulders right on his head. Oh, that's not very good. It doesn't look good. Unfortunate for him. Hopefully, this is not going to be the end for him. Yeah, you never want to see that sort of thing, Clifford. But um, yeah, that's part of it. Just, uh, just, just uh, the way he fell. He was um, trying to trying to put a fend out, and he misfended and he held onto his uh, to, to the stallion's. Um, he was trying to offload at the same time, and he held onto his head, and he on his way to the ground. He was actually unfortunate. Actually, he was he was going with the ball, and he was attacking mode, and Fali Zuyala. He just held him, turned him around, and banged him. Not a purpose one, not a purposeful one rather. It's just like you rightly said, it's part and parcel of the game. Yeah. Hopefully it's going to be okay, but yeah, having um, 110 kilos on top of you in that sort of position is not very, uh, it's not a pleasant feeling. Well, in the meantime, while well, the player is being taken out, there's been a lot of instruction going in and out. People were exchanging words, exchanging ideas, strategies, yes. The reason behind that is still is 14 all. His Eagles were leading at the halftime 14 nil, and okay. Stallions came back strongly. Time off. Most important thing was that brilliant kick by Alatasi to Poo from that corner. Well, he's with the restart, ready for it. Stallions. Nice and deep one. Utango collects it, waits for his players to get back, and he is trying to get through that but then again no chance there Apisami Apisalomi Wakatabu goes down referee says knock forward ball in favor of Stallion good strategic place location for them don't Dante. know what don't know what he was thinking there uh, Clifford he um, Apisami just had the ball and put his head down it was it was almost like uh, 15 aside just stuck his head Go. down and went for it and he just lost the ball forward fine Set. Well, with the foot in. Not a clean one once again. <coughs> Tackled without the ball. the ball, so the referee gives the penalty quickly taken. Alitasi Tofu goes forward. He's got support. Tololo Tololo to his left. Lianagay. Can he score his second try of the game? No. <coughs> Unfortunate. Good run by the Stallions. Good attack. No but quick, well no defended, quick. equally well defended by the Eastern Eagles. The yeah, we were just, I was just talking about Dalatasi there. I mean, he made that play and um, he dragged it into the middle. He could have done a bit more there, just you know, having some of the players coming back in the inside. I thought he just passed a bit too early there. And Tulolo's well just gave it to Guyana on the outside, and of course he was covered. Uh, Absalom was never going to let that um, let that go. That would have been um, that would have given the Eagles or the Stalin, sorry, uh, the lead. Well. A penalty given away, quickly taken by Altasi. Can oh, he score? Seven. He's almost there. Almost there. That was close one. Seven. Referee rewards seven. penalty. Seven coming from the wrong end. Nope. Once again, taken by Fali Suyala this time. Still defending strong Eastern Eagles, not letting that ball cross that line. Some. Oh, some brilliant defense there by Absom. That was a hit on stuff. Fali Suyala decided to take him on. on about five minutes it was a quick tap took him on and he was short by a good two inches eh? <laughs> well it's the it's the final whistle and the is 14 all well stallions were attacking and attacking and attacking well Fali Suyala along with Alitasi Tupu both had opportunities that was the final bit the final minute, final seconds, few yards away from the trial line. Both had penalties, but there you go. That the final score, 14 all. Good comeback by Stallions. So let's take a look at what has happened this game. What happened through this game? Well, there you go. That is Butango. Yeah, just looking at the first try by the Eagles. They were actually up by 14, and the second one by. Ups on the first half and the Eagles uh, were leading in the first half of course and the uh, Stalins had come back to Lolo and make um, uh, make that uh, break came on substituted came on and Guyana of course scored in the corner and Alatasi had to convert that one to uh, to even up the score so um, there you go uh, Stalins a bit guilty in that last play uh, Fale just taking that uh, ball up and 
decided to take the Fiji on, but uh, it ended up coming last, coming second, sorry, and it ended up in the draw. And now the business end of the competition, the Carlton Super 7s for 2014 sees the Central Kings taking on the Southern Sharks, the right to play in the final. This is sudden death. This determines whether you'll be playing for first and second or third and fourth. And two very good sides as well, the Central Kings. Four victories yesterday and then another victory today against the Northwestern Blacks by 38 points to seven. And the Southern Sharks just dropping one game against the Warriors yesterday, but were comprehensive against the Typhoons and a tight one, winning that by five. Underway now in the first of the two semi-finals. Lost forward on that occasion by Den Sherman. So possession to Adendorf. Steps and into contract is Vilvara. What a tournament he has had. Now the fight comes on. Looks like Colini Sales actually ripped the ball away. And he has. Now the leg drive comes in. Wonderful steal from the Fijian former captain. And here's Pio Too Wide. Big and strong is Too Wide. Is that customary step that we've come to see and then he just flicks it out wide now they slow it down this is the beauty of sevens is that always looking for where the space and the opportunities are out of Dinship he has Dias out to the right Chanel Dias hasn't seen too much game time over the last couple of days but he's done everything right there by going into contact to taking in three players and then setting it up beautifully to white he gets it out to Jaya Singer he's been one of the good players and here's Colin Isau to Jaya Singer Jaya Singer stepping Inside the 22, more position for the Sharks. He was tackled and he needed to release the ball and he didn't. That's true, just a little bit of uh, error in thinking really. He should have released it. He was through and he picked it up so quickly. Unfortunate, but uh, here come the uh, Central Kings. Through Mulivoru. Sasanta Jazz tips it on to Rajapaksa who gets it out to Turner. Here's Turner, his first touch of the ball on the inside. Turner, Turner now, one to beat, inside, outside just couldn't get his footing and uh, Surya Bandala did a magnificent job and firstly defending him and now keeping him up this will be a turnover <laughs> take a bow Surya Bandala excellently done by young Suri really well done Matty Turner of course big story a little bit of Aji Baji exchanging uh, addresses there Matt Turner not happy well he was held up by little Suri you've got to be unhappy by that one exactly and he's uh, pointing at one of the biggest players in the world as well I don't know what it is about short guys who always want to have fights with big giants like Chanel Dias <laughs> that's just foolish well yes he was so cross about it he just picked on the biggest player around the corner guys that he didn't pick on Peter Tower look at that work Chant. that's brilliant isn't it Outstanding stuff from Suri Bandara. Showing a little bit of experience as well. Good stuff. As the ball now comes to Colini Sal. He tips it back. Voro Voro. No, Valvo, rather. As the ball and here's Pure Two White. Watch the step. There it is. Always beats the first tackle and then the skip and the hop. And then he tried to kick it because he could see that now Valvo was out there to the right. Now he's just taken into contact. Good defense coming in. Jaya Singer goes in to clear the ball and another penalty. Now Valvo, he won't wait around. Distinctive with those tights, the yellow tights there. He's gone into contact and gets it back to Colini Sal. Lots of finger pointing at the moment. Jaya Singer. He can see that where the space is, there's two white. Sasanta does very well to tackle him, but he flicks it out the back to Colini Sal. And now out to Dinsha. Dinsha decides to put on the accelerator inside of Turner. One to beat. Dinsha, just a lovely pop. Here's the man that saved one try, and now he's going to score one. Surya Bandara runs away to score the first try. Brilliant. Outstanding stuff from Suri Bandara, and that was really good work from Dinesh Chaturanga as well. Just chaining the running line, and then Suri in space. There you go, look at that. One step out, got hit in the process, but Suri, once he's got a little bit of yardage in space, he's gone. Matt Turner could only turn and watch and marshal him underneath the post. Thank you very much. Oh, poor Matt Turner would have scored a minute earlier, and it was that man that he couldn't beat, and Suri Bandara just gassed him. That's it, so that's a good feeling. Matt Turner of England, of course. Uh, big, big name, and Suri Bandara, big name for Sri Lanka. Well done, good stuff, Max Pride. Shah, that's what we've been talking about. That's what I've been saying to you is, uh, you know, the confidence. The other thing that I've noticed just watching the, the other games as well is the accuracy of the passes. 
they're crisp, they're in, in the bread basket, they're in the area where you can catch it. I know last year some of the pass were up towards the head and down towards the knee. And that's a sad sight of Jaya Singer there, just... Well, was it Dinsha, was it? I think it is. Yes, it is. It's uh, Chaturanga, Dinesh Chaturanga just uh, copying one on the way there. Just a little high, it looked like a, an extended arm, but he's uh, concussed hopefully. Uh, should be checked out and maybe uh, able to come back, but we'll see in the meantime. Well, it's gone 10 metres now. Waked back by Aiden Dorf into the hands of Rapwate. This is good play. He gets out to that position and then he doesn't. Panic, he just holds the ball. Mulivoru. Rovovo couldn't get him and that's why he's broken free now. Mulivoru. Rovovo comes back at him. Tries to clip the ankles. One sweeper there, but there it is. On the inside pass and Vilvara will race to score the Central Kings first try. Classic sevens. This is tremendous. Brilliant stuff. Got one end to the other. Really it looked like there was going to be a try for the... Uh, the Sharks, they had the ball in possession and then Rovovu almost lost the whole story and Bilibar are running support lines. This is what you want. If you've got one break, make sure there's another and two options on two sides makes it very special. Uh, this is the quality game of sevens that you're watching wherever it is around the world. Punch and counter punch. It's like two heavyweight boxers. Not happy to concede a round. Conversion is good. We're all tied up at seven apiece too true if you get hit there's a heavyweight boxer hit back as hard as you can and then keep fending it off and that's what they did brilliant brilliant to watch for all of you watching for the kids this is how you run support this is how you counter attack do not stop and watch start straight away Mulibodo gets us underway and that's what you shouldn't do kids if you are watching because you've got to kick it to that white line one with the 10 there it's got to go past that and he hasn't done that now he's given possession back to the southern sharks it's actually a crime really to do that because you've got the chance to get the ball back and you just give it away to the opposition. Uh, that is criminal really. Try scorer Surya Bandana taps and gives it to Rovovo. Colini Sal. Spinning and getting it out to Rovovo. He's got good pace. Here's the Fijian flyer but Surya Bandana's got great pace as well. Inside the 22. Bilvada's done magnificently to rip the ball away from his compatriot and steal it. But Jaya Singh has run it back for the Sharks and he's lost it forward. Good battle between the three Sri Lankans. Good skills on the deck there, and uh, Vishwamitra Jasinga just missed the last digit there. Otherwise, they've done brilliantly to rip that ball back for his side, the Sharks. But in the meantime, this is all about pressure, Willie, really, and who can stand up at the end. Well, this Vilvard has really impressed me. I, I think he is a national rep, isn't he? Yes, he has just come back from the Commonwealth Games, was uh, off with injury last season, but Bye. really up in top form this season. It did some pre-season training out of Sri Lanka, I understand, as well. But he's come back stronger, faster, and just unable to break that tackle there. Ball has been released. Counter ruck is good, now it's there. Chanel Dias, Dias reaching out and scoring! Oh, the big man is in. He's about 6 for 20 when he reaches out, and those big arms just reached out and planted the ball. Classic sevens player from Chanel Dias. Wonderful to see and good for the lad too. He's been away from the game for a while. He's been in America studying in college. And there he is, the big lad grinding up the park. He's a double international already for Sri Lanka. Plays basketball as well. Not sure he gets much time for that any day. But uh, Shenal Dias, much pride to his hometown in Kurnagala. They're watching, I'm sure, his family as well. They'll be uh, overjoyed. They'll be screaming and shouting out there. And so will the Sharks fans around Sri Lanka because the conversion is good from Raubobo. And so as we head to the break, three tries, two to one, and the Sharks lead by 14 points to seven. Yes, and of course it all comes down to a little bit of planning. There's the coach running quickly into the huddle. He knows he's got to make sure that this momentum goes forward in the second half as well. When you've got in front, try and stay there and make sure you've got your strets actually pinpointed as part of the, the story because once you get into the second half, you want to make sure that everything on the radar is what you are planning and not what the opposition is trying to do. Use your strength, see the, see the players who've got the petrol to run the distance and try and put them into space and uh, make sure that you don't use up too much petrol in the process as well. So you've got fresh legs if you can. It's going to be interesting to see what the Sharks will do. Will they protect this lead or will they bring on some fresh legs, Willie, to try and uh, stamp their class? Sharp. How, how, how important is sevens to Sri Lanka? It's a question that I, I need to ask you. Um, it is absolute oxygen uh, for us here in Sri Lanka. It's the way forward. 
It is our chance to play on the global stage. Uh, and if we can get this right and get a lot of things right, we can get uh, to host one of the IRB World Series. Plus, of course, to upgrade our players, to travel them a lot more in Asia and to start to fight for a place in that World Series slot. Well, I've spoken about it at, at nauseam at the fact that the body shape is changing now. We've seen the Sri Lankan players with really good definition, with really good muscle, good training. And now they're starting to make good decisions on the field. They're not panicking as they have in the past. As we get underway in the second half, we'll get more on that conversation a little bit long, later. Lost forward, and so Sasanta couldn't handle the pass that had been knocked down, and the referee's his advantage over. Ravovo, he goes into contact, Colini Sal, kicks it through with him. Nothing wrong with that, and Turner now has a chance to try and show some of his magnificent skills, and he's got plenty of them too. Mulivoru pushes off the first, and just losing it forward on that occasion was the try scorer for the Sharks. Chanel Dice. Happy That's, fans are watching on. Yes, I was just about to say that. Very excited uh, shed there for the uh, Sharks, the franchise owners and all the management and the supporters all dressed in their colours as well. Fabulous sight, inspiring stuff for the boys in the middle. Suri Bandara, he's key for this uh, match today. Two tries to one, the Sharks. Suri Bandara scored first. Vilbada struck back for the Central Kings. We're all tied up and then Chanel Dias just on the break all the siren of half time Roach. scored the second try that was converted Set. fresh legs on the park for both sides and Rudy Vodu got skits it out here and now they're looking for the one-two cut defense is good the swarming defense and here comes Matt Turner now releases the ball as you can see which is what you've got to do when you're tackled Outside. and incorrect entry from Jaya Singer as it's tapped through Molivoru. Big wide pass. Brilliantly read from Pio Tuwai. He could see where the danger was and he came straight in and closed it down as quickly as good. Jaya Singer, I like this young man. He's got plenty of pace, plenty of courage as well as he just stands up. Now the pass out the back. Ravovo gets rid of Molivoru and he gets it out to Colini Sao. Colini Sao, it's a foot race. Colini Sao trying to break free, passing on the inside. Ravovo is there and the Sharks will score again. Oh, the magic of the Fijians with the courage of the Sri Lankans is sevens at its best. That was excellent work from the big man. Ripped the ball out in that tackle and then the offload. Fabulous. Colin Asao, Nigel Radwat that dives for all his work and manages to grab onto that shirt. But then Ravovu on the inside running at pace. Perfect line. Great finish. Try time. Sharks on top. Converts his own try. And so Naikaso is on for the Central Kings. Leo Naikaso, the uh, foreign players. And also on is uh, Pitu, Sasanga Pitu. It's all about making an impact when you come from the bench. Yes, very much so. You've got to have some petrol and some gas, and you're, you've got to make the difference. Otherwise, there's not much point coming off the bench because the other players have really been recycled, and the opportunity is there. It's got to take it game not lost here they just need some possession and Sasanta takes it in on this occasion lost it earlier and another kick off but he's done very very well just to shield the ball and to get it back secure in possession for the Central Kings Turner has it pass coming to him from Vimblada Vimblada should be able to support him Turner breaking out of the two tackles one man to beat he should feed the ball inside it's been knocked back so play on says the ref and Anthony has it Anthony now winds up the big legs, the big frame. Lost four turners, got back brilliantly to steal the ball. And now it comes out to Naikasu. He's got Mulivoru out to his right. They need to score quickly to the Kings. Mulivoru brings in two defenders and he's just thrown it, knocked down. Anthony has it again. He's been impressive since he's come on. There's Anthony now, the big one-handed pass. Out to Suri Bandara. Suri Bandara now out to Ravovo. Chip, how's the bounce? A little bit of soccer skill now. He won't have the pace to actually get there first. Vilvara wins that easily. He's tipped over and now he must release the ball. The steal here, it's effective. Sharks looking and they're smelling blood. Are the Sharks on attack? Quick tap here by Ravovo. He stopped, looked at the referee, said, do you want a cup of tea? 
And then he went on, passed it off to Anthony. He's been good as Anthony since he's come on and he deserves that five-pointer. Sharks now looking to find their way into the final. Brilliant work, great awareness and good skills. Very much so. Look at this. He has a little shimmy and then off he goes. He wasn't quite sure, but uh, Sir Anthony, great work rate from Anthony for Sri Lanka and for his side, the Sharks. This is what he does best. This is why he's so respected as well. Uh, it was a choice for the Sharks to pick him uh, against a younger player, but they thought to go with the experience of Sir Anthony and I think he's justified it all the way. <coughs> Fabulously done. Well done, the Sharks. Good try. Fourth try of the match, 28. Play seven. Lots of people enjoying themselves. And I see the big uh, cheerleaders as well. Part of the uh, Carlton uh, story, of course, for the Super Sevens. Here we go. That's gone, the 10 meters. The Santa is there and he takes the ball. Gives it to Mulivoru. They won't. I wondering, they won't ask questions and none better. And the man in screen, full pace, lovely running style as well, Pereira. That's young Lavanga Pereira, one of the twins here in Sri Lanka, Lavanga and Oshan, the, the two twins. And Pitu there just losing it forward, that was try time. Have a look at this. There it is, just couldn't get the offload in unfortunately uh, so they'll be across uh, with themselves the central kings opportunities you got to take every opportunity if it's a half make it into a full if it's a quarter make it into a half a yeah, freakish half by the sharks they've shown a lot of patience a lot of calmness composure and they've done everything that's required to winning finals footy hence the reason they lead by 21 on the scoreboard turnover there Nakasu, advantage is over, he says, and Pereira now gets it wide, they should score here, the dummy, through the gap goes Nato Tanga, and reward with their second try. That's right, he does really well, have a look at this, Taka should have come in there, I'm not too sure what, uh, well, his opposition uh, number was thinking. <laughs> like trying to push him out of the way and the try is scored so Central Kings come back well it's been a try fest six in total four to the Sharks just two to the Central Kings but it's been a magnificent game of sevens rugby here all of the skills everything that you desire and love about the game has been broadcast and shown to you over the last 14 minutes last seconds of the game now <coughs> nothing fancy from Sangiwa Kicks it into touch and the Japanese official says that's time. Southern Sharks have worked their way into the final. They will be one of the finalists. Who meets them? Just make sure you don't leave your sofa and keep your television on because the next game is going to be just as exciting as that. It's the Uber Vipers taking on the Western Warriors. It's going to be such a big game. 28-14. The Southern the Sharks actually stamp their class. Have a look at the highlights for all of you around Sri Lanka. Glad to have you on board on CSN. Surya Bandara, the skipper for the Sharks, opening the account. Quickly replied by Anrut the Villivara. He's had such an outstanding tournament, one of the highest try scorers in this tournament. And then Shanal Dias grinds his way to the top. He'll be happy, and so will all his friends and fans. And then Ragubu. It really was a, a helter skelter game. And suddenly some soft tries for Sawyeru Anthony at the end there, it really was a little bit too late from the, the Central Kings and uh, the Sharks into the final, my goodness, that's something that they, they were raving about last night around uh, the bar in the hotel as to when they're going to make it and E2 uh, will be very very pleased with himself because he actually talked the game out very loud last night and here's the biggie. Yoshi the Raja Paksa leads the Western Warriors and then there is uh, Shehan Patrona leading of course the Uber Vipers Willie yeah well it's uh, the old tradition and in a lot of ways many back home in New Zealand to Fiji are calling this the clash of New Zealand and Fiji because one side is stacked with New Zealanders the other stacked with Fijians and there's one of them that actually played for New Zealand but is Fijian we'll get to that a little bit later on with Lotte Rakambula, man who is in charge of getting the game underway. Western 
Warriors disappointed with their performance here 12 months ago. They've been terrific in four victories and another one earlier today. Laterakambula gets us underway. It hasn't travelled the 10 metres. And the penalty at halfway. Also international referee Richard Kelly is here. His first official game for the day and it's a big one as well. He's been, just been named as one of the referees on the HSBC 7's World Series. He'll travel around all nine countries and he is loving the Sri Lankan experience. Brilliant stuff. More credibility for Sri Lanka, of course. And here we go with uh, Tomasi. Tomasi Thama getting it to Tilsley. Coming in on the one-two cut. And not supporting your own body weight, says the man with the whistle. And now they go on attack through Lotte Raikambula. Raikambula holding the ball up. Now he releases it, and it's a straight sprint from Joseph Nanya in to score. That <laughs> right pace from the flying Fijians, the Warriors are in. Well, that looked like a soft try. It was worked quite well from the uh, the 50 meter mark on the central line, and then here we go. Have a look at that. Shahan Patrana just not uh, quick enough to get across, and uh, all he could do is just make sure that uh, the try wasn't too close to the upright. So the Western Warriors in very quickly. And this is something that the Vipers will want to counter straight away. As uh, Joseph Dunn scoring straight away for the Warriors. This is what they would have been talking about in the pre-game plan. Get the points on the board straight away. Rakabula couldn't convert. Everybody's happy. Western Warriors in front. Of course, in the sport of uh, Sevens, if you are just joining us for the first time, side that scores kicks off that was an initiative that was actually brought on by the tournament director george simpkins when he was in charge of china about a million years ago yeah. and it was a rule that actually he changed it wasn't a rule that was brought on by the irb and at that time sevens was only played really in hong kong as we now look at one of the stars at lutu actually that was uh Gulangi. Who on that occasion got isolated, held on to the ball, and DJ Forbes wants to go on with it. The quick tap and the pass. Header. Gets tackled, but he gets to his feet and he plays the ball. And that's what he needed to do was bus release. You can see here the interpretation now, a little different to possibly how some of these players have learnt and uh, certainly how they were officiated yesterday. Absolutely, and this is something they're going to have to learn and adapt to very, very quickly. Uh, they need to understand the exact position and exactly what they can do with ball in hand and once they're tackled. Well, Lotte Raikambula are up against his uh, old teammate there. They both won gold medals and also World Cups together against Forbes. Here is the man with the magic feet, Wanga Vulangi, just a metre short. Ball, Forbes goes in and makes the tackle. Now it's available. This will be an easy try. There it is, using the referee as a shield. But in goes Lutu Mailangi. That was just another soft try for Lutu Malangi and of course DJ Forbes on his old teammate but uh, too strong, too many numbers there and look at that, referee are in the way unfortunately but uh, it's a try awarded. George says hang on, just said the referee but he just looks at the referee disjointedly but uh, try is given and the Warriors looking strong now the Vipers haven't had much possession and not much to do really. Well, I'll tell you what, he just gave Lotte Raikambula the hurry up as well. He said, you've only got 10 seconds left on the clock and I'm the clock keeper. So you better hurry up. So that's the reason why he was forced to actually stab at it. But a good start by the Western Warriors. Two tries to nil. They lead 10. The zip to Masatama and, of course, the presence of First Lady. Yes, and she's got the colours on. I'm very curious to see what the dad's going to be wearing when he gets here. <laughs> Have a go. Here's the Vipers through to Masi Thama to George Tilsley. Tilsley the dummy holds on and now he looks for some support. Comes in the form of Hedith. Thama is there as well. Beautifully cleared and delivered from Costa. One side of the field and now they push it down the other flank. Pathen, Patirana has been very good today. Patirana needs some support. The ball is there and the referee says play on. Vorta picks it up now. Passes on the inside. Rajapaksa there in support as he always is. And now the Western Warriors look to push it wide. There's an overlap here. Raikambula goes straight. Breaks the first, the second tackle. Raikambula now looking, reaching and scoring. Raikambula done it all. Bottom of the zone. 
And there's the delight from the crowd. The Warriors are starting to assert themselves and stamp their class. Have a look at this. Rakambula, so strong. Wonderful balance. Gets away through two tackles. And Southern Herod could do very little. Try to hang on from behind. Needed a very good smother tackle to stop him. Either way, his momentum was going to get him over the line. And uh, Lotte Rakambula, one of the highest try scorers in the world today. Fabulous sight, imposing as ever. Western Warriors, my goodness, they are looking sharper than ever. Unsuccessful with the conversion was Lutu Mailangi. But the Western Warriors, three tries. And yeah, you talk about Lotte Rakambula, Commonwealth Games gold medal, Rugby World Cup sevens gold medal in Moscow two years ago. And of course, on the I IRB circuit, 105 tries, 651 points. That is an awesome record to carry around. It really is. Oh! Big challenge there up in the air. Paterana going up, I think it was. And yeah, that's dangerous. He'll say that he was competing for the ball. And the official will say, well, you think about it for the next 60 seconds when you yeah, sit in the chair. Wait. There is the replay. Both mid-air. My goodness, that could have been a little bit of a, a head clash. Yeah, but luckily. You, well, you can't put a hand on a player. That's the other thing is, once he's up in the air, it is sacred. And Patirana thankfully gets to his feet. But you can compete for the ball. You can compete, provided you don't touch the player. And on that occasion, you can see that Volta clearly had both hands on the player that was in the air. He clattered the mid-air, and that was the reason he's uh, sitting in the bin. In the meantime, here's opportunity now. Six versus seven. The Vipers, what can they do? Costa to Tharma, bringing in Forbes back in that channel. Clean-out needs to be good, and... No release. For your body weight. So the body weight is the call. Tilsley, they well, need to score quickly. Seven on six. They will be an advantage because he's kicked it. It's over now. Sprinting on beautifully, but just losing his footing was ahead of. As we look at uh, the tournament director, George Simpkins, having to talk to the naughty boy, Ioani Volta. Of course, he did coach Fiji, so maybe they're talking about the old Barnes. island. <laughs> George is such a rugby guru. It's Last untrue. Night. Wonderful to have him here as tournament director. <laughs> He really is a character and a half. A very imposing taskmaster as well. Here's the replay. Southern Herat. Unfortunately, the bounce is cruel. So the Vipers still without a, a shine on the scoreline. Yeah, in or out? Are you in or out? Thank you. I'm letting him come in. There's instructions to the referee. Nice to see. Asking him. Push Pakamara makes a mess of that. Yeah, Push Pakamara couldn't control it. So half time siren has been sounded. We'll go to the break. Two tries to nil, and the Western Warriors lead after seven minutes. It's rather, three tries to nil, and the Western Warriors lead by 15 points to zero. Yeah, well, this is now going to be interesting because it's a critical uh, half-time break for the uh, Vipers. They need to really readjust a little bit because they haven't been able to make progress. The little ball they've had, they've uh, wasted in the process as well. So they need to try and decide where they're going to run this ball down. And that's a decision they'll have to make. Tomasa Kama Mickelson to come on as yet. So they're going to have to recycle at some stage because they haven't really had an impact. Whereas on the other side, the Warriors have looked so sharp, so strong, and they've been able to break almost every tackle. Rakambula scoring at will. Soft tries for the Warriors after much hard work. So the uh, Vipers will have to strike and strike quickly because they've got seven minutes to decide who takes the big one into that final. Of course, uh, we have to get that right, Tomasi Tama. So uh, valuable a player, one of the best, the highest try scorers, point scorers in the world. How nice to have him here. And uh, had the privilege of meeting uh, Ben Gollings as well when he was here in Sri Lanka coaching with the national side. And now Tomasi is here, as Rakambula is here. Well, I'm trying to think who isn't. Here's the sight of Shahan Patarana. Work cut out for him now as the skipper as well. Hoping for uh, good recycled players off the bench. Whereas the Warriors will try and uh, protect that lead of theirs. Try and maybe a quick try, a snap try straight after the kickoff would settle it for them. But, uh, well, you wait and see. This is uh, the sevens. Still with only six players on the field is uh, Volta. 
Rich still has about 15 right. seconds. Tim Mickelson is on the field for the Vipers. <coughs> and Tomasi Thama gets us underway. It's travelled the 10 metres. Good clash there up in the air, but pulling it down was one of the try scorers, Nanga. And the beautiful step from Lakambula. The pass, the speculator. Roger Parks has got it. And now Roger Parks looks for some support on the outside and he finds it in the form of uh, Wanga Vulangi. And he's too quick for everybody. Wanga Vulangi, his first touch of the second half, produces the fourth try. And the Western Warriors look like they're marching through to the final. They certainly do, and Vulangi, just that uh, characteristic hand up, the, with the number of the index finger up, showing me I'm the one, it's a try, it's what I've done, fabulous stuff. And the Western Warriors now really just uh, tearing away from the Vipers, and uh, something that the Vipers have to answer quickly. They have a chance, time is on, the, on their side, if they can get a quick try, and then strike. Here's Vulangi, look at this inside thank you big handoff boom he's in look at that smile though it's contagious it's just an infectious smile that he has he knew that he'd uh, be able to bring it around that's the first conversion that they've managed from the four tries as well and they've restored to their yeah, seven complimentary seven and the man kicking off is the national coach of sri lanka setafana thakao in jersey number two so what can the vipers now hit back with tilsley to Kaka, who's just come on the field. He threw the speculator out the back. It wasn't a pretty pass. Nonetheless, Herath was there and he's caught it. Out now to Paterana. Lost it forward and uh, quickly scooped on Minus by three. the Warriors, but lost forward. Now the collision area. Viralatne is there and no, no real advantage. Forward. So we'll come back for the first official knock on and it's a scrum. There is a, a lot of muscle in there and the wrestle is uh, a tough call really. You've got to be strong enough and stand your ground and that's what uh, these big Fijians can do to you. you know, if it's soft on the deck, you are going to get clattered in the process. Have a look at this. And that was uh, just Cut. trying to get away there and rewrite the gun. We were just ankle grabbing Set. in the process. Right from their own goal line, Tilsley has Kaka on the outside, oh that's beautiful hands because he just sort of scooped it in, now the dummy, the chip kick, how's the bounce? Uh, there to distinguish any form of a quick throw in is Lutu Mailangi. Fresh legs on the park, Guy and Wiedratna is going off, Randika Alvis is coming on for the uh, Vipers, so Randika of course now sees the under 21 player for the uh, Vipers. Wow, well, what a final. Uh, we're setting up for the Western Warriors to take on the Sharks. Set piece is good though for the Vipers. Now Tisley, Kaka on the loop around and they bring it back. Big long pass, they probably weren't expecting it so the ball's been Final lost forward. Here's Hassan. His first touch of the ball, just straight off the bench. Hassan wasn't held, so that's why he got to his feet and played the ball. Question's been asked. Nangi gets it out here. It's Thakau. Setefano Thakau. In the tackle of Mickelson. Kaka is there as well. Release! Finally, he's brought to ground. Five metres short. Lutumai Langi goes in. Advantage there for slowing the ball down. Quick tap by Lutumai Langi. Gets on the outside of Mickelson and scores his second try of the match, their fifth. And it's becoming a what? The Harbour Masters here because it's just becoming a flood. Unbelievable. They're just scoring it well now. Yes, very much so. The Warriors just too strong on the day. It's got uh, Joeli Utamalangi. Look at that soft try for him because he knew everybody had turned their back on him. And he was just in there very, very quickly. Reaction time, fabulous for the uh, Warriors. The Vipers now just to uh, settle for where they're going to be up in the rankings and get the points they deserve, I suppose. That's all you can say. Well, the Vipers had three wins yesterday. Their only loss was against Central. And then earlier today, they defeated the Gladiators 19-12. The Western Warriors just continued to march on to go around from strength to strength. Tough match for them earlier on today. Only by 19 points to 12, but here showing their real class 
at the business end of the competition. Thakau with the assistance of the wind pushes it down deep into the 22 of the Vipers. Kaka Mickelson. Good patience, Sean. Alois. Wow, well, look at the tackle coming in. Certainly got some confidence, have uh, the Western Warriors through Kegel. And that's a massive long pass out to Tilsley out on the left hand flank. He should be able to skip the first player on the inside, and that's Kaka, but he can't get it to him. Just a breakdown there in communication. Lovely fend off by Nangi Levu initially. And now they get it back to Thakau. Set of fun of Thakau. Look at that. Sizes up the option, sees it. There's no sweeper in behind. If he catches this, it would have been a try. Kakar is there to Gillies Kaka. Points and tells them where to go. Oh, it's, the ball's been in play for a long time. Dananjaya. He looks and sees the wish players are actually behind. Lovely step and feed as well into Dananjaya. Big tackle coming in and it's effective. Now the turnover yet again. Thakau has it, has a player on the inside. He just loops it up and Nangalevu will run in to score what will be the last try of the match. Three in the first half, three in the second. And 29 now becomes 34. It is tough. You have to look at the players and the hands on hips situation for all these players. It really has drained them. This is day two, finals day, and this is for ranking points. It is not easy and the Vipers just don't have much in their petrol tank. Whereas for the Warriors, my goodness, they've got tons of excess petrol and tons of mileage there. So very good to see and they deservedly uh, are going to be in this big final. Yeah, it's the impact from the bench, hasn't it? He's just come off. Nangilevu, also Thakau involved on a couple of occasions with some little death touches. Conversion is good. Siren has sounded, but the referee, uh, Richard Kelly, says there's still enough time for the restart. Can the Vipers get their first try? They should have scored through that man who's retrieved it. Kaka with the break down the left-hand flank. Fortunately, the pass wasn't accurate. But here's a Bohoran, Tilsley. Yeah, the uh, typical Papua New Guinea sidestep straight through right. the middle. But yet another turnover. Lucky. They'll just kick this out now, surely. Through to the final, they don't need to prove anything now. But Hassan wants to go on with it. Showing his worth. Back now to Thakau. The ball's been lost forward and that's the game. Ball game. The victory to the Warriors. Seven tries to the Warriors on this occasion. 36 points to nil. Lovely touch there between the teams. And really it was one-way traffic. Yes, it was, and uh, that's it, 36 nil. My goodness, the Western Warriors stamping their class, looking like the side to beat. Here's the highlights coming up for you all around Sri Lanka. I hope you're enjoying the commentaries and the pictures on CSN. Wonderful sight, imposing from the Warriors. They really were quite clinical. Made sure that they got the ball over the try line as much as they can. Rakambula and Rolangi just uh, made sure that they got the points racked up there. And the Vipers had no answer in defense. They tried as much, but uh, it really was one-way traffic. So the uh, Vipers will have to settle for points. And the uh, next game coming up, that was Willie, myself, Sean, thank you. Northwestern Blacks versus the Northern Gladiators. Enjoy commentary with uh, Dinuk, and uh, we'll get on later on. Thanks, Sean. Now the Gladiators interestingly have made some changes coming into this game. Big names missing. Skipper Pass and Marita arrested. And uh, also uh, brought in uh, Pretty Malua. Jersey number 15 as the teams run out. Northwestern Sacks, of course, going with the same team that they played before. Kodakota. Anthony. Which way? Piyum Jayasinga. Which way? be uh, the Northern Gladiators to kick off. Joining me on commentary is Clifford. Well, thanks, Dino. Good afternoon to all our viewers. Well, if you're just joining us, you're watching Carlton Super Servants 2014 World League One Day Two. 
the international Stop. tournament down here in Pogola. Here we go. Flau kicks it off off the left foot. Fred is not gone to 10 meters. Play. He's been played on by the Northwestern Blacks. Balls out. And he's been hacked in a kick by the Northern Gladiators. Good pass off to the Western Blacks. And uh, it's uh, Richie Achang who breaks through and a penalty. He's on the ball. Now Nina Fulau checking it. Inside pass to Damien Ratwata. Lovely inside out step, but look at that. This is what I love with the Sri Lankans now. They're improving. But unfortunately, Roshan will run the slip before collecting it. And our chance sprints through. Yes. Northern Gladiators chasing there. Movalu, good tackle on our chance. Northwestern Blacks trying to reach the ball. Now come it's easy try on the outside. And that's uh, Anthony Matoto who scores on the outside for the Northwestern Blacks. Well, actually, it was a good pick up and run. That's what they created the chance. But it was good chase down and tackled by Jordan as well for Northwestern Blacks. But then again, it was a good score, good try by Anthony Matoto. Korea to convert to the far right with the breeze coming in. Not the direction, just off the right post. I like his hairdo, uh, <laughs> it's really fancy. And this is the Sri Lankan style of celebrating. Yes, Carlton Super Sevens, it's a complete celebration of rugby here. And it's fantastic atmosphere. Still, it's not too late. But just around here in Gaul or even in Colombo, maximum one and a half hours drive, you can come here and join us here. It's marvelous, electrifying. Maria push the restart. Good take from uh, Biri Malua on the outside. Backwards. Losing the ball in the contact in the meantime. No one interested to pick up the ball. As Viri Malua comes back once again. Roshan Viratna in the middle has men on the outside. Pradeep Lianage. And off comes uh, Mubalu in support. Stepping in. Cutting back through has Viri Malua in Tackle support. Move. Unable to pass. Viratna quickly off to Fulau. Now has men. Lovely step. Dummy pass there. Now Damien Ratwata gives it to Fulau once again. Good continuity from the Gladiators. Roshan Viraratna trying to step into the Muriad. He's successful. Needs support now. And it's uh, Viri Malua who scores under the post. Good comeback from the Northern Gladiators. Beautiful try. Lot of faces. Continuity. And Viri Malua goes under the post. Well, nice play there. Actually started off with Fulau Niua. And then again, Damien Ratwat, the hands exchanging with Roshan Veer Ratna. And he was just breakthrough run and good support play there by Malua. So the Gladiators just lead. The conversion is through. Seven points to five. leaders having fun. I saw you walking around the morning. Have you met some of those cheerleaders? I don't know. I just went to uh, meet my school team, Trinity College. As the play continues, Fula puts in a high kick straight to Murad. Nice step off, needs support. Shucks off a couple of tackles. Now has one man to beat, waiting for support. Gogagora couldn't handle it. Here comes Biri Malua has support on the outside. Not a good pass. Backwards. Knock back says the referee. Inside cut by Pium Jaisinger of Pradeep Lianage. Hard hit by Fulau. <laughs> the sweeper. Okay, and that's please, a penalty your own off support the your own Says the referee. Kosa Latisera now. Looking for support as Achang on him. Inside pass to Pupu the Godagoda. Standing up on the tackle is Pupu the Godagoda. And it's a knock forward from the Gladiators. 
hands on the floor beyond the ball. Well, Gladiators, I mean, I'm not very sure whether they have lost their intention because, well, they're playing very slow and taking it easy. And, uh, well, they're actually two points down, so they have to really step up and deliver because they have not been delivering since this morning. So this is a good opportunity for them to get the rankings and some points to go into second level. It's very important to keep that in mind. Second leg, Correct. actually, you can carry the uh, points forward. Bind. As Clifford Kurlik said, Set. they have rested a couple of speed stars in there. Fazil Marija is not starting here. And also uh, Danush Karanjan as the play goes on. Acha and stepping. Gives it to Kosala Tisera. Once again, the ball dropped off. Now Virimalua with the ball. Giving it back to Fulao. Has Pradeep Lianage on the outside. Looking at him, not passing. Basketball pass. That's off to Damien Ratwata. Nice inside out step from Damien Ratwata. Needs support. Nice offload. Brilliant to see a Sri Lankan offloading like that. And Viri Malua will score his second try of the match. For the Northern Gladiators. Nice bit of work there by Damien Ratwata. Stepping in and out and confusing Niranjan Vikramaratna totally. And brilliant offload. Look at that. Just goes down and sends it up. And all what Viri Malua has to do is just pick it up and not even sprint just jog down and touch it down simple as that that was brilliant it was something like Kieran Reid breaking off a tackle and putting the pass at the back Damien Ratwata good skills and the conversion to come on Viri Malua or rather sorry it's Pulao they stopped the left post kicking with on the left foot not successful. Well, Damien Rutford, the youngster, since he got out of school, he's been playing plenty of club rugby and also in the seventh circuit. And he has improved and matured into a good, talented player. Well, actually, his skills recently grown up a lot. As the hooter goes and the referee letting it go for one more play, I guess. Can the Northwestern Blacks retrieve ball and score here? Interesting to see kicking against the wind. Good kick. Maria getting the ball. Gives it to Achang. He steps off. Looking for the pass inside. Now Bobudu Kodagoda. Does he have the legs to go through? Turns back. Waiting for support. That's Matoto, the try scorer for Northwestern Blacks. It'll be a penalty for the Blacks. On the floor, An opportunity. On the five meter. Kodagoda taking it quickly, gives it to Achang. Now Muriad has Kosala Tisera and Pium jazzing on the outside, put the boot. And uh, Mawala on the back, sweeping it. Released. Ball held up. Ball's there. Sudarshan Amutitranti gives it to Damien Ratwatta Pradeep Lian again now has space can he run through breaks off one tackle steps off Kosala Tisera now gives the ball off to Mowalu inside pass to Sudarshan Amutitranti Damien Ratwatta arriving in support drops the ball in the meantime referee saying it's a knock forward and that will be half time I'm surprised to see um, well even Mutitranti along with um, Roshan Vidrat, the uh, a bit too slow, I mean, if you look at it, knowing that pace that they have, and the game seems to be a little bit lethargic, maybe they're playing it slow and taking it easy, they don't want to do anything in the first half, and probably they may come out blazing all guns in the second half, but for me, it was a bit of a slow game compared to the standards and the strengths that they have, standards that they have set and the strength they have, should have been a little bit more aggressive. There you go, half time scores. 12 points to 5. Clipper, I think Gladiators have the firepower. They are Danish Karanjan, David Halle, Funua. They will come back strong. On the other hand, Northwestern Blacks have the experience of Amjad Bucks. They go not uh, Northern Gladiators. Coach Adrian Perez will uh, lay out the plans correctly here. Uh, what they'll have to do in the second half will only be replacing. Well, another fancy air hit. No oh, hairstyle actually, Muirhead sporting that. Well, we've been talking about Chulas Santa earlier on the day. With the Spider-Man look like haircut and, and also Tambu. Look at his moikan. Nice. 
well, the atmosphere down here in Kogala. Yeah, it's it's a really carnival type atmosphere. And it's a full house, nice breeze, brilliant environment. Well, all credit goes to the organizers for taking this game down here to an unknown part. But still, you get the crowd and everybody's enjoying it. Yes, Clifford and also talking of haircuts. Uh, if you walk around during the next week of Popella, you will find some of these copied from the hometown boys. Wow, nice moves. <laughs> well, second half coming up. Northwestern Blacks taking on Northern Gladiators. Well, who wins will be going up the ladder and claim some good first innings. So it's uh, finishing up in the order will really help them, certainly help them because they'll be carrying that points forward. So the gladiators Red. making just one change. So Tantri has been uh, in touch, so the kickoff will come back. Thank you. A scrum to the Western Blacks. Opportunity to hit back soon after the turnaround. Pium Jasinger will throw in. Yeah. Mushin Falil has been outstanding this season. This this Carlton Super Servant so far. Short pass to Kodagoda. And it's a penalty, or rather a free kick for the Northern Gladiators. On the 15, on the 15. On the 15. Piri Malua. Holton. Holton. Now takes it. Gives it to Fulao. Off to Roshan Viratna. Mitun Hapugoda, and now the big man on the outside for the Northern Gladiators, Roshan Viriratna, Pradeep Lianage, now gives it to Virimalua on the outside, has Sudarshana Mututantri, nice pass, but good defence covering up too, Mututantri is still not off, Rock. good continuity and a good pass off to Pradeep Lianage, not collecting it, has Roshan Viratni on the outside, Mithun Hapugoda now, cutting inside, lovely run, he has pace, one man to beat is Pium Jasinger, nice inside step, and he goes under the post is Mithun Hapugoda, brilliant try, individual brilliance. Well, one of the highly rated players in the Sri Lanka 7th circuit, Mithun Hapugoda, well, we saw quite a little bit of him yesterday, and today, look at that, nice hop and an inside step, and he cuts it through, and he goes under the post. Good five points for the Gladiators. Yeah, Hapu got ahead. We run on the outside, running in a good support line. But he just decided him to go himself. That'll extend the lead to 19. Well, 19-5 is the score. Northwestern Blacks the not showing any urgency. As the conversion from Roshan Viratna goes in. And uh, David Halifanua has been brought in. Northern Gladiators. Okay, we'll change. No changes so far for the Northwestern Blacks, or rather, they have made a change. Well, Matatu, Matatu Anthony is coming off. Back. And Jordan is in. Achang with the ball now. Pupu to Goda Goda. Hitting it up. Tackle move. Now the fresh legs on the park, not going down to the Northwestern Blacks. David Halifunua wrapping him up. Now Pium Jaisinger with the ball. Drops the ball in the meantime. Good run though, good run, good hit up, but uh, dropping the ball off in the meantime. Well, he was just going off balance and then, uh, well, that helped the defender. which just brought him down very easily. And during that process, he loses the ball. Well, good lead for them. Northern Gladiators, Northwestern Blacks, still five. The solitary try. So there you go, a couple of changes brought in. Danushka Ranjan Roach. and Riza Mubara coming Five. in place of Roshan Vir Ratna and Pradeep Lienage. Northern Gladiators coming up behind. Pulau with the ball. Has Tambu inside. Inside pass to Tambu. Long cut out pass to Mithun Hapagoda, the try scorer. Will he show some magic here? Yes, he does. Just a go step gives it to Danush Karanjan on the outside. He's not willing to pass it to Mithun Hapagoda. The ball has to be released. No release. And the tackler is also not releasing, so it will be a penalty. Mutu taking it quickly. Has Riza Mubarak on the outside. 
It's an overlap. Three on one gives it to David Halifunua. He has too much gas and he scores for the Northern Gladiators. Well, nice teamwork once again. Good country to play there. Well, nice breakthrough and he sends it out. Look at that. No contest. He had heap lot of space. Halifunua makes no mistakes. Just goes there and touches down calmly and collectively. That gives them additional five points. David Halifunua, not a stranger anymore for Sri Lanka. He was in the circuit uh, last time playing the local club season for the Candy Sports Club. And the conversion. Just off the post, <laughs> pumping out. Unlucky for Riza Mubarak. Riza Mubarak who takes on the kicking responsibilities in the 15th for Sri Lanka. Here comes Pulau, putting it in the middle. High kick, Halifonoa coming and trying to tap it. Amjad Bucks on the park now for the Northwestern Blacks. Wrong! Halifonoa securing ball for the Northern Gladiators. Riza Mubarak off to Pulau, finding supporters. Nice inside step from Pulau. As supporters on the outside, wants to go on his own and he succeeds. Brilliant try. Nice little double steps in the middle. And from there on, he had too much pace. Oh, look at that. Steps inside, out, just shows the ball to Kusinga. And then again, Koda got in fact completely and comprehensively beaten. Good try. Just it did with the pace. And also a little bit of fancy footwork there. Neil Palua. He's been a live wire for North Gladiators. He has been as the kick from Riza Mubarak once again. Push to the wind and goes away. That's Riza Mubarak. Well, restarting, not going into the 10 meters. Will the blacks play it on? Into touch. Now it comes back to Matthew Garland. He's been brought in. Jordan on the outside. He asked him, Can the blacks show some magic here? Long pass. Pium jersing on the outside. It's pushing Balil now with the ball. Rock! acting as the scrum half it comes out to uh, Garland Garland steps gives it to Maria nice support line backwards. and push backwards in the meantime but <laughs> nice bit of play there well so Loni tumble he was just tapping the ball like in the basketball game and he's recollecting it but he loses his he loses it and as a result it's not forward and scrum in favor of Northwest and Blacks well, it's a good territory advantage Run. for Blacks and they Five. should make something out of this. Set. Yeah, they have to. Now the ball comes off once again. Great Amjad time. Box not Came feeding it correctly, so it'll be a reset scrum. As the be time feet, okay? clock runs Still on. Quite same. Crouch! Bind! Set! <laughs> Early. Clear call from the referee. Gladiators too eager, push too quickly. Now it comes out to Garland. Inside pass to Muriad. Pupu to Godagoda. Sudarshan Amutu Tantri bringing him down. Good clearance. Fine. Gladiators in the meantime recover ball. Riza Mubarak gives it to Fulao. Steps, puts the kick in. Now it will be a foot race from here on. Amjad Bak sweeping, pushing it back. Good tackle on him. Uh, make that's a mistake there. Very good, uh, very good uh, counter Music, rucking from the no. blacks. Committed five players into that ruck or four players into that ruck. And for Lille now. Stepping around. Mututantri has him. Coming to Pereira with the ball. Gives it to Popu to go on the outside. Does he have the pace to go on? No, it just does. Turns around. Good tackle from Riza Mubara. Northwestern Blacks still have the ball with them. Riza Mubarak now turning over push and has the ball. Tambu. Fulao. Danush Karanjan on the outside. David Halifunua onto his left. 
Now he has the ball. Slow pass to Tambu. Now the pass, the magic pass comes out to David Halifunua. Still not enough to break the defence line. Pulav has it. Can he do something? Now Reza Mubarak. Off to Danush Karanjan. He'll only sprint from here on. There he goes. The Sri Lankan winger scores the drive for the Northern Gladiators. Beautiful from Danush Karanjan. Great acceleration. A nice bit of work there. Quick hands and a long cut off pass. And that helped Danush Karanjan because he saw that space. And all what he do, has to do is just sprint. That's what he's good at. No chance for the defender. Well, it's almost about more than 12 passes there exchanged by Northern Gladiators. For a moment, I was thinking they were going backwards with those passes. And that really actually, in fact, that really helped them to create the space. Cute one. So that's it. The Northern Gladiators win. Riza Mubarak not converting there. So the Gladiators beat the Northwestern Blacks. Confirmation, 34 points to 5. Highlights coming up. Well, there's a story so far. Well, Northwestern Blacks started in the scoring with Anthony Matoto. But quick response by Northern Gladiators. Big, quick hands. And Tambu and Malavu actually contributing for the Northern Gladiators. Quick hands, big running, powerful run there. And also nice fancy footwork really helped the gladiators. But once again, you can see that. Um, well, New Falau, actually, he's the man who created everything in that game. And he was the danger man. And he lived up to that reputation. And he just charged them with the final try, in fact. And that is actually a good one. And simply, simply, Danish Karanjan had to sprint down and go. And the next match has the North Central Typhoons taking on the Eastern Eagles. Not too much of a recovery for both of these sides were involved a little bit earlier. So a quick turnaround, about an hour's break for both of the teams and they're back out on the pitch. The Eastern Eagles uh, in the pink strip, we haven't seen that until today. They haven't kicked at the required 10 metres and so immediately a penalty for the Typhoons. Lucky's with me in, uh, in commentary and what are your expectations for this game? Oh, the Eastern Eagles uh, have been unlucky in a few occasions yesterday, so I'm uh, expecting them to spark it up a bit. Uh, as you can see, um, uh, no Leo Lola for the Eastern Eagles, uh, only real pinner on the field with Emosi. As Richards taps and goes, the South African out to Ngobu. Scored a lovely try earlier in their victory against the Stallions, where they were behind on the scoreboard right up to the second half. What a comeback it was from the Typhoons, winning that game by 22 points. 2.19 and so straight back into attack through Pereira. Pass way too high and so it goes into touch. And finally the Eagles will get their hands on the ball. You rather Pereira there had a chance uh, just on the inside, but um, a tackle from the inside, uh, a defender from the inside uh, actually got a hand on the ball there, uh, Willie. Well, the Eagles saw high and just on the fingertips as well, so brilliantly maintained and brought down through Mata. Viliami Mata, representative from Fiji. Richard's guilty of not supporting his own body weight, and so they go on with the game. The quick tap from Nanyakara. Here's one of the uh, dangerous players. Ida Malagora. Sloppy start from both teams, and finally. Nueke picks the ball up, gives it to Richards. Richards shrugs off the first tackle. Nobody in front of him, and Richards will just canter around to score the first try for the Typhoons. A much better start for them in this, this third game of the day. Much needed too. Uh, oh, Richards, you can see him kneeling down there. He's a bit tired. That was a, the tackle was engaged, but he had a lot of strength just to push him out, shove him out of the way, and stayed on his feet and um, just scored over the line. Well, the opening 90 seconds, they've dominated possession, they've dominated territory, and they're dominating on the scoreboard with the first try. Well, the referee should hurry him up because he's only got 30 seconds to take the kick, and he seems to be taking an eternity here. Japanese referee needs to realise that he hasn't got all day to stand there, take a drink, and to kick the, take the conversion. Yeah, it's vital not to... The conversion has gone um, 
just on the right. Yeah, it's vital that you don't really give, uh, as officials, you don't really give these players that much time or, you know, a little bit of their time. They, they like to have their own time. Uh. Yeah, but the rules are the rules. If you've got 30 <laughs> seconds to convert, that's all you've got. He must have taken at least 45 seconds off the clock there. <laughs> so, as soon as we finish this commentary, I'm going down to see the officials. They have a little word. Mata takes it in. And now the Eagles looking to try and firstly get possession and secondly do something with it. The quick tap. And now they push it out here to Lolo Leo. That's Lavasa rather. Lavasa and just getting colliding in with Ida Malagorda. Big and strong is the South African who turns the ball over beautifully. Beautifully. Vijay Singh gets it out to Richards. Richards, the try scorer. Three defenders required to take him into the tackle. The referee goes arm out again. Side entry, he says. Oh, there were three defenders that were there. Richards, he's been in the wars. He's been involved in everything as well. That's not a great pass. Been intercepted by Nanyakara. Now it's a foot race. Can he control it? It's just a matter of being patient. Oh, it's been very good play there from Josh Moon. Getting back firstly, controlling the ball and then earning the penalty perhaps. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, it was just a just a bit on um, no discipline there from Rihan. He's um he just dived straight on the ball and tried to kill it. Tiakaraja was his first start actually, so you can see why. And through the gap goes and Kobu. Big tackle coming in from Vuthungo, but he shrugs it off. Now Richards, one pass, gets it wide. Stepping on the inside is Pirara. Pirara, he's big and strong. I wish he had actually backed himself on that occasion and get a go on the outside because he's big and strong. Yeah, that was a good clash in the middle there um, uh, between um, uh, Mogombo and, uh, and the Fijian. They actually went head-to-head uh, -head there. Yes. Um, it's interesting, interesting uh, with Pereira, you know, he's got a bit of size, he's got a bit of speed as well, but um, just the legs are not dragging a bit, it's dragging a bit, uh, really. Uh, you can understand that, seventh game in two days, four matches yesterday where they were 50%, one, two, lost two. They're pretty much at those odds as well today. The Siphons lost the first game to the Sharks, 17-12, and then uh, in a comeback, right, let's go, guys. and a brave comeback, courageous comeback against the Stallions, won that match 22-19. The Eastern Eagles Guns. lost to the Warriors earlier today, 19-12. set. And so this is the second to last match for both of these two teams. After this, we go into playoff mode. Guns. From 10th all the way through to 1st. So I hope you can stay with us here on CSN. Coverage of the Carlton Super 7s for 2014. And Corbu Ray stays in support and he's going to race away and score. Scored a beautiful try in the match earlier today against the Stallions. And Ngorbu receives the pass. He set it up as well. Stayed in support. That's good reward. Very good reward. Yeah, yeah. As you, as you look at him there, uh, just smiling away and just sprinting over the line. Yes, he, he did. He's, in fact, he scored the winning try uh, earlier on today. Uh, and that was a tight match against the Stallions. Uh, I know that you're thinking it's a big smile that he's got, but that's a bit of tape that he's got under his lip. <laughs> Uh, some, uh, some time spent at the medical center maybe just a sprick or just a graze or something like that but uh, here is his compatriot another South African and Mark Richards just trying to add the extras and unsuccessful on that occasion not a very good place to have uh, to have taped um. well, only if you want to kiss somebody but uh, <laughs> otherwise no problem <laughs> been good for their coach Schumann as we see a nice clean break here from Viliami Mate should have too much pace now the big legs get into action changes the ball so they can defend that's a wonderful try for the Eastern Eagles right from the kickoff Mata caught it and I'm going to enjoy watching the replay of this because kids watching at home he saw the defender coming across he changed the ball so that he could defend and he scores Yes, uh, yeah, he saw Richards coming closer there and um, 
he actually put his hand out, but uh, he was strong enough, big enough to make it to the lane. We yeah, one of the thoroughbreds here on display, Martin. Six foot three, 101 Ks, and in full stride. It's an awesome sight. That's how they come by the islands. You get some of these big boys and you wonder sometimes. As we see Levas around for the conversion. Just pushes it wide, so two tries to one, both unconverted. And maybe some confidence for the Eastern Eagles as they go into the huddle to hear from former Tongan representative in 7s and 15s, their coach Harley Tepoli. There is confirmation just at the halftime break where the Typhoons are leading the Eagles by 10 to 5. Yeah, interesting, Harley, um, uh, he, um, he was down for the 15 aside uh, this season. Uh, Willie uh, played a couple of games, um, complained a hell of a lot for uh, with, with the weather up in Colombo, but. Um, um, Speaking to him earlier on, you know he's enjoyed he's enjoyed every uh, every single part of it. Um, it's good to have him down again. Well, you've been here for a number of years now. Like you, what's your impression? I mean, as far as the Sevens program and are the Sri Lankan players getting better? Yeah, of course, uh, hugely and, and tremendously. Um, it's, a, it's a steady progress uh, right now. I mean, the Sevens has been, uh, this concept has been kicking off um, since 2011, so it's been here for four years. So, it, it, as you can see, really, in the last uh, two days, yesterday and today as well, I mean, the skill level has improved. Uh, the confidence of, of some of these young guys uh, are boosting a hell of a lot. Um, and, and now they can believe um, they can compete against uh, some of these uh, some of these uh, stars of the game and some of the bigger, bigger guys. Well, it's a tremendous concept and it's uh, now been in progress for four years. The development of uh, the game is, well, it's testimony to their performance at the Glasgow Commonwealth Games. As Mark Richards gets us uh, underway for the second seven minutes and straight up is uh, Pereira claiming it basketball style, just reaching up into the air and pulling it out. Ball is cleared. Now the options looking for the inside pass. And that is uh, Ariyapala. Turnover though. Costly turnover as well because they were on attack. Now they just need to find space. That's what you need to do when he's throwing it straight to an opposition player. And now it's in the hands of Richards. Richards running wide. Richards trying to get on the outside. And he has scored the first try for them. He's going to score the third. But it's the first of the second half. And a costly mistake of the pass. Yeah, just a, just a bit silly there from the Eagles as we see Richards running in, uh, running to space, just faking the pass and just took the space and when you get that sort of space, of course you go for it. But um, just looking at back, uh, Sheriff, you know, the Eagles turned the ball over and Sheriff just threw it straight back to one of the Typhoon players. That was a gift. Again, he's taking a drink in between. <laughs> well, that message has got to get out there. I think the... Japanese referees enjoying the, the break as well. Yeah, you're probably right actually. Maybe I haven't thought of that, but. No, 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 no. no. Oh, no, no. that's a bit of a tricky one. The linesman has actually put his flag up, but the referee said no. Well, there you go. The referee has the overruling say, and so he said, I've watched it. It didn't go over the post, so 15 5 is the scoreline. Well, he's actually said that um, the ball went over the post. So we Vasa. Just the draw and pass and creating some space down this left hand flank for Nanyakara. Now they feed it out through Guru Singh. Good ball movement out to Buthango. He hasn't had too much to do, Buthango. And here is Kakraja. More ball for the Eagles. Better pass as well. That's got at least 40 meters. Now they've got some space here. Here's Levasa. Levasa taking in the three defenders. Hunter's there and he's driven over the ball as well, legally, by supporting his own body weight. And now the Typhoons in the position, rolled away. So recycled. Looks up into the tackle of Sheriff. Up. That's 
has been lost board, surely. And Rufungo was standing there, it was an offside position, some have suggested. And, well, the ball was lost forward, so I'm a little perplexed and confused about that. No surprise, he's Japanese. <laughs> well, you were there for a while, Willie, you would you wouldn't know way better than any uh, of us. Yeah, of course I would, and that's why, that's why I went bald. I had an afro when I went to Japan as a young man. Started tearing the hair out with some of the refereeing decisions, and uh, that is a strange one for me there too. Thought the decision was going towards the Eagles, and he's brought it back and given a penalty to the Typhoons, and now they get to stretch their legs through Pereira. Futhango goes in with the tackle. Ngobu, who scored one of the tries in the first half, clears it. The dummy cut with Hunt. Good patient build up here. There's players out to this right hand flank. Someone needs to go straight. You need to try and straighten up the defense. When you pass and just allow them to just shoulder off you, you get into all sorts of trouble. Mudurang up. Turnover time. Well, what can the sheriff cook up? Advantages over. Sheriff's on the inside. If Sheriff gets the ball, they'll score. Well, he needed to offload, but he's got to his feet, and now he's going to race away. Wanga Tambu thought he'd flown the try there. The pass would have been the better option, but nonetheless, the score, the try has been scored, and they've closed the deficit. It's now 17-10, kick to come. Yeah, Hallow would have been putting his hair there. You know, he had uh, Sheriff in support as he converts his own try. Yeah, all he had to do was just pass it back inside, but he backed himself. Got tackle, went on the ground, and of course, uh, Momentum took him over, took him over, and he got back on his feet and he strolled over the line uh, with no defender in front of him. So the Eagles comes back strong. He gets a seven-pointer. Well, it's 15-12. I know on the scoreboard it's showing 17, but the conversion was waved off by the referee. And so 15-12 is the actual official score. So 15-12 is the scoreline here. The Typhoons, they claim that they got the kick over, but the referee changed it and he overruled it. So the Eagles just within three. Ngorbu, big and strong. Now he's told to roll away and they clear the ball again. Good patient build up again, just showing their class and a little bit of experience as well, just holding on to the ball. That's all they need to do, put it up. He tries to get on the outside and he's gone and touch now. Here's an opportunity for the Eagles. They need to let it go. Was that player on side? Riff. Straight in and off his feet. That was a crucial one. I mean, uh, the Eagles turned that, I mean, turned that ball over and had good chances. And you're right, Willie. Uh, I don't think that uh, Typhoon player was on side, but the Japanese referee was right there. And he gave away, um, gave the penalty to the Typhoons for Sheriff Moore going straight on the ground. So Ngorbu tries to go on the outside of Te Arakna. And just a lovely simple run in here for now Adrian Nell, the South African representative. One of the easiest tries he'll ever get. He just stayed in support. Well the, the Eastern Eagles sort of gave up um, after that penalty. <laughs> silly thing to uh, to say, silly thing to do on the field as we look at the replay. Now uh, just running it um, running it down to the to the try line he had a free run for about 30 meters but yeah that was a funny call uh, for me um, I think Sheriff was uh, was on his feet he supported himself on that penalty going back to that penalty but uh, of course the Japanese referee the man with the whistle um, he's the man um, that calls that calls it as it is so uh, he saw it differently siren has been sounded and so 22 plays 12 I think the conversion was good. What can the Eagles now cook up? It's all about valuable points through Vuthango. They've cleared the ball and they've got it out to Jamal Din, their uh, a captain. They're now stepping in, getting into some trouble here. They're trying to hold him up so that they can effectively get the turnover and that's what they've done. Not effectively though. And so now they go on. The Eagles pushing it wide. 
Uthango is there. And so is the man at the end of the chain is Levasa. Go away! Slow ball though, which means that the defense of the Typhoons are able to get back into position. Well, that's not a great pass from Jamaldin. They've now had to tie it up. This is what happens when players get tired. Some of the skill sets, some of the concentration levels actually start to lapse, which is not what you want. The Sheriff's got it now. And he knows one way, and that's straightforward. That pass looked a little bit like that as well. <coughs> now the penalty is coming thick and fast. Dabare, Levasa, Buthango. Buthango one to beat. Buthango will go to the corner. Reaches out and scores. Well, the touch judge says that he was in touch first. So no official try. He won't get the rewards. And the Typhoons have done a magnificent job here. Yeah, he backed himself um, with fumble there, but he didn't really, just, just having a look at it, uh, the combo was never going to let him go and score that try in the corner there, and just superb uh, tackling technique, you know, took his ankles and took him over the sideline. Well, Vithanga will be disappointed more at the scoreline than that actual result there. The Eagles beaten by 22 points to 12. Try a piece on either side of the half for the Eagles. Four tries for the Typhoons. And so final score here. The Typhoons far too good for the Eagles, winning 22 points to 12. And here are the highlights. Yeah, as we look at Richards, that's the first try of the Typhoon that went to the Typhoons. Um, you see the defender there of the Eagles was very disappointing. Uh, not, really, not really making that tackle. Second try um, to Mokombo. And that was a response from the Eagles um, right there. And then Richards um, took it to his hands and just went through uh, two defenders um, uneasy. And we look at uh, the second try by the Eagles. He, they came back well into the match underneath the post. Um, but the Typhoons were too good uh, stretching it up. And Nell, the recipient in scoring that final try. So 22 points to 12. Five matches to be played. And it will be from 10 10th place down to first and a man that knows all about the pressures of Sevens Rugby, current world champion, captain of the All Black Sevens, DJ Forbes, he's downstairs. Good afternoon, welcome back. Here we are now at the uh, Coggola facility for the Carlton Super Sevens 2014 and I'll tell you this much, the intensity is growing in the middle. It really is an unforgiving story with the, the matches. And uh, we're playing for rankings now. This is the business end of everything. And final day here in Kogola means that it's really up to how big the heart, how big the tank, and who will be standing at the end of it. Stood next to me is a man who knows the whole story. Perhaps the most celebrated rugby sevens exponent in the world. Captain uh, currently of the New Zealand World Cup champions. Mr. DJ Forbes, absolutely delightful. Nice to see you here. Back in Sri Lanka again. Because you don't seem to be able to keep away, mate. You're back again. What a great Carlton Super story, though. Yeah, my third year here, and I think uh, I guess you really get a good appreciation of of, uh, of rugby sevens and how it's growing. And I think it's part of our job, um, you know, as, as athletes to try and uh, I guess spread the news, so to speak. And if we can, uh, you know, promote rugby here in Sri Lanka by bringing a lot of us internationals and, and lifting the caliber of the, the local players, um, then we can only um, expect to see much more growth. And at the Com Games, everyone knows Sri Lanka did, you know, um, did really well. So it's good to see that I guess uh, they're getting dividends from the hard work they put in here. True, true. I mean, you've got a hugely harsh work ethic about how you do things in New Zealand. Do you see that the same sort of ability here? We can translate that into Sri Lanka to get the players thinking right, eating right, living well as professional rugby players. You travel the world with the Seven Series. Is the possibility of getting that right here as well? Yeah, well, I think uh, with the setup that the teams have, I mean, I've, I've come over as a, a player coach, probably uh, playing a bit more than I should be. You know, I should be just out there coaching. But I think in that sense, you know, I can try and uh, put in some systems in place, um, even, you know, as small as nutrition. You know, helping the boys off, uh, I guess, little habits that can, you know, give them, I guess, a little bit of an edge or, um, you know, find their ways to stay ahead of the game. And, you know, it's not just what we do on the field, but like you said, uh, off the field, you know, I'll try and put in some, some game plans, um, systems, basic skills um, that the boys could hopefully use, you know, to push on to high honours, you know, to play for the 7 Sri Lanka or even the 15 side. True, true. I saw you this morning, very early in the morning, get out. 
have a little bit of a blowout on the beach, just run some yards, get the get the muscles warm, and then get in the ocean. Uh, you know, it's something new for our lads as well to be able to work on the first on the day of the actual event. So that's something that you bring to the game as well. Yeah, well, probably something that you know touched us to the New Zealand boys. I'm, I'm not as strict as Titch, but I think the importance of that is, is making sure when we go into their first game um, that the boys are well awake and they're blowing up the lungs. Um, you can see in, the, in those quarterfinals, a lot of the teams really struggle just to, to get through it. Then obviously you can see as the day goes on, the teams get a, a lot more fluid and a lot more consistency. So uh, getting that, you know, that getting into good habits, um, getting the legs, I guess, back into action after a big day one is something um, that these. Uh, I guess the locals need to really, you know, focus on, and it's not just about day one. It's, for us, it was a perfect example. You know, three out of four games, and then, uh, you know, we chipped up in their semi. So, little things like that, you know, learning from the, the negatives and, and trying to build on the positives, and hopefully, um, you know, I've told the boys it's about two weeks. Um, so I think so far being in the top four is definitely, you know, um, a good thing, and then we can build for next week as well. True, true. It's about making sure that the petrol engine stays on. You've got a little bit left in the tank. Now, for you, when you travel back to countries like Sri Lanka you see the, the big HSBC World Series roll out. What do you think the future would be if we can actually host one of those World Series here in Sri Lanka? Oh, I think it would be awesome. I mean, uh, for me, you know, playing here, I guess it's like playing in the islands, Samoa, Fiji. Um, and the fans really get out. I mean, expecting an even bigger bigger party, a bigger show in, in Colombo. But um, to see everyone turn out like this is, is, is really awesome. And I mean, who knows, you know, in, in a couple of years, um, if, if everyone's, you know, putting their hand up and all the the right resources are in place, then um, we could easily come here and, and do an event. So I think uh, everyone knows with the growth of the Olympics, with the Sevens, um, a lot of countries are putting their hand up to try and host. And I think you guys have obviously got three years ahead of the game. You know, you know hosting this Carlton Super Sevens is definitely a, a great start. And I'm sure in a couple of years we'll see even, even bigger things to come. True, true. Now on CSN, everybody wants to know what is the story about the Forbes and the beard? It's a big question on CSN and we'd like to find out from the man himself. What is the story about the man and the beard? I guess, I guess when the story started, was uh, there was a movie called Sparta the 300. So a lot of our boys, uh, when we started, we thought oh, when we go into battle, like the Spartans, we'll grow a beard. And then um, on day two, normally we'll, you know, clean shaven, which is a business end for us. So we don't wear a, a suit and tie like people, you know, in offices. But uh, as close as we get is a clean shave, and uh, wearing the jersey. And then I think a few people started thinking I was superstitious um, in terms of shaving the beard. So I wanted to grow it and show that we could still win. So in the World Series, uh, the last time I, I shaved was February, so I'm, I'm going to try and grow it February to February, see how big it can go. <laughs> well, there you go. He's going to grow it February to February. He's a warrior. It's all about winning. It's all about hard work, the little things that you get right. DJ Forbes understands the nature of professional rugby sevens and for Sri Lanka, possibilities. And for you coming back to Sri Lanka, of course, very nice. You see the quality of the players growing as well. You see the Sri Lankan players stepping up to the mark. And that's really what it's all about, the, the, the blend that you can bring, like you say, player, coach, adding a little bit of stature, making sure that the understanding grows as well. Well, that's exactly it. I mean, uh, we were pretty fortunate last night to give all, all our locals a run, all seven of them all on at once, um, against a team with a couple of foreigners. So that's giving them the opportunity to really test themselves. I know it's, uh, we're here to, uh, I guess, mix and mingle and you know get that combination right, but uh, to give them an opportunity to, to really test themselves, that'll be a similar situation that they'll face if they play for their top side. So it's a, it's a great example. And, and, and like you mentioned, um, me as a player coach, I'm just trying to give them as much knowledge and share as much uh, experiences that, that I've had on the world circuit to give them a chance at hopefully you know pushing on to higher honours. So, you know, so far, so good. The boys are really um, are thriving in the environment and and it's good to see all, all the other internationals stepping, stepping up as well. True, true. DJ, I'm going to say thank you very much. You've got work to do now. Thank Cheers. You. There you go. Mr. DJ Forbes, the most celebrated rugby sevens professional in the world. I can't ask for better. What a privilege to be able to chat about the game and the technicalities and the simple things New Zealand get right. That's why they're such a, such a strong side. For us here in Sri Lanka, for all of you watching on CSN, this is a world champion. He's the captain of the New Zealand world champion side, currently the world champions. How nice. What more can you ask for on CSN? This is what life is all about. It's heart, it's mind, and it's Sri Lanka. DJ Forbes, CSN Live. We're getting back to MCR from here. You enjoy it. We'll be back after the commercial break. It's big time rugby.
Sen. Javagena, Jayagena, Dinana, Vidina, Langvi, Panadila, and the Ekvi, Rokvi, Diri, and Sakta Katarusena, Vera Yodana, Dinana, Asila, Pasa, Uradila, Jaina, Dinna, Havena, Yamu, Yamu, Rokvamu, Rokvi, Jagamu, Gamu, Gamu, Jagamu, Ekvi, Jagamu, Yamu, Yamu, Rock Ramu, Rock Ramu, Jai Gamu, Gamu Gamu, Jai Gamu, Get Me Jai Gamu. Avila, Tuna Tuna Na Pani Na Bete Na Ek Vi Vera Dala, Hava Lang Vi Lang Vi Java Yen Ma Vi. Vinda Sima, Pana Puta Na Tina Na Vati Na Ma Ge Ek Vi La, Jai Go Sha Vai Na. Yamu Yamu, Rock Ramu. Rock me, jai gamu, gamu gamu, jai gamu, let me jai gamu. Rocking and rocking it in the game of rugby. Super seven's now all over the country. Unstoppable, international. Pick up the mic if you know this is official. Utsa hakalaguna, give me try. Utsa hakalaguna, give me try. Utsa hakalaguna, now give me, give me, give me, give me.
are born to survive We're the chosen kind We reach for the sky It ain't gonna stop till we cross the line Babila Dura duanna paninna vetenna SP veradala Tava langvi langvi javen matvi bila seema Pana pudanna dinanna vedilla vage ekvila Jaya kosha vehenna Nam kai kote Babu mi ai bel bo min che Karana lei pole Ho ya mar che po bolage Uyalin vegam Adu pin vaangum yem munne Thadaigalude Vetri daan engal kai Rock 
been rocking it in the game of rugby Super 7's now all over the country Unstoppable, international Pick up the mic if you know this is official Utsa hakalakuna Give me try Utsa hakalakuna Give me try Utsa hakalakuna Nah, give me, give me Utsa hakalakuna Chava kena Chaya kena dinanga vinindalan Vipana dila Adha ekki rakki diri en santa kata Arsena Dario danya dinan asil pasa ura dila Chaya na dinna habenna Yamu yamu, rock me mu, rock me jaya gamu Gamu gamu, jaya gamu, ek me jaya gamu Yamu yamu, rock me mu, rock me jaya gamu Gamu gamu, jaya gamu, ek me jaya gamu We were born to survive We're the chosen kind We reach for the sky It ain't gonna stop till we cross the line Babila Duraduanna paninna vetenna SP veradala Tava langvi langvi javen matvi bila seema Pana pudanna dinanna vetenna vage ekvila Jaya kosha vehenna Nam kai kote, babu mi ay belbo minche. Karana le pole, ho ya mar chay po bolay. Uyalin begum, ag bin bandum yem munne. Thade galude, vetchi dan yengal kai gul. Yamu yamu, rock we mu, rock we jai gamu. Gamu gamu, jai gamu, ek we jai gamu. Yamu yamu, rock me mu, rock me jai gamu. Gamu gamu, jai gamu, ek me jai gamu. Yamu yamu, rock me mu, rock me jai gamu. Gamu gamu, jai gamu, ek me jai gamu. Yamu yamu, rock me mu, rock me jai gamu. Gamu gamu, jai gamu, ek me jai gamu. Jam again na. Jai again, na din na vi din na lang vi panadila. Ada ek vi rock vi diri en sat lag taru sena. Vera yo din na din na asil la pasa uradila. Jai na din na hamenda. Yamu yamu, rock we mu, rock we jai gamu. Gamu gamu, jai gamu, ek vi jai gamu. Yamu yamu, rock we mu. Rock me, jai gamu, gamu gamu, jai gamu, ek me, jai gamu. Avila, dura dua na panin na vetin na ek me vera dala. Tava lang vi lang vi java yen mat vi. Bila sima, pana putan na din na vetin na mage ek vila. Jai ko shavehen na. Yamu yamu, rock me mu. Rock me, jai gamu, gamu gamu, jai gamu, ek me, jai gamu. Rocking it, rocking it in the game of rugby. Super seven's now all over the country. Unstoppable, international. Pick up the mic if you know this is official. Utsa hakalakuna, give me try. Utsa hakalakuna, give me try. Utsa hakalakuna, nah give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. Chava kena, chaya kena dina na vinindan vi panadila. Arsena, dare yo dan na dina na asil pasa ura dila. Jai na din na habenna. Yamu yamu, rock me mu, rock me jai gamu. Gamu gamu, jai gamu, ek me jai gamu. Yamu yamu, rock me mu, rock me jai gamu. Gamu gamu, jai gamu, ek me jai gamu. We're the chosen kind. We reach for the sky. It ain't gonna stop till we cross the line. 
Kabila Dura duanna paninna vetenna SP Veradala Tava langvi langvi javen matvi pinda seema Pana pudanna dinanna vetenna bagek vila Jaya gosha vahenna Nam kai kote Babu mi ai bel bo minche Kadana lai pole
باشم به هم نه نام کی کوته بابو میای بل بو میشه کرنالی بوده بویا من چی پولگی بویا لیم بگم اگه بین باندوم یه مکنی تری گلوده بچی دان یینگل کی
Again, welcome back to the Kogala BOI facility for the Carlton Super 7s 2014. It's the business end of this fabulous two days here in the Deep South. Absolutely beautiful, Dan. If you look at the ground conditions, even better for the players. Now, to get the whole thing delivered, we spoke with George Simkin in the morning. We had Willie Lose, who is the IRB World Series commentator, talk about how this thing has developed and how the whole thing comes together. We talk about the logistics, the mechanics and the planning. Now, I'm going to put you on hold and just let you speak to one of the uh, gentlemen whose job it is to marshal the pitch. He's the pitch marshal. His job is to make sure that everything you see absolutely perfect is done way in front and set up and already sorted out because you see the perfect picture. The huge amount of work that goes in to get it right is massive. It's not small. As a crew of about 40 who work full time to get it right, and this is what Rugby Sevens is all about. It's not just about the playing in the middle, it's also about getting everything else the scaffolding, the seating, the arrangements, the facilities, the accommodation, the food, and the logistics, and of course the pitch. Now, here he is, Mr. Anna Vijayaratna, absolutely nice to see you. Thank you, Sean. Thank you very much. I know it's a very busy day for you running this whole big story. Tell me a little bit about how the whole thing falls into place. Okay, when, uh, when we took over this pitch by the Carltons, it was uh, a football grounds and I think the Carltons have done a very nice job in putting up that beautiful scoreboard 
and then we put up the new toilets and then we, we did a lot of it was cricket grounds so we had to get the get the pitch middle pitch right you know turf to uh, right round and the painting and putting up all these tolls there was it's a, it's a huge amount of work put in here right what else do you want to know uh, the well, running of the uh, running of the uh, tournament is concerned it's mainly timing right and i think we are spot on on time so far so good right <laughs> right right uh, we have always done it well and i think uh, even this year with even the schools coming in we have uh, we have kept everything into time and it's a it's a wonderful place to have rugby uh, in the suburbs of sri lanka and especially in kogula where the infrastructure was not good but i think we made it very good certainly i think you've done really well i mean if you look at the conditions the ground conditions the facilities for the players the food and the accommodation and the whole story it is not one thing it's about 25 or 30 yeah. things how effective is it or how much of an effect is it to have a very good team that works well it's uh, you know, one thing it's planning and uh, the dedication and the support of all all people who worked uh, along with us and it uh, made it work simple as that i know good teams yeah. so what it means is that to get this thing rolling you need good teams to get the timing right to get the logistics right so for you now it's about getting the teams on the pitch and getting the, and getting that team that little bit covered so the matches are running off on time and we finish as per plan yes we do finish as per plan because i think even the teams now we have done about four carltons and the teams have got used to it and uh, it's quite uh, interesting that these guys know exactly what to do right so we don't have to you know keep on asking them whether to come on time on this and that they know exactly when to come the, the matters the, the the programs are with them so it's it's very easy running it now to true, true i'm going to say thank you thank very you, much thank you, absolutely brilliant there's ana vijayaratna the pitch marshal whose job it is it's a uh, the thankless task really because he's got to run the whole story he's on the pitch all the time he's got to make sure that everything actually links up and when we get live on television well you see the, the perfect picture but for all of us there's a lot of other things that go on as well on CSN we'd like to go behind things that work and show you the reality of how it works so if you now come with me we'll take a quick swirl round and here it is the pitch itself the markings the logistics the, the actual turf was relayed if you look at the turf it's been marked separately each one is a separate piece of grass that has been planted and then grown over a matter of a month unbelievable that's why you see the soft turf and it comes up very quickly the running surface is brilliant the conditions on that side are for the the locals plus the vip invites plus of course all the other the teams and their friends and fans on that side if you turn with me on this side this is the logistics end of it this is really the business side of things because these are where the teams and the franchises hold up each team has to have a particular facility so they can lay down their the mat the mats and stuff so they can rest up the ice baths are on the other side behind where is that uh, the the tent there the white big tent is where the food is located just in case you're wondering how all this goes i mean if you look it up there and there is the commentary position where we are normally hiding away and then beyond that up there are the two big cameras that take the massive big pan shots that you see the quality of CSN the quality of television the quality for you at home is all worked out here in the middle nowhere else so essentially what we do is try and keep it as simple as possible and get the timing right now for me i hand over the commentary because that is what i have to do so i throw to them and you at home can enjoy the best commentators in the world enjoy well thank you shant we'll take it as a compliment well you are in party two well i don't have to say much shant said everything you saw the facility well on our vision who's the pitch marshal well simply relaying from this turf and putting up the scoreboard fencing and providing basic facilities where well, kogula has got an international standard stadium so that is something unique and these poa companies around here they'll be able to use this it's a matter of the for the authorities to maintain this and manage this and also if you look at this um game what you're witnessing right now that's wesley college taking on trade college it's an absolutely brilliant chance for these cool kids to come and play at this level and the exposure they get 
and that is priceless. So if you look at the schools lineup, Royal College, WW Kandangar Vidyalaya, Science College, Iskipatana College, Kingswood College, Wesley College, Trinity College, along with Joseph College, eight teams taking part. Well, good to see league lead, league win, league champs, knockout champs, and league seventh champs. Um, Isipatana, well, they, they, they are the favourites here, and also you get the other team, two teams who did row so well this year. That's Kingswood College along with Trinity College. The game what you're witnessing is Trinity Wesley, and uh, well, if you look at as a whole picture, Carlton Sevens, well, it is giving so much for Sri Lankan rugby, and the, and the Sri Lankan players, the club players, along with the Sri Lankan squad, well, it's it's basically a passport and uh, for success. So that is what it's all about. And for these 18 year old lads for them to play at this level in front of this international exposure and that gives them a lot of courage and a lot of confidence right. and that's a good exposure well you can't just simply buy it even if you have money but this is simply prices like i said Willie, have you got anything to say on this oh look i just um congratulate the organizers and everybody that's involved in this this is the future these young men here have been four six ten twelve years may have the opportunity to represent their country Sri Lanka at the Olympics or even at the Commonwealth Games and um, I wouldn't be surprised if there's a few scouts that are actually here watching these schoolboys play because that's where the future of the game is and so for them to be on this international stage and join the surroundings also learning a heck of a lot and uh, as I mentioned earlier throughout the day Clifford I hope that some of the more experienced players go back to the school level because that's where they need to be. Well Sri Lankan rugby is it's, it's big massive and uh, especially Sri Lanka schools rugby really if you look at it the crowd that is the game school game draws that's more than the clubs I could say and uh, it's something unique so it's the grassroots level has been the job at the grassroots level has been done very nicely and that's that's actually attractive schools rugby and the problem what we see is the conversion levels and from there people converting to club rugby and from there it's uh, retaining them to uh, get their services for Sri Lanka so that is the problem yeah well it's a universal problem in fact it's an international problem the drop-off from boys and girls once they leave secondary school is something like 60% on average and that's of uh, all the schools and all codes so everybody's filling it they're all looking for the silver lining they're all trying to find the magic uh, formula and what you can do to actually keep kids involved in sport and I think um, one of the most important things and I've done a lot of surveys and I've done a lot of reading into it spoken to a lot of psychologists about what the psyche is about young kids, how you keep them involved. First thing is you've got to make it enjoyable. And I think that if kids are playing a sport that they enjoy, then they're going to continue to enjoy it. So how do you do that? You make sure that the environment that they're in and that their coaches and that their peers and that uh, they've got participation and they're enjoying it in that sense. And the second thing is, one thing that kids don't want, and it's been shown through surveys, is that they don't want pushy parents. And so, you know, the, the pushy parents are the ones that I'm talking about that the drive home after the game of first 15 rugby or netball or cricket or soccer or whatever it may be. Uh, kids drop out of sport because mum or dad is sitting there replaying the game to them and telling them how bad they were or how good they were and trying to relive it. There's no point in doing that. You know, they basically kids want to play sport to enjoy it and the parents just need to support them in every way that they can and not get into that mode of trying to play judge and jury after every single match. Well, very well said, Billy. That's something very, very important. Not many people, not, not many of us likely will realize that. But then again, that's something important for the parents as well. So, there you go. Listen to that. And uh, well, also, what about the Sri Lankan schools rugby? Basically, when you have an event like this at international level, well, that develops the passion. In fact, like well, that increases the passion. Already, these boys are playing this game because they love it, and to see them to um, because Sri Lanka has a future like this where you can play it at international level or big stage like this that will definitely keep them in the game yeah the, the other interesting thing that they've got to do as well is, is make sure that they get good coaches and um, good coaches means those that support the kids you know those that get to learn about the kids go into their environment get interested in what they do what their hobbies are what their interests are and um, we've found particularly in New Zealand that teachers and coaches at that level that invest in the kids 
get to see the rewards later because the kids stay with the sport and they always say whenever they go to higher levels they always refer back to their school coaches and how much they learnt and how much time that that coach actually had for them and why they enjoyed it so much and I'm sure that there's a lot of Sri Lankan cricketers who would say exactly the same thing that because of, of the cricket coach that they had at school at a very young age is the reason why they continue to play the game and that's why Sri Lanka is one of the best in the world. Well obviously we've heard that many international cricketers saying that well as we speak Trinity is leading 24-12 well this is a played game and seems like an easy try for Trinity well these lads will be playing here and from here they'll be playing in the second leg as well so they'll be carrying for they'll be carrying forward their points or achievements whatever they make here so that is something unique that's the beauty of this tournament as well really if you look at these teams they're fighting at each other all these um, provincial teams but then again you start fresh in the second leg but still you have some points from here yeah it's nice to know that uh, you know even though you might be eighth or seventh position after this tournament uh, this weekend you carry those points and if you win the tournament in Colombo you can actually walk away worth the main prize and so that's the beauty of it and the other nice thing about it too is that the foreigners can't uh, impart and can't actually translate and tell the um, Sri Lankan players everything just in the short space of time of four days or five days so now they've got a whole week with them again and mark my words the difference that you will see in the confidence the skill level and decision making from the Sri Lankan players between today and what we see in Colombo next week I think it's going to be unbelievable well coming up next will be the playoffs Eastern Eagles taking on Northwestern Blacks well very disappointing for me to see really Northwestern Blacks and Eastern Eagles especially they had a good start for the tournament yesterday and well they are competing for the ninth and 10th place so even if they win the highest place they're going to end up is the ninth yeah disappointing obviously for the Eagles and uh, especially some of the players that they have got there Muhammad Sheriff is, um, is one that comes to mind Pitetta and some of the foreign players that are there too White. and uh, Lolo Leo and Rupina Lavasa. Well, cute start there is Nichols. Well, pardon me, not a good start actually. Should have that 10 meters, didn't have that. Ball didn't carry forward. And the Northwestern Blacks today, they lost every single match against the Central Kings. They then lost the Gladiators. And in their final match earlier today, they lost to the Jaffna. Challenges 19 points to 24. So just one victory for the men with in possession at the moment and that was the one win yesterday well PM Jashing are quickly taking that and sending it to Muirhead who's trying to drill through that defense okay. but Time's held out, back right. Khalil Mushin well this will be a good outing for these local lads oh it's a wild throw but still collected well sends a backhand pass in I don't think it's a wise idea but still managed to secure position well now he's in trouble this time push forward and stolen, Williami Mata. Well, that was a gift by Kodagoda. Yeah, nice call, Clifford, and that's what it was. Pressure and the line speed from the Eastern Eagles forcing them into pressure here, passing the ball back, locked up there. And Williami Mata, the Fijian flyer, scored a try earlier today in one of the earlier matches. That's his first for the competition. Nice touch there as well. And so the Eagles lead 5 0. Definitely, that'll give them some confidence and a successful kick 7-0 good start for Eagles once again let's wait and see what they're going to make out of it the problem is really throughout the games even though they have lost many each and every game they had good starts but unable to convert that into victories exactly looking at some of the players there Vuthango and also Jordan Tupo one player that stood out for me is uh, Taya Singer Jersey number four for the Northwestern Blacks. He's had a very good tournament. What a player. Once again, restart is Eagles. This time, Koda going to collect it. Decides not to hands throw away. the ball. Hands away. Goes on to the ball. Hands away. Shouting, hands away. Quickly taken by Jordan Tupo. Since Dover. Murhead. Once again, waiting for support. Support arrives in the form of Richie Chang. Well, Blacks on the attacking 14 mode. 14 release. Brought down by the big man, Mata. Once again, a long pass. Eagles have plenty of time to intercept that, but decided to hold back. 
Her head was brought down. Well, not yet. Yes, this time, yes. Rashan Tayagaraja, young lad, playing for Eastern Eagles. Scrap oh, that is a second mistake by Koda Godel. Hope it's not going to cost him. Well, he just looked up to uh, Koda Goda. I like the patience being shown by the Northwestern Blacks, moving it from one side of the field to the other. And their attacking players, obviously, Andrew Muir here is one of them. There's Ah Chong with the big loopy pass that should have been taken. That's right in the bread basket. Maybe he just looked up and saw the defenders coming in there. Buthungo was one. And he's lost it forward. So great attacking position for the Eastern Eagles. Not forward. Scrum down. Right In the meantime, look at that. Beautiful crowd. Crouch! Full house. Crowd is just by the beach. Five. Set. Nice hotels around here. Indamal Gara puts the ball in. That's a loose ball. Indamal going to contest that. But collected by Tusita Samaratilaka and he scores. Try number two for Eastern Eagles. Well, that's a captain's knock as well. Just poor work here from the Northwestern Blacks, just forcing the ball back. Samaratilaka, man on the spot. Johnny on the spot and it bounced up beautifully for him as well. So good reward. I think he's lost the forward. Yes, he has actually. There's no no try. The referee says that it was Cut. actually knocked on there prior Five. to the try being scored. Set. Well, I guess it was a pretty late goal, but still, <laughs> still the they had the advantage. They had the temporary advantage. Well, unfortunate for Samar Tilaka. Thought for a moment that he scored. Come with both sides. <laughs> I like the referees. They talk a lot these days, don't they? Crouch. Five. Set. Once again, Itamogor puts the ball in, and this time is Utango held back by Muruhead, but still he goes. A mercy Utango. That's the happy assault, assault, silent assassin, uh, is one of his nicknames because he is deadly that close to the line. Muruhead does well to try and hold him up. Look at that, the strength shown from the Australian, but Utango forces the ball down that's their second try it's taken a little while to come good reward good solid scrum as well that was the key to that try and mossy butango try number two for eastern eagles we had strong lad he was so powerful to hold on to emosi butango well 14 nil Brilliant way to go forward, these Eagles. This is the playoffs for the ninth and tenth places. Who wins? They're going to end up the highest position. They're going to finish is the ninth position. Good restart. Pena Lawasa puts it up in the air. Kodago they collects it. Well, I don't know whether they're targeting Kodago. Nine release. <laughs> Four back first. Well taken, and Jordan. Releases it. Waiting for that gap. Cutting it through. A Chang. He goes for it. Seems like a good, clean, powerful run. Vidamal Goda has no chance and he scores. Yeah, the Samoan representative graduated through the New Zealand school system. A product out of North Harbour, which is in the Auckland region. And he's played a number of uh, tournaments for Samoa. Just too much pace. Edamel Gorda tried to stay with him, but once he got a clean pair of heels and got into fourth gear, it was shut the gate. He was gone. That occasion, Edamel Gorda playing the role of a wife, staying close to the husband. A Chang. Brilliant pace. No stopping him. Seven points guaranteed. Well, good reply by the Northwestern Blacks. 14 sevens. Good, nice kick. Not taken. Uh, that's a foolish move too. He played the play up. He didn't even really go for the ball at all, did uh, Jordan Tupo, the Australian. And so the penalty here. Marta could desire the ball. Have a look at this. There's Tupo there. Look, he's not even looking where the ball is. He can't touch a player when he's in the air. He's very lucky to still be on the field. Well, as we speak, Eastern Eagles breaking through. Good support play there. Idamal comes in. 
Penalty advances. And touch the summer delicate. Opting to go right and decide to go inside to the traffic. Brought down by Muirhead. Adam Alvarez with a support play. And is he through? He's through. No, he's got held up. Well, support arrives in the form of Utango, but knocks it back. Referee says play on. Well, Ochong. Advantage, Seems like Bium Jasinger. Can he go? No, he's been brought out. Well, it's not going to be Well, I guess that's the half time. 14 7 is the score. Well, Northwestern Blacks, they have to do, do a lot of thinking and planning, strategizing. They had a good set of players. Big names in the local rugby as well, you can see. Bium Jasinger, Kubu the Kodagoda. And also Momba Dabzal along with Kavinda Perra, Falil Mushin. These guys are known for sevens. And there is the Eagles uh, coach, Halet Pauli, former Tongan international at Rugby World Cup 15 aside, also for sevens. And he'll be disappointed because they should have converted a couple of other opportunities. Two on one. The key rule is to draw and pass. But it just goes to show that when you start playing in your eighth game of the tournament, Obviously the mind, the body is fatigued and you're not as accurate as you were yesterday. And just little decisions like that, they're costly. Well, for the first try, it was actually a gift by Kota Guda. And it was a clean sweep. But the second one was unstoppable. Emosi Wutango just threw through that defense. And Chong coming back and scoring the try for Northwestern Blacks. So the halftime score stands at 14-7. Well, really, this is the push you've been talking about. And that is Harley Tapoli. Wears his heart on his sleeve as well. I spoke with him last night. In fact, I've spoken to him the last couple of days and he's just saying that they just want to put some systems in place to give the Sri Lankan players some belief. Well, Northwestern Blacks with the restart. We had putting the ball up and high. The receiving end is Viliami Mata collects it cleanly. Well held back. Knees to ground, knees to ground. Knees to ground. Well, that's Lahiru Gurusinga. And sends it out. Wide out. And this time it's Rupina Lavasa. Well, decided to go on his own. Hands off. Well, he's got competition, he's got defense, and also he's got support as well. And seems like Idam Alvaro is just arriving in there. Well, it's Rohan Tiagaraja. He's White been brought down. Place. Good bit of play. Nice work. Lahiru Gurusinghe going for that try and he scores. We hit a couple of vessels. I think the try has been given. Yes. There you go. Lahiru Gurusinghe. was nice work there. And uh, Emosi Botango picking that up and sending it to his right. And there he found Lahiru Gurusinga. All what Lahiru Gurusinga had to do is just rush down and just die for that line. Yeah, well he had the pace, he had quite a bit to do actually. There was one defender coming across. So not as easy as just running and putting the ball down. Used his pace wisely. Did uh, Gurusinga. And that's the type of result that uh, I'm sure the Eastern Eagles coach will put a smile on his face. Total team try that one. successful conversion 19-7 well, I like that jerseys Billy with a flower pink color flower unusual but you can say it's unique yeah, I'm not too sure about men wearing pink though just quietly <laughs> that's a bit mean you know <laughs> but they look good in pink yeah well, there you go. He is looking good in pink. Emosi will tango. But, well, Rufina Levasa puts the ball up in the air. Oh, collected by Williami Mata. 11 whites release. We heard the no referee, 11, 11 whites release. Oh, ball lost there no and took by. He's talking about no separation, saying that you've got to release the player from the tackle. That clearly didn't happen. There's Futango with ball in hand. Well, Futango goes for his second try. He's a man, powerful man. I think everybody got single engine. He's got double engine. 
Well, he's been running like this is his first game for the day. You saw him earlier. Look at that powerful pace. Uh, well, once he broke through, look at the leg drive, the big pumping thighs. Uh, he's certainly put on a bit of weight since he was playing for Fiji, so you might talk about the motor. It used to be a V4, now it's about a V8. Well, I don't think four days of Sri Lankan food can contribute to that weight. They are with the referee. Still trying given. His Eagles. The Jack cruising through. Well, they are getting their act together, but. Well, they've only got 30 seconds for the conversion, and so they've wasted time now. Giving their players back at halfway a good old rest as uh, Lavasa strolls. More like the Samoan Meander. That's like when you go backwards. He's in no hurry at all, Lavasa. Well, can referee make a call on that? There you go, the referee just says you've got five seconds. Unsuccessful attempt, so this goes stays. Smiles all over, yes. We didn't see these smiles in the morning. But they're smiling because they're winning now. Obviously, we're training hard, putting every effort. We'll restart. Collected by A Chong and sends it out. And this time it's Pube Jasinger trying to find a gap and he kicks. It's just simply kick and chase this time. Well, not a good chase. Fali Mushin could hold on to it. Referee's playing advantage. Liaudi Mata. Mata sends it Pina Lavasa and he does the same. Well, good bounce collected by Rohan Tiagaraja. Can he go all the way? He cuts back in and brought down. Please tackle. Well, sends it out quickly. Lavasa this time. Sends it out wide to Mata. Mata! He found that gap and you can't stop him. But he's been brought down. Still no scoring. Holding on to that ball, holding on to that position. Well, Jordan Tuford. Ball lost this time. Not clean play there, but referee says it's off tight. Luckily, they got the ball back. Yeah, quality tackle as well from one of the Northwestern Black players to pull down Mato. I thought it was a certain try as well. And they butchered it there from the restart. 24 7 in the scope. In the middle of the second half, the Eagles leading this is the playoff place. The ninth and tenth places. Who wins? We're finishing in the ninth position. Five, set. Pure Jasinger puts the ball in, waiting for it. Collects it. Uri head sends it out wide. Acha. Well, seems like a good run, but not strong enough. Coming the Ferrara sends the ball back in. Both Western Black still in trouble. Rohan Degaraja goes for that kill. Brings him down. Rear head stuck there. Release. Still waiting for that ball to come out. Yes, the ball comes out. Trying to make a run. Fume Jasinger. Man here. And tackle. He's tackled. Well, that ball needed to go wide because they had done all the work of drawing in the defenders and then he just got white line fever. 80 out. A Chong now on the attack. A Chong releases the ball. Falil sends it out to Jasinger. Well, he's looking for that gap and he found it. Well, not quite nice. rightly. Brought down. Trying to hold on to that. Carlin Matthew. That's the Sri Lankan sailor celebrating. You obviously get your moves. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Need to learn some of those Sri Lankan moves as well. <laughs> well 24 Five. 7 Eastern Eagles leading. Set. Carlton Super Sevens 2014 international leg. <laughs> Much better performance from the Eastern Eagles as well. Sets high standards, does Harley Tapoli, and they were disappointed when they came into this match, or in fact, when they came into the tournament after a draw and a couple of losses yesterday. Five. 
point. Ninth won't be the position they were wanting, but nonetheless, it's better than finishing 10. Point show, Pugh touching with the ball in. No, loses it. But this time with the East Eagles. Well, seems like. Ball this time, William Imata blocked and brought down. Ball is still with the Eagles. Sends it out, Ida Malgoda. Shoves it in. Tulaj Pereira is on the field. Good to see him here. Youngster did so well yesterday. Had a good run. But that's the final whistle. 24-7. Eastern Eagle finishing in the ninth position. And Northwestern Blacks in the 10th place. Well, let's go out and see what's the story so far. Well, cute start there. Williami Mata stealing that from Kodagoda and scoring. And Butango and that powerful run. Muruhead couldn't stop him. And Achang giving that quick reply. But once again, well, these guys, you can't, you can't be stopped. You can see that. Butango and he scores. Well, East Eagles 24. Northwestern Blacks 7, final score of that game. As you can see, the popper dance. The popper band is going on and the dancers also joining them. Go the next match that's for the seventh and eighth places. Sabrakamu Stallions versus Jaffna Challenges. Joining me on commentary is Laga. What do you think the outcome will be, Laga? Yeah, after uh, you know, uh, oh, it's hard for, for these two uh, for these two teams. It's uh, uh, the end of uh, day two. Stallions a bit disappointing uh, right from the outset, right from yesterday, but um, good experience for some of those uh, some of those young players in that side. And of course, um, the Samoan international uh, being their foreigners uh, haven't really uh, stepped up to the mark and uh, has resulted to, to them uh, losing all their matches. But uh, they want to be finishing uh, on, a, on a good note. So when they move on to Colombo, they have, uh, they have something to, um, to refresh on. There you go. The match with the like, kicked off Japanese challenges. Good take from the stallion. Counter up from the Jaffna Challengers and Heshan Gunratna popping off to Salia Kumara. Does he have the pace to go off in the corner? Inches close, he's been pushed out from Alatasi. Brilliant from the Heshan Gunratna running on top. And then from there on, Salia Kumara was pushed out in the end. Yeah, just a bit of hesitation there from uh, Salia Kumara. He saw uh, Alatasi in front of him. Just a uh, slight hes hesitation there and uh, got pushed out in the corner. Come out, here comes Shashan Mohamed, the youngster. Once again, cutting through in. Quick pass to Dinesh Kumara. Long pass now. Dilip Selvam calling for it. Selvam getting in the defender round. Stallion on the outside now. Taken down. He lost the ball in the meantime, but the tackle is not rolling away, so it will be an opportunity for the Stallions. Comes out wide. Shashan Mohamed gives it to Tululu. Tululu puts the chip kick in, chasing. He has the pace. Beautiful work from the cover defense, but that's not enough. It's been pushed out to the deadline, so it'll be a five meter scrum opportunity here for the Stallions. Yeah, he had to take a Campbell there, Tululu. Tululu, and just chipped the ball. Um, Jeff, the challenges were up to the task and just managed to kick it out. Uh, so scrum. Um, Stalin's balls, huh? Guys, Stalin's balls, so interesting to see how good this work. Crouch! Bind! All lined up onto their left. Set! The player behind. Now comes the long pass. Onto Tululu. Tululu who steps, fends off, and under the post he goes. Brilliant! Just too big, just too fast um, in, in that occasion. Yeah. 
for the defender, Salia, uh, to step back inside and defend. Out goes the left hand, and then underneath the post he goes. Interesting what the stadiums are doing. Um, having two uh, big guys on the edge, on, on the edge of the field. Uh, they're having Talang on the other side and uh, Tulolo on the other side. They're trying to play those guys on the side and bring it back in the middle. Yeah, it's interesting and it's nice to see them. It looked like they were nowhere. The Stalins uh, in the first day and also uh, in the morning. I spoke to a couple of players, they were disappointed about the results they've got. Yeah, can't do much, can't do uh, nothing much now. All, gotta, all, all they got to do is uh, make sure they win this one and go off, um, go off with, with, with a win. Exactly, and uh, Alatasi to restart proceedings. There you go, five, five, one split. So it'll be going to the left hand side. In fact, it goes down straight. Uh, Talaga in the middle, the stallions. Now here comes uh, Tabaga. For the Jaffna challenges, looking for support. Now pops it off out to Heshan Gunratna on the outside. Salia Kumara in support. Martin was there, coming in a good supporting line, but uh, didn't find him. Salia Hanapan got with the ball now. Batiratu putting the kick in, chasing. Look at the speed. Can he collect it properly? Shashan giving it up and he scores. Good comeback from the Jaffna challengers. And what pace! Yeah, well, you. Well, there's some things in rugby you can't you can't teach, and that was one of them. Uh, the brilliant stuff. Just chipped it back, and he. Uh, Alatasi tried to get on his way there, but he was very determined. And look at look at that. Uh, the control the ball on your right foot uh, on half uh, speed. You know, it's something that's um, it's very special and very well very well controlled there. In. But you know, just ran straight into the crowd. They could control his speed. They're lucky the dancers are just a little bit away. The proper dancers. That's Tawaga. Johnny Tawaga will uh, take the conversion. Just off the left post. Nicely curving through. It goes in. So it'll be 7 all in the first half for the 7th place match. Uh, Tawaga puts in a flat kick this time. It's taken by Talaga on the other side for the Stallions. Look at the power. Has he has support? Can he run around? Pushing and shoving. Need support. Shashan Mohamed comes in the support line and he scores. Look at this is what I was talking of using the big man and the pace of Shashan Mohamed. I think it's a bit too late, but uh, coming come the Colombo leg, they will do a lot. Yeah, that was a bit of a brilliant there from Talanga. I mean, he's a, he's a big boy, just fending off Ravanga. Just put, putting him off and just trying to keep him away from the ball and just a pop pass back inside. This young lad, uh, Shoshan Mohamed, has been a try scoring machine for Trinity and they are on for upcountry lands. And the Carlton Servants franchises he played for the past couple of years. In the local segment, he was a star. He scores his try. And the internationals, Alutasi, just off the right post, trying to curve it in, but could. Yeah, it doesn't convert. That's very vital, very crucial as well. Yeah, it's, it's important for, um, I guess, for for franchises like the Stalins. I mean, some of these, um, some of these foreigners, some of these guys, could just fit their first year into the tournament. Uh, as you can see, there's some of the locals rallying around them. So, um, they were just waiting for them to fire, really. But um, they, they still got the, the, the Colombo Lake. And, be nice for them to win this one, but on the other side, Jebnas uh, won't give in too easy. Correctly said, and uh, Adetasi will take the restart for the Stallions. Nice high kick, waiting for Talaga to come in support. He comes in, Sashan Mohamed, the try scorer once again. Now gives it to Richie Dharmapala. Long pass once again to Adetasi. On the outside is Tululo, Tululo. He tries to steps, puts the foot in. Talaga on the other hand calling and it says a knock forward the referee. So it'll be Jaffna challenges ball. Just one of those errors, you know, it's just minor errors, just taking his eyes off the ball. He got too excited there, uh, uh, Big Talanga. Just took his eyes off the ball and that was a good uh, a good ball too back on the inside. It bounced just in front of him. But as you see, uh, Mr. Simkin there, uh, 
popular figure in Sir. Sri Lanka and I think uh, around Asia as well. Yes, Tawaga uh, puts it in. Penalty for the challenges. Quickly taken. And he steps off. Is uh, Johnny Tawaga puts the chip kick in. The race is on. It'll be half time. And the Sabraka Mustalians lead 12 points to 7 at half. Yeah, just a bit selective from Ravangar. He, had, um, he appeared in the first one. He was in, he was in the open and, uh, and he had the sweeper to beat and he um, chose the kick. Just went dead. So it's been a fantastic day so far. Fantastic two days. The Carlton Servants, the first leg. We are coming to an end. It's the knockout stages. Here we are final round matches the ground is packed on a Saturday evening wonderful Saturday evening nice breeze across and sunshine Lagar you might be enjoying this very much uh, uh, the south of uh, this lovely island of Shilan of course uh, no sketches of rain today but uh, the stay I mean gods of the heavens have been good to us uh, no rain at all and it's getting a bit cooler too as we have a look at uh, that's the trainer for uh, for the Sharks getting ready for the finals. Uh, Etu Tusitala, another Samoan, proud Samoan, um, uh, being part of this, uh, of course, uh, amazing event uh, in Sri Lanka. Super Carlton Sevens 2014 down the Kogel. It'll be interesting to see how the Chapman Challengers uh, respond in the second half as they're down by five. And it's always harder than you if you're trying to. Trying to, you know, if the game gets away from you in the game of sevens, you only got seven minutes, and when you're playing um, catch up um, uh, rugby from then on, you know, it's always going to be tough. It is, it's important to score first for the challengers. <laughs> you know already that I'm not going to allow anything. The Stallions playing the same team. Good to see the referee having a bit of a laugh with Alatasi. Okay, tough So the restart to kick. <laughs> he waits for a while. Then puts in a high kick, thundering kick. Good take from the challenges. Now Ashita Ratnaiko with the ball. Roll yellow! He's brought him down. Roll away. Penalty for the challenges. Sali Kumar taking it quickly. Gives it inside to Sali Pangoda. Looking for support. Kumara comes in once again in support. Now Heshan Gunaratna. Inside pass to Gunaratna. Here he comes. He's been Caught just holding on. And support they arrives are. in the form of Glenn Rose. Quick ball out. And uh, he scores on the outside. Yeah, well done there to um, to the Jeff challengers coming back into it, and the big Fijian just powered his way through. Bati Ratu just powered his way through. So he was covered in defence, but um, too big, too strong. That was a wonderful try from Bati Ratu. It was a bit. Uh, go back to that play. Um, uh, Tulolo had uh, had to make that tackle in the middle. Um, he was a bit naughty there. He just, Held on to the jersey of one of the one of the Japanese challenges. He took a, a quick tap. The referee uh, played an advantage, and the Japanese challenges will surely make the most of it. Oh, oh that's not so good. The referee has blown his whistle. The Japanese challenges kicker has taken too long for the conversion. He actually gets 20 seconds uh, for the conversions, and he actually. Um, I think it was uh, Jova Arona was taking a bit too long. I think he was having a pre in between, so the referees gave away his rights. So there you go to Waga. The restart proceedings puts in the high kick. Dinesh Kumara running behind. Good tap from Glenn Rose. It's knocked forward, so it'll come, for, come back for a scrum. Unfortunately, going, on, going in front of the hand of Glenn Rose. He yeah, actually thought he um, actually thought he did well there. He got up in the air and tapped it back, but um, referee says went forward. And we're tired. We're tired. Twelve off. Hold the push, guys, and hold the hook. Hold the push. Hold the hook. Crouch. Richie Damopala to Five. put in uh, 
for Set. the Stallions. Then he comes out to uh, to pull. Look at him coming in. Now the ball comes to Richie Damapalo once again. He's looking for space. Dinesh Kumar in support. Trying to Advantage intercept. Purple. Not gone. Advantage over. And Martin with the ball gives it to Tovaga on the outside to score. Rather it's Darshana Etipola for the Jaffna Challengers who has come in as replacement has scored beautiful. Yeah, they just get the pressure on as we uh, as we saw the, the try score. I think Jeff and the challenge just kept the pressure on, but there was a silly play by the stadium here. They're just throwing the pass. You saw Latassi just throwing the pass and Talanga just trying to tap it back and uh, ended up uh, ended up straight to, to one of the Jeff and the challenge's hands uh, in the middle one. Easy as you like, you just gave the pass out and it was open space. And this time Ravanga goes for a quick one, a quick conversion and not 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 a pretty one. Dilip Selvam, the skipper of Australians, will be very disappointed. He's a strong competitor. He played under you, Raga. You know about him. Yeah, very strong player. Uh, uh, in 15 aside, 7 aside, he's still got uh, a bit more to learn. It's good. It's always good for these guys to get their opportunities uh, in a big stage. As the kick goes just on 10. Martin, good take. Very good take Release. from Grand Rolls. Support arrives. Asita Ratnayaka to Heshan Gunratna. Salia Kumar on the outside. Now Tabaka with the ball. Looking for support. Runs behind. Now he breaks through. In support is Heshan Gunratna. He's been held on by Shashan Mohamed. Good supporting tackle. Now the ball comes out to Tabaka once again. As men on the outside. He gives it to Martin who scores. On the right corner for the challenges, they're running away with the game and have come strong in the second half, Laga. Yeah, they have. For the Stalins, uh, as we look at Ravanka, just throwing it out wide to Martin as he had uh, no one in front of him. And Dinesh Kumara was just the, clo the closest uh, Stalins in here. But uh, it was only 17 yes. 12. <laughs> as we look at the try score, it was 17 12 to the to the Chaffin challenges. Uh, the Stalins had a chance. Thank um, you. To, to keep the pressure yeah. on, but Ravanga managed to work their way out of their 20, of their, their, their half, and resorted in the try. So, credit to them, they, they never gave up. Yeah, they didn't, as the conversion is coming through. Nicely curved as he has the legs. How much? His body, long, uh, body language now uh, for the Stalin is not so good. Um, with a little to go on this 7th um, and 8th uh, position game. Challenges will restart now. Puts in the high kick to Po under. Cuts out long pass to Shashan Mohamed. Shashan gives it outside to Favuta Otto on the outside. He replaces the ball. Nicely done. Now the ball comes out again to Tishan Vikramasinghe. Tries to step, gives it to Tupo, but he says it's a forward pass. Interesting to have a look at that one again. Uh, for me, that was uh, a line pull, but the referee was on the spot. Let's have a look at it. Yeah. Gosh, I thought that was a bit harsh. It was actually on the other side of the play. Man with the whistle. Should have been a definite try there for the uh, Stallions. Crouch! Find! Set! So the challengers have the opportunity to hit back once again at the Stallions defense. Salia Kumara changing directions, giving it to Martin. He hits it up. He's been brought down now. The ball comes off Tilna Vijay Singh. A long pass to Glenn Rolls. He steps. Glenn steps. Has Salia on the outside. And gives it to Martin. And he scores. Time off. The referee will have a chat. He's happy with it. Assistant referee confirms and he's try. Wasn't sure on the offside. Yeah, brilliant right. play by the by the Jeff and the challenges. He saw the space outside and just chipped it to Martin. Referee as well uh, for playing advantage as we look at um, Go 
the dancing girls. The conversion not going through. That will be the final whistle. So the Jaffna challengers win. Confirmation there are 27 points to 12. The challengers win. There you go, the highlights coming up and the Jaffna challenges there as Bumba Tiratu putting the hard steps in. Shashan Mohamed coming back. He scores Bumba Tiratu once again. Good hard try from him. And on the outside goes uh, Martin. That's his second try. And uh, that was Jaffna challenges finishing at seventh. Joining me on commentary is uh, Clifford for the game between North Central Typhoons and Northern Gladiators playing for the fifth place. Well, fifth and sixth place, North Central Typhoons will be taking on Gladiators. Well, we've been seeing this lady from this morning. Yes, that's the first lady. An avid fan of rugby. Watching her son playing for Central Kings. And yesterday we saw her wearing a Western Warriors top and that's Yoshita Rajapaksa captaining Western Warriors. So there go both teams run out for the fifth and sixth places. Now the gladiators David Halifunua there on your screen. Famous center plate for Candy Sports Club, Tonga, fullback. Well, Fazil Marija, Sri Lankan Sevens captain. Gold. And also, you can see Muta Tantri, two strong lads. Mikhail Palau puts the kick in. Taken in by, uh, by the North Central Typhoons on the outside. Breaks the tackle. That's a good run uh, from uh, Ruan Nell. Knocks the ball in forward. The opportunity gone there for the Northern Gladiator, no, North Central Typhoons early on, uh, Clifford. Yep, good start for them. But Gladiators, well, I don't think they're going to go down easy. North Central Typhoons, well, they have fighting qualities too. So it's not going to be easy between these two teams. Well, they're going to be fighting out hard. Croak. Bye. Set. Well, Sean, this is Gladiators taking on Typhoons. What do you say on this? It's a big Fourteen game, mate. Either way you look at it, it's a tough story. And they've got to try and get things sorted out here because it really is. The points are important. And you can hear the tone in my voice. Have a look at this big man running strong. Beautiful pass. This is what you want really up front to see how much better they've got, uh, Cliffs. Because uh, it really is Rock. an unforgiving task to try and make sure they get points early and then set up clean. Well, Pradeep Kline gave us with that run. And this time it seems like Fazil Marija breaking through. And he's got support from Mithun Hapugoda. Hapugoda scores the first try. 5 0 Gladiators. Nice one, Hapugoda. Really good to see. And this is what the magic of Hapugoda brings to the game. He is perhaps one of the fittest Sri Lankan players available. Have a look at this. Fazil on the inside. Hapugoda. And he's too quick for anybody, really. Beautiful. That's that little shimmy he has just to add salt into injury. And there he is scoring a very good try. This is the best that they can offer. They need to fight for this. It's not going to be easy uh, because uh, these guys will come back at them. But in the meantime, nice sight. Beautiful sight to see. Look at the sweat rolling off that bar brow. It's all about hard work now and who can survive. Well, definitely. It's been pure hard work the last two days. And still it's not over. Well, the conversion kicking with the wind and it goes in and added two points for Lanua. 7-0 Gladiator Sean. Good start for them, isn't it? Very important that you get that two points, Cliff, so you actually put the pressure on the side. Five means you can get to one try and you're in front. Seven means you've got to score twice to get in front. So it, it really does come down to little things and little things matter so much. Uh, good afternoon or good evening, Sri Lanka. If you're watching, there's a, the face of a very familiar story, Pradeep Laya Lianagay. And look at how strong that wind is. Took it straight back. 
and uh, gives the advantage back to the uh, the Typhoons and let's see what they can do they haven't really had ball or position to do anything well it seems like a decent chance now for them and Shana Kumara trying to find a gap Dinusha Arifala trying to drill through that defense no, no chance Shana Kumara clears it up well clearly taken now this time he breaks out and along with the support of Stephen Hunt Stephen Hunt this time Hunt's well he's free is he through well, support drives in Asita Vijay Singh just behind him, but held back Good and run. brought down. <laughs> Gladiators, good defensive play there. But quickly taken this time, Hiranta Pereira and sends the pass out and looking for a support. That's Dinush Arifala. And Shana Kumara, is it through? No, it's a back pass, but no. Oh, <laughs> that was meant to look so easy. Mark Richards goes this time. Yeah, okay. Well, Stephen Hunt, in fact, scores the first drive for North Central Typhoons. That was a bit of a teamwork. Didn't know Shari Apollo was involved. Mark Richards was involved. Stephen Hunt was involved. Andrew Nell. Well, there have, you go. Have a look at the replay. That's okay. it. One, two on the outside. Nell and Hunt, is it? There you go. Over the top basketball pass. Nobody there. Here you go. The tackler comes in. He gets clattered. He doesn't like it. Puts his hand up. But that's all part of the game. It's all gone past now. And uh, the Typhoons get a well-deserved try. It is about petrol. I'll say this about a hundred times between now and the finish. And you've got uh, some of the best commentators sitting down with you to talk this game for you. Beautiful sight here in Kogala for the conclusion of uh, day two of the first leg of the Carlin Super Sevens 2014. Everybody's here. The infectious puppery sound, the color, the sun, the rugby, the skill, the talent and the impact those tackles are big ones pretty sure it's a carnival atmosphere you can see these guys enjoying it well not only us everybody's enjoying hope you're enjoying this from home as well well as we speak mark which just puts the ball up in the air well, oh. collected by no good run powerful run that's easy as it looks but it's not that easy no chance for Fazil marija and snell scores the second try back to back tries that's going to hit the Northern Gladiators hard. Big man now, look at this, takes it clean and then puts on the pace, change of gear so quick. Nobody really anticipated that and nobody up front in really could, could front up to him uh, for a tackle. He just ran clean and uh, Ruhan Nell from South Africa all the way down in Sri Lanka. Fabulous. This is what you want. Your best players turning on the charm at the right time. It is hard, it is relentless, it is unforgiving, but it's the fit ones that stand up and make it happen. A great chance for Mark Richards to extend that lead. Seems like a good kick. No, just shapes the force and goes across it. Well, I tell you, mate, there's a bit of shock on the Gladiators' side because they were the side expected to do all the work and score all the points. And instead, it's the Typhoons who have come out a little bit more committed and decided they're going to put some points and get uh, the ranking sorted out. So it happens. Wonderful sight. Sri Lankan Airlines, of course. We're going to say thank you to the sponsors in a bit. Well, Mark Richards once again. Seems like a kick a little bit deep inside. Nicely collected. Marija this time trying to find that gap. Well, sends it out. <laughs> Mithun Hapugara running across the field. Wrong! The ball secured by Marija. Distributed by Pradeep Lienagay. Good work. Your follow well Brought down by Nell. Trying to run through that little space on his First left. Hold it. Well, quickly taken. Nell this time. Can he score his second try? Well, good support play there. Stephen Hunt comes in from nowhere and he scores. I'll tell you this much, there's a lot of understanding between these South African players, uh, Cliffs. And that's what you can see because they know perfect balance passing. The offload is so good. Nobody in front of him just hits the gap with absolute efficiency. Nice to see. And Hunt gets his, uh, another try for his side. This is a bit of a runaway now and this is something we didn't expect. We thought the Gladiators would be the side. And Stephen Hunt changes all that. The impression is... Uh, that these typhoons have been holding something back. Well, well definitely. No sense of typhoons. Well, that's the half-time whistle. 
A good bit, like you said, Sean. Nice combination between the South Africans. Well, as we speak, the half-time score stands as 17-7 in favour of North Central Typhoon. Well, it's a fact that uh, you've seen uh, the, the Typhoons get better and better and better. As we go on, they're gelling better as a team. Their understanding has come. They're working with the Sri Lankan players. has also worked out. So now it's all coordinated. Before, it was a little disjointed. And they were tend to overwork on one side. There's uh, some of um, the squad of the Sri Lanka women's rugby sevens. All dressed in blue for the occasion, mate. Uh, that's your team, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. And, uh, they're here to actually observe and enjoy some of the best rugby they've seen. And it's in Sri Lanka, so what better an opportunity. So very pleased that they are able to get here. They got on the bus and got here for just after the, uh, the lunchtime break. Well, Sean, last year we had the uh, women's teams playing here. But then again, this time, the organizers have opted to go for the schools. Well, yes, we wanted to get the schools involved. And unfortunately for the uh, Sri Lanka women's, uh, we had the club sevens about a month ago. And they're touring at the end of this month with the Asian series. So there's uh, very little time in sort of prep time. You don't want them to be uh, running off on exhibition games. You want them to be uh, in the huddle, in camp, which is what they're in now, and just getting prepared. So here's that shot of, uh, of Hunt. He's had a very good run so far in this game. He's really up the level. And that's what you want. You want your big names stepping it up at the right time. And this is the right time because they've got to get maximum points in their position and take those points down to Colombo. So the rankings are important, Cliffs. Here's the restart coming up. Well, rankings are important, Sean. Well, Richards with the ball. Nice and high one once again. Nels goes for it and he collects it. And good support play there by Asitagurus Vijay Singer. Well, brought down by Joshua Moon. Well, Dinusha Ari, Dinu Ari Fala there. Sending it out, Shanaka Kumara. Richards trying to go in. No play! Well, slightly too high, represents play on. Loose ball, Richards to Shanaka. Shanaka to Ari Fala this time, Nell again. Cuts back in. Well, support is there for Shanaka. Well, he's been brought down. He has to raise the ball. Well, seems like a loose ball, but still picked up by Stephen Hunt. Well, turnover ball. Gladiators with the ball. Let's see what they can make out of this move. Well, the big man. Oh, loses his footing. Grimalua. Well, sends it out. Seems like a little bit wide. Danushka Ranjan. First was forward. A bit unsettled. Well, this is it. I mean, you don't really want to make those horrible passes. Ali Fanua there. Just uh, fully stretched, really. Could have uh, just put the boot to the ball. That was a terrible pass from Danushka Ranjan. Just a floater, really. Could have been anywhere and they could have picked it up. So, so far, the best account of this game has been from the Typhoons. The Gladiators looking very tired and very bedraggled, if you can use that word in this context. Well, the fresh legs coming in. Mosaisi Mawalu. Well, he's been instrumental. 17 7. Here we go. More pressure really for the Typhoons looking good now and if the Gladiators fail to score in the next minute I think it's going to be tough for these uh, Gladiators to come back so let's see Five. how they go with the scrum. Set. Well, scrum in favour of North Central Typhoons, not a clean one, Richards had to secure the ball, if not it's going to go well, Let not clean and secure but still has the ball, Shana Kumara with the ball, tries to go in, no chance for him, brought down. Richards, the well, ball lost this time, it's with Mosesi Mobalu who just walked in and he grabs the ball. Good work, backhand pass. Palai Fanua, brought down, Wrong. support. Danushka Ranjan, clears the ball off, Fazil Marija with the ball. He's looking for a gap, no chance for him. Wiri Malua, well he's been brought back in. Brought down, good defensive play, North Central Typhoons, Marija distributes it. Well, the long pass, Shana Kumar receives it. And Halai Fanua and sends it to Mosesi Mawalu. He is through. Good bit of work, good continuity there. Nicely pressed down to the right flank and from there, dug it up and sent it to the left flank and this go. Nice one. Well, yes, finally the Gladiators get a little bit of uh, confidence back and then just work the ball quite cleanly. Nothing spectacular, just good hands. Recycling from left to right, and then Mualu just getting underneath the post and being grateful with it. He had a little bit of petrol to run the distance, 
I'm not sure if somebody challenged him had he got uh, the legs to go all the way. Mosesi Mawala, nice try. He's been uh, quite an architect, uh, Cliff, in terms of try scoring. So fresh legs on the park for the Gladiators. They'll look to try and they'll hope to try and come back on this one. Well, very true. Ingobo is back on the park. Well, Richards collects it, sends it to Joshua Moon. Well, he's the man who came in. Ingobo brought down. Not a clean one, but Hiran Tafera also in the park. He's been having a good, uh, good tournament so far. Not easy to survive oh, with Tambu. Tambu is a strong man. There you go, he goes in. Marija is there to clear that. And he clears it up and sends it to Mithun Hapugoda. Hapugoda tries to go in. No chance for him. Well, Beautiful. picked up by Mosesi Mawalu. Mawalu steps in, brought down. Support play there. Well, this time it seems like Viri Malawa. No chance again. Good defensive play by North Central Typhoons. Well, seems like Viri Malawa is going to score. Yes, he scores. No chance of stopping him by Mark Richards. Good challenge there by Mark Richards, but unfortunate. Viri Malua cleanly threw in. Well, nicely done by the Gladiators. And I think the Stallions there made a, a, a cardinal error. There was one of the smaller lads trying to take on one of the bigger boys and got clattered and the ball was ripped out of his hands. You don't need to do that, especially when you're a little bit tired. Cliffs, you want to try and swing that ball, get the big boys engaging themselves. You don't want to go in and get smacked. And that's what happened. Ball was taken away, turnover then, and then the Gladiators turn around and score. So uh, it all comes down to the simple things. Do the simple things really well. We talk about that. Very Malua, there you go. He'll be happy. The Gladiators with the restart. Good stuff. Beautiful day, you have to say that. And for all of you watching around Sri Lanka, thank you for the company because it really has been an absolute pleasure talking this game. The Carlton Super 7s 2014. Restart collected by Sandili Ingobu. Well, he's been brought down. Richards well picked up, and this time it seems like Viri Malua is going to go for his second try. Once again, Richard trying his level best, can't stop him. Viri Malua scores his second try. Gladiators on a rampage. The absolute value of fresh legs on the park. That's what you always say when you come on, use up the gas, run it off, lads. And that's what Billy Malua has done. Beautiful to see. Big man running strong, running for the post, running for the line. That's an awesome sight, mate. It's an awesome sight. Fantastically awesome, Sean. I agree with you. Well, what you did some years back, these lads are doing right now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even want to think about that, mate. Had I been the last line of defense facing up to Billy Malua, I'd have just smiled and hit him as hard as I can. Close the eyes and run at them. That's what I used to say. <laughs> Try and get the target sorted out. But it's still the same thing, mate. It's pressure, pressure, pressure. And these lads, wonderful to see at this stage of the day, this stage of the tournament, still getting it up and running as fast as they can, giving maximum petrol and big hearts, giving it all from the tank for their for their franchise. Good stuff. Well, Central Typhoon's been held back now. 26-17 is the score. Gladiators leading. Ngoba collects it cleanly, but sends it to Hiranta Ferreira. Who finds Shanaka Kumara? Well, some local hand switching, and it goes into Joshua Moon this time. Moon trying to find his gap, no way, but brought down. Well, in fact, held up and brought down. 14 tackled without the ball, late. Well, you can hear that. You hear that uh, clearly. 14 yes. tackling without the ball, Sean. That's right. Referee said that 14 had engaged the player without the ball, so that's why the penalty. There's a chance. Powerful run by Joshua Moon, but the goal, ball goes out. Well, I guess the hula has gone. Well, that's the final whistle. 26-17, Northern Gladiators coming back into this game very strongly. Typhoons had a good start, but no chance for them. Gladiators framing that fifth place. What a game. Well, this is how it all unfolded. Well, started off with Gladiators, but then again, good back to back tries by the North Central Typhoons. Nice work by Nell, collecting from that kickoff and just going for that. Once again, then, you saw Richards Hunt contributing. 
but this man who came in and he changed the game that is Musesi Mawalu and this lad well we saw his powerful run and nobody could stop him very Malua both occasions got caught to well, Richards but Richards was like you know, very unfortunate for him couldn't stop him and very Malua was the clean And the next match is third v fourth. That's what's up for grabs. Valuable points to take through to Colombo next week. And the Central Kings taking on the Uva Vipers. Both of these two teams lost earlier today. The Central Kings losing to the Sharks 28-14. And the Uva Vipers losing comprehensively to the Western Warriors by 36 points to nil. <laughs> so big moment for these teams. Tim Mickelson, you can see him there, Gillies Kaka, also George Tilsley, the three foreigners for the Uva Vipers, and the Fijians will be representing the Central Kings, Naikasu. Yeah, just talking yeah. to uh, DJ uh, Willie in the morning, um, happened to be in the same place as, uh, as he's in, uh, has it been well, but he's been pushing himself, so. he was interviewed earlier on by, by Sean as well, um, that's good to... Gilly Kaka now gets us underway and so third place up for grabs in this the wonderful 2014 Carlton Super 7s and Gilly Kaka has shown all the experience that he has and just pushing play deep inside the 22 of the Central Kings. Mikkelsen is there, Patirana, Viraratne form the line out will they contest here the show looks accurate looks like it's been stripped and it has been so first possession to the Vipers Tilsley one player on the outside two steps two jinx three and now the acceleration Mickelson there in support being held up by Naikasu the ball is released Kaka three on one down the right hand flank Someone needs to go straight and set the ball up on that occasion. Really just spilling the ball forward. So double knock on. Sloppy start from both teams. Yeah, Guyan could have done a bit better there. Just trying to sneak the ball back inside, but um, actually hit one of the Warrior, one of the Central Kings players and just spilled. Got to take your chance though. So Vera. Roach. Vera Nip. Bye. The man there that possibly should have Set. done better, but uh, still in possession. Uh, the Vipers, Kaka, flicks it back. Bohoran, and now they move it wide to Tilsley again, who just buys a bit of time to give Kaka the chance to loop around. Kaka two on one, gets it wide. Here comes Hedith. Hedith stepping on the inside, the big fend. Mickelson is there, and he'll score. <laughs> Clinical finish from the Vipers. Beautiful work from Sundan Hedith, and Tim Mickelson scores the try. Yeah, well worked um, try there by the Vipers. As we look at uh, Santun Herath there, just giving the ball back inside. Beautiful ball, and of course, Milkinson is present as ever. Well, Tim Mickelson, 33 tries in 2014 for the All Black Sevens. He was second to only Samasoni Vidividi from Fiji, who scored 52 tries. But in his illustrious career, 723 points. 143 tries on the HSBC 7s World Series for Tim Mickelson. Conversion is good from Kaka and so a good start for the Vipers. They lead 7 0. Kaka now just a little putting chip wedge. Rajapaksa clears it and now they move it down to the Ramapala. Good leg drive from the Ramapala, but now he's flicked it back. Sasanta gets back and retrieves the ball, gives it to one of the danger players, Mulivoro. Just buying time, Roger Paksa is there. That's a lovely pass out wide. Identifying where the space is, and that's where the gap is as well. And so straight through, needs some support. Two on one, Kaka will shut him down. The defence comes across, and that's good play from the Vipers. He's released it, he's got to his feet and played the ball. More possession. Roger Paksa, that's been knocked back, and here's Mickelson. So good from this position now, the Vipers are breaking out. Not panicking though. Just throwing the ball back there to Tilsley. Tilsley now puts on the accelerator. Tilsley trying to break the first tackle. Brilliantly brought down. Ball is there and scooped up magnificently. 
by Bahuan. Now the flick out the back. Tilsley is there again. Support coming along from Kaka. Kaka now should have too much pace, but he looks wide. Here's the pass out to Viratni. Now they've pushed it out. Patarana, lots of pace out here. Stepping on the inside is Hedith. Well, they're making hard work of this, are the Vipers? Someone just needs to go straight and they'll score. And that person to do it is Mickelson. Just like that, they needed someone to explode from the get-go. Mickelson's done a try number two for him. And the Vipers lead 12-0. Yeah, well, that's the quality of the man, Mickelson. Uh, as, as we look at Kaka, just bringing him back on the inside. We're very patient, as Willie was alluded on uh, earlier on about uh, Milkerson's career in the servant uh, circuit. Certainly, he's a big, massive part of the, the Kiwi setup. Wing in the 15 aside game. Hails from Waikato. Many people in Sri Lanka will know about Waikato. Plays wing in the 15 aside game, and that's why he's so fast. Obviously, in the sevens game, they use him a lot in the forwards. The conversion is good from Kaka, and they lead 14-0. Yeah, well, the Chiefs have won uh, Super 15 uh, twice in a row, uh, Willie, uh, led by uh, Dave Winnie. Certainly have, and so much better start for the Vipers after getting hammered this afternoon by the Warriors. Kaka looking to try and go 10, it has gone 10-2. Flick backwards, says the referee. Vedatni did very well to get up and contest for that ball. Now Radio. it's been challenged Radio. on the ground. Kaka has it. Radio. Tilsley has a player on the outside, Hedith, if he wants to, and he gives it to him. Now, what does Sundan Hedith do? He just buys time, gets it back into the hands of the foreigners. Now, the Kiwis playing a little bit of cat and mouse through Kaka. Way back in the pocket is Tim Mickelson. Mickelson will bring it forward. Kaka on the loop now, looking for some players in action. Moving across is Bohoran. Good patience shown here from the team. The ref says that was forward. That's marginal. Yeah, it was from forward. Um. Vipers um, seems like they have a lot of time now, uh, just throwing the ball around. Uh, Achilles uh, uh, using Milkerson and just looping around there. Yes, it was forward. Um, Chelsea just had to reach forward for that one, and the referee was right on the spot. Runs. Yeah, I don't agree with you. That looked like a line ball to me. I would have said play on if I was the ref <laughs> and the official, but I'm not. That's so why I'm sitting up here. <laughs> and as we see, the Central Kings now in possession. Stepping, big fend off as well coming from the Kings. Well, there is an advantage and they're milking it a little bit here. They're all looking, asking the official if really, is that allowed? You can see the strength too of uh, Vilvada. Big and strong is the Sri Lankan winger. Good crowd in here as well today. Enjoying the quality of rugby. Hard not to in such a beautiful city and such a beautiful place, Sri Lanka. Yes, uh, certainly the crowd has picked up and the, all these um, all these people have looked forward to the finals today. Um, that's a good battle out wide um, in the wings of Vidyada and Herath. Of course, the two, um, two Sri Lankan international. Big match here. Mulivoro, he takes it flat ball and just races away. Should be too quick for Kaka and he scores. Just like that from a set piece. He stood on the blind side of the scrum and it was a beautiful little pop pass and he hit it like a million. He looked like Usain Bolt out of the gates. He was gone. Yeah, yeah, he was very sure what he was doing and that's it. That was a set piece move. A clean, um, a clean ball from, from that scrum. Popped it to the right hand side and there was not much space out uh, in the short side but he took his chance. Well, no space at all, and now he's looking to try and convert his own try. Siren has sounded, and so we're going to the break, just pushing it wide. And so two converted tries to the Uva Vipers against the try to that man there, Imosi Mulivoru, means that the scoreline at the break reads Uva Vipers 14, Central Kings 5. Yeah, I was saying uh, earlier on, Willie, about um, having a chat to the DJ Forbes, uh, his experience of being here for the third time now, uh, and he's actually enjoyed it, but a bit different role uh, as a coach player. Um, trying a few things off the field as well with some of the locals, and that, um, and it, that is helping in, in, in many ways. Yeah. Keep going, keep 
keep going. Seven minutes. <laughs> so the locals enjoying the sunshine and enjoying the quality of rugby that we have seen the Central Kings earlier today. Uh, they beat the Northwestern Blacks 38-7, losing to the Sharks 14-28. Put them in this position, playing for third and fourth. Uber Vipers, good win against the Gladiators earlier, 19-12, and then they were thumped well and truly by the Warriors, 36-0, which forced them into this position. So 14 plays five after half time, and we're underway with the kick from Mulivoru going up and contesting his nice. Naikasu. Lost forward there, and so no real advantage because it was knocked on originally from Patirana. He's really impressed me, young Patirana from uh, Sri Lanka for the Uber Vipers. Yeah, it's one of the one of the upcoming um, players in the in the setup in Sri Lanka. Um, of course, a product from Royal College, a very proud um, a traditional school in Kalamut, the uh, government Rice. school, and he's done well. He's uh, with Havelock's um, uh, sports club at the moment. Mulivoru feeds the scrum, and now they push it wide. That Wate gets it outside on the outside is the Vilvada. Scored a couple of beautiful tries earlier this afternoon. Showed his real pace and class in doing so. Now they've got a full complement out wide. That's where the ball needs to go. Lovely long pass. Just unable to grab it. Reaching out was Naikasu. Had he caught it, he had Mulivoru out to his left and it was try time. Yeah, I think he was looking at the try line before he got the ball. Um, just just that split second, you take your eyes off the ball and that was a bad miss. Yeah, I wonder how much of an effect the firstly the fact this is their eighth game in two days so the impact that that's had but also the little bit of a breeze maybe just getting under the wind and holding it up it's Rose. playing a part but um you want to you want to finish uh, third instead of uh, fourth uh, at this stage Five. of the tournament Seven. kaka now feeds the scrum races out the back end picked up thrown wide to tilsley he in turn gets it wide to header who's been very very good breaking away Swinging arm there, and the referee seen it. No, 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 no. Uh, foolish play from the Central Kings. You really got to have better discipline than that. You've got to tackle with your shoulder. You can't lead with a loose arm like that. Yeah, just a bit of desperation there from the Fijian, just throwing his arm, and the referee was right there. Well, seven plays six now, and he's got to rush to get off the field as well. Now we get it wide. Here comes Veratne, and just bowled out there too. No arms shown in that. Really just a shoulder charge from Mulivori, but he's got the ball. Baku, release, release, Bru! So the Central Kings down to six players, but the magic thing is that they do have possession. Three players required to come in and take down Pitu. And he's held onto the ball just for a little bit too long. Mickelson will tap and go. He does this all the time. Mickelson taps. Mickelson still going into the 25. Mulivoru brings him down. Clean out there is not good enough from Kaka. And so he's now earned a penalty for his team. Slowing things down here. Sasanta running one way and then looking on the inside. Bringing in Naikasu. Naikasu has players out here. Opts to go back towards where the heavy traffic is. Big wild pass there from Radwate. And now Sasantha gets into contact, but he's lost the ball forward. Central Kings look, look a bit lost there, rather than throwing the ball out wide. And he had it coming back inside uh, to, the, to the same direction. And Vidya just ran in straight into him. Not really using the space, that is what Sevens is all about. And there is the man being penalised, Sedavini Natao Tange. Fijian born and just flew in with the, uh, the wild shot as we see Sasanta there, Chula Sasanta. That must have taken some time to do that hairstyle. <laughs> like the colour. Yeah. Roach. Point. Set. Feed is there, Mulivoru, he had to be offside, well milked as well from Costa, 
And now he taps and gives it out to Kaka. Kaka with one player on the outside. The late cut coming in from Dananjaya. He's lost it forward and sealing as well. So double whammy. And shortly the Central Kings will go back to the seven players they have because Matt Turner's come on the field for the Sinbin player. Now they get it wide. Here is Naikasu. Naikasu up the middle. Now he looks for some support. Vilvada has it wide. He's got plenty of pace, but uh, Mickelson comes across and makes a crucial tackle and a steal as well. Six. Six. Need a space. Space. Wow, well, space is what's been called for. There's plenty of it out here on the left-hand side. Pitu now goes into a big tackle from Tilsley. Here's the first touch for Matt Turner. Good leg drive. Pitu has it back, and now they look to find some space out on the right-hand flank. Naikasu stepping. Into heavy traffic, popping the ball back. Ratwate has it. Turner is there, Ratwate, just trying to find some valuable meters, but he's tur no, been turned no, over. No, Kaka has it illegally. The playing no, the ball on the ground, so a frantic no, no, pace. And great to see that the Central Kings trying to get back in this game. He couldn't help himself there, Kaka. He's just, he was just falling on, on his way on the ground. He was just falling and saw the ball right in front of me. <laughs> just picked it up and chucked it to his side. Well, Matt Turner has it now. Turner goes across the field. Passes it back to Ratwate. He pops it up and turns to Pitu. Pitu's been good since he's come on. Well, is that a scrag or is that a legal tackle? Referees says play on and Matt Turner will score. Good advantage from the officials and well done from Pitu. There's the conversion from Turner. He knows that the clock is counting down. So now they trail by two. 14-7. Turner with the try and conversion. Yes, they've got it. They're down by two points if we look at the replay. Referee, um, credit to the referee giving, uh, playing an advantage and Turner just saw the opportunity. Paul lying there just in front of him. And Matt Turner just picking it up and giving themselves a chance. Well, now they've got it back and Vilvada's racing away. Wow, sloppy work from the Uva Vipers. Not concentrating on what was happening and all of a sudden within the space of 30 seconds, they've gone from trailing by nine to now leading. You just can't give that um, bit of out of that much of space and that much of a chance. It was a quick um, quick restart by the Central Kings and bit of other saw a lot of space in front of him and just took the ball and just raced away. Conversion's good as well. So 19, 14. Now the kickoff. There's the siren, so the Vipers need the ball, they need possession. This will mean that the Central Kings will win. They just need to kick the ball out. They're ahead by five. Why would you keep playing? Get the ball and kick it out, Mulivoru. There you go, he's heard me. That's exactly what he's done. Siren's gone, and the Central Kings will take third place in the Carlton Super 7s for 2014. Well, what a turnaround in 30 seconds. That was, uh, they were down by, we're down by seven. Um, Seven points and uh, Central Kings credit, credit to them after to Mac Turner score that try. It was a quick turnaround, quick um, Vipers went to sleep and the quick uh, kickoff. Just confirmation then, securing it for the Central Kings. They are third place winners here in the first tournament, the first weekend of the sevens. Tim Bickelson started off the try scoring with his first of two tries and this was the second one there on the cut. And Central Kings just before the breakthrough in Mossi Mulivoto scored the try to make it 14-5 and then Matt Turner got involved from the bench and there is Vilvada racing away to secure the win for the Central Kings. And now the all-important match. Who wants to dominate? Who wants to win the inaugural tournament of 2014? The two informed teams, the Southern Sharks are taking on the Western Warriors. Terrific anticipation around the ground here. Two of the best teams over the last two days. And Dinuk, where's your money? Who are you backing? Uh, I certainly back Warriors because they have a set of pigeons there. But uh, when you back local talent, uh, really, there's Srinath Surya Bandara. Chanaka Chandibal, Shenal Dias and Vishwamitra Jaising have been outstanding for the Southern Sharks. But still, I'll put my money on uh, the Western Warriors. 
All right, well, you're a young man that probably doesn't earn a lot of money. I was going to have a little bet with you, a little wager that the loser buys a drink at the fortress across the road from where we are because it's really expensive over there. So we won't have that wager because I know you're not a gambling man. I'm not. <laughs> so the Western Warriors, full of class. I'm back in the Southern Sharks. If uh, my co-commentator is going to take the Warriors, we can't both be back in the same team. And there it is, the Sharks against the Warriors and the lovely touch here between all the players even before they run out you can see both teams just patting each other some jokes obviously from some of the team members as well in particular Fijians there is Yoshita Rajapaksa what an ambassador what a leader what a player he has been over the last two days he's been fantastic for Sri Lanka as well from St. Thomas's College Went on to play for Navy Sports Club and Sri Lanka. And also Sri Nath Surya Bandara and the other, some of the other Sharks will know Satpanat Kavu, also their coach. One of the Southern Sharks today, good victory against the Typhoon, 17-12. They struggled a little bit there. And then uh, comprehensive against the Uber Vipers. Uh, sorry, the, the Central Kings rather for the Southern Sharks, 28-14. The Western Warriors, they beat the Eagles 19-12 and then they thumped the Vipers. 36 mil. There are the superstars on screen. Colini Sal. So much falls on his shoulders for the Southern Sharks. It's been fantastic. And you have Lee Kegel there, the young player from Havelock Sports Club. Yeah, big moment for Lee Kegel. It's his first start in the run on seven. Cena set. New Zealand referee on the seventh circuit is Richard Kelly. <laughs> He blows the whistle and Lotte Reichenbuller now gets us underway. This is what you train for to play in the big arena. We're into the final. Lost forward by Piutuai, but the play continues as the Southern Sharks with possession playing from right to left as you see it on your screen. Get it out to Kalini Sao. Kalini Sao is met in a full on tackle from Lutu Mailangi. Two teammates stepping inside and outside is Kunatani. Now he's being oh. wrapped up. The Warriors come swarming in. They try to get him to ground. It's effective turnover oh. and good start for the Warriors. Yeah, it's been a good start for the Warriors. And I thought Southern Sharks had pushed him but couldn't manage to break that defensive line there. The Nusi Chaturanga turning over that ball, picking it up and running hard. But uh, from there on, no one managed to head up and find a gap through the Western Warriors' defence. Well, what a back line the Warriors can host. Rakim Buller at the first receiver. Lutu Mailangi and then out wide is Wanga Mailangi who is top try scorer here at the Carlton Super 7s. 11 tries to his name over two days. There is Lotte Raikambula. 105 tries that he scored over his nine years of playing for the All Black 7s. Stands in the sweeper role. Kiel can't get it but Raju Parksa can. Breaks around, breaks the first tackle and now they go into the 22. High tackle says the referee has been picked up by the man on the moment. Joseph Daini scores! A beautiful try. Excellent work from Yoshita Rajapaksha and the forwards work together. Pushing through, coming off that scrum. Lee Eagle not to be able to pick up, but uh, loose ball there. Yoshita Rajapaksha picks it up. There you go. Look at the try. Really under the post. Much important conversion coming up. Successful from Wangavulangi right between the posts and so dream start for the Western Warriors they certainly have been the form team here over the last two days unbeaten on day one taking care of the Gladiators Jaffna the Sharks and the Blacks and they came today with a totally different purpose I saw them here last year where they won every game on day one turned up and lost the first game on day two today totally different mindset they really are going about their work as true professionals yeah, they will be they have a fantastic side the Western Warriors Rakambula restarts again, a light breeze, 2-Y goes up, doesn't even bother to contest on that occasion. And now they just try and flick it back to the Sharks. Rovovo, Rovovo, the big fend. And now he gets it back into the hands of Jaya Singer. He's a good player, Jaya Singer. Rovovo has done very well to elude two, three, four players. And now he spins. Kalini Sao just gets it out the back door. One more pop pass. And unfortunately, Surya Bandara couldn't handle it. No arms. No arms in that tackle, so Tuwai quickly gets to the mark and taps. Dias is out to the right-hand side. Kalini Sal identifies that. Surya Bandara 
He's got to play him on the outside. It's Dias. Dias on the inside, but Surya Bandar is going to back his pace. Back in defence. Wangavulangi. Counter ruck comes in. The ball is sitting there. Counter ruck's good. Well, turnover is good, says the referee. So the Sharks have got the ball. It's Dias who's done brilliantly to steal it. Two Y. Cleans out. They've got lots of players out here to the left, but Two Y's going to try and take them on by himself. The offload has been lost forward to his teammate in Kolini Sal. That was a good bit of continuity from the Southern Sharks. What happened a couple of phases before was the Western Warriors defense swarmed in and uh, this was always coming because they had men on the outside. And from there on, a contest on the ruck, unfortunately just slipping out of the hands in the end. I'm not sure whether Surya Bondala did the right thing of kicking the ball. He had Dias there, all he had to do was draw on the last defender and give Rich. it to the big man. Point. Six. Crucial mistakes. You don't get too many opportunities in finals footy. And that was one that they've actually just butchered. And now racing back is Jaya Singer. There is the sweeper in Surya Bandara, but a big tackle coming in. And not, release. not releasing. Here goes the Navovo. Navovo. Now he spins it wide to Colini Sal. Colini Sal. Puts on the accelerator first into the tackle of Kegel. No, Volvo clears. Tackle only. Jaya Singer now gets it wide to Dincha. Dias is there, so is Two Y. That is Two Y. Dias is on the outside. Now they come into support. Cleared beautifully. Jaya Singer. Now Volvo. Yeah, breakdown in communication there between the two Fijians. Colin Nisau looking for the cut coming on the inside and the pass went wide. Yeah, Colin Nisau uh, looking for the inside pass and there was a gap opened up slightly there. You can see the replay. Look at that. And the cut inside, Lee Kegel also would have been wrong footed. But unfortunately, lacking of communication. So the Western Warriors leading 7-0 into the final minute and a half of the first half. Rajapaksa rises high and pulls it down. Kegel comes around and loops. Latirakimbola now he pops it off to Lutu Mailangi. Good tackle there coming in from Rovovo. Malinisau well, is there as well and the referee says you've got to roll away from there. The opportunity for the Southern Sharks to pin the Western Warriors down in their own half. Just There you go, the first lady is standing up and watching. She's so interested. <laughs> wow, if she's standing, everyone else should be as well. What a game. Dean Sharp looks out to the right and he gives it back to Ravovo. Now Colin Excel, there's a gap, half a gap, but it closes quickly. He gets it out to Ravovo. Ravovo looking for the corner. Beautiful tackle coming in from Wanga Luvangi. Ball is there, and the referee ceiling. said sealing off. Just going straight in, not making it a contest. There's the support from the Southern Shark supporters. They want to score now. They want to turn this into territory, into possession, and it's points. Dinsha goes in. Finally, the Sharks are on the board. Excellent try. It was all made up there by Rovovo, who broke through and gave the ball in there. From there on, it was a penalty awarded for the Southern Sharks. Dinusha Tathuranga, quick tap taken and jumped into the corner. And the Southern fans happy because we are playing in the Southern Territory of Sri Lanka, Billy. Let's go, boys. So, the fans here from Gaul, Matra, everyone would have been up in Kokala. They are jumping up. Brilliant stuff. It's been told he's got 10 seconds now to try and convert. Ralvovo, he struck it beautifully. He struck it very nicely. And just to the right. Quality match here on CSN. Hope you're enjoying it, whether wherever you're watching around Sri Lanka or the world course live streaming all of the matches right throughout the two days I hope you can join us in seven days time as we take this beautiful carnival and festival on the road to Colombo 7-5 final moments of the first half lovely restart nice and high giving the supporters a chance to get up but it's battered back from Volta right back to the goal line they've got to have to play it from here Kegel he put it down that's that's Back, so it's going to be a five-meter scrum. 
an experience there. An experience and uh, he didn't have support also arriving there. But uh, good chase from the Sharks. They ran down to the Western Warriors line, pinned them inside. And Lee Kegel didn't have much options rather than Mark. touching it down in his own goal. Well, uh, Lavovo stands straight behind the scrum. Perhaps. You can see him there in behind the scrum. Behind. Colin Isau, the first receiver. Set. And then one of my favourite players, J.S. Singer, out wide. Can they stomach? Can they get the ball? Around. Yes, says the referee. They've tapped and gone. Surya Bandara. Surya Bandara's in. Oh, that's class. You can't coach that. It's impossible to coach that. It's guts. It's determination. And it's just a willingness to score. Of course, the Southern Shark fans. Look at that from Surya Bandara. Pace. Running off two defenders. Lutu Bailagi and Yoshita Rajapaksa flat footed they are running around them and he touches down Srinath Surya Bandara this little lad is making miracles here and down there you go Srinath Surya Bandara Here's the conversion, conversion to come Ralvovo converts it and so they take a five point lead as we enter half time what an impression he has made I thought that he blew a try earlier where he kicked it and he shouldn't have. On that occasion, he just tapped the ball and he backed his skills. Well done, young man. Well, he is young compared to me anyway. <laughs> Two wide goes up and pats it back. But old Volvo has it. Now he puts on the accelerator straight through the first, the second. And there's the tackle coming in from Kegel. <laughs> Holding on to the ball is... The official here, Volta gets it. And now they get it out to Lutumailangi. Lutumailangi just losing it forward was one of Rulangi. Too white. That's the siren for the end of the first half. And so, ball lost forward. No real advantage there. And we will head to Oranges. Half time here, two tries to one. The Western Warriors scored first through Joseph Nangi. And then it was Dinsha and Surya Bandara, two of the superstars of Sri Lankan rugby scoring for the Sharks. We head to the break. It is 12-7. Isn't it amazing? And I've always said that on, on, on game day, on finals day, you rely not only on your international players that are here, you rely on your local talent. And to see a scoreline where Dinsha and Surya Bandada's names are on in the finals just goes to show how much Sri Lankan rugby is improving. Yes, it is. And all great go should go to the event organisers. Events like this being organised and also the nutrition provided for the players and the size they have become now and their technique is improving even from yesterday to today they're not kicking at all keeping the position in play and small made players like Surya Bandara just relying on their pace and look how much difference they can do yeah they've really starved the high flying western warriors of position they've been very very efficient have the southern sharks that when they've got an opportunity they've taken it first occasion they scored and then the second try Another mistake from the Warriors where it was batted back from a kickoff from Volta. Kegel was there and he just placed it dead in the in goal area. That forced a five metre scrum, an infringement there. And all of a sudden, the Southern Sharks lead by five. Yeah, now we'll see some replacements for sure from the Western Warriors. No, they're sticking on to the same side. I'm sure Satapano Kakao would have been having some quite harsh words at them. <laughs> he was walking off the field and he was having a conversation with Kalini Sao, who's in the opposite opposite team. But of course, both of them have played for Fiji on so many occasions. I think they were sharing a, a little joke. I don't think Thakau saw the funny side of it because he looked at the scoreline, which reads, the Southern Sharks 12, the Western Warriors 7. <laughs> Underway now, the Southern Sharks through Rovovo playing left to right. As the Warriors in the all-white strip. First possession for the Sharks and Alvovo. Steps. Tries to get through. The first tackle and does so. That ball's played on the ground right in front of the referee by Lutu Bailangi. And that's a cardinal sin. You can't play the ball when it's on the ground there. And Alvovo looks like he's injured. That's not a good sign for the Sharks. And 
uh, the referee there clearly mentioning Rekabula that uh, he cannot play the ball on the ground. The clock has been stopped. Yeah, but this actually works in the favour of the Sharks as well. They'll want to slow the game down. They're ahead on the scoreboard. The Western Warriors are desperate to carry on and to keep possession. One of the try scorers, City Abandada, to two wide. Has Dias on the outside, but opts to come back this way. Raul Volvo, Colini Sal. I say Colini Sal. Into contact. Chaya Singer is there, as is Raul Volvo. Now two wide. Dummy, dummy, dummy. The flick, the spin, now they've got to offload. Oh, if Jaya Singer had held that, it was try time. Raja Paksa gets back, advantage over. Try scorer in the first half, breaks free. He's got Kegel on the inside, Surya Bandala comes at him. Bandala comes at him again. What a pest and what a brilliant tackle as well. Quality work there on Vota. And now he's got to his feet and he's got position. Now they push it back, here's Dias. Big and strong is Chanel Dias. Offside. Playing the ball illegally. Well, wow. I'm running out of superlatives to talk about Surya Bandara. He got beaten firstly and then he came back again. Yeah, he's fantastic, isn't he? From from a schoolboy, he was recognized. He played for Isipatana College, played as a scrum up there with Dinusha Chaturanga under his captaincy, then moved down to the club season. And what a play he is. No wonder. No wonder Sri Lanka well, wanted let's him. Let's have a look at it. Direct there. Look at that, look at that tackle. First time, beautifully taking him down. The big man. No, no, you're on. And then he got to his feet immediately. That was the other thing that impressed me. Anthony is on now. He's replaced Dias. So fresh legs. And the Sharks just slowing things down in no hurry at all to firstly get the ball into touch. And look at them just walking up to the line out. They, know just, they just have to run the time on the clock. They will have this game sealed if so, but just a converted try. Well, five points is the difference. So a converted try will win the game. Up high, going high and tapping it back. Two wise there, it's been lost forward. So first real mistake from the Sharks in the second half. Yeah, look at them, uh, really, as you said correctly. No worry at all. Kegel now to feed the scrum. Thakao is on. Player coach. Raikambula says, give me the ball. You go out there and play standoff. So Raikambula will feed the scrum. Kegel standing in behind. Thakao to his right. Good feed. Now we go along the chain. Here's Thakao. Setefano looks. And then the cut. The late cut. On the cut is Wangavulangi. Turnover to the Sharks though, this is good play. Looks like it's been knocked forward. And it has, so the Sharks had it. They panicked a little bit there, they didn't need to. They couldn't believe they turned the ball over. <laughs> they couldn't, and they couldn't even believe looking at the scoreboard, I guess. Well, they've got to have a lot of belief now. We're into the last three and a half minutes of this, the final between the Southern Sharks on the left of your screen and the Western Warriors. There's the ball, picked it up. He just needed to go. Crutch. The ditch up. Mine! to pass it back, but they've got the scrum. Set piece is equally strong. Kicking the ball out. Kicking the ball, says the man from New Zealand, and they're just going to walk their way up here now. Look at them. The ball out the there is no hurry at all from the Southern Sharks. I wait for a kick into touch. The kick through there from the opposition, and now Rovovo. Make sure it goes out. That's the first thing. And they've done just that. Now they'll walk to the line out. 90 seconds remain on the clock. Same score that we had at half time. Southern Sharks 12, the Western Warriors 5. 7 rather. 12 7. No worry at all coming into the line out. Surya Bandara, the try scorer. Nice little move there just to the front of the line out. No Volvo. Call any cell. Jaya Singh is out to his right if he opts to use him. And now he asks him to turn on his pace. Lovely weighted kick, but the sideline wins. Had that stayed in play, who knows who may have won that race. Wish we were through Jaya Singh. They are flying on the right hand corner. Unfortunately, the ball just bouncing into touch. 
The last chance saloon for the Warriors and a quick start too. Raja Paksa gets it and Nanga Levu, he gets it wide to Thakau. Setefano Thakau in, out and then the accelerator. Now he pulls back, looks for the space and there it is. Naingi, Joseph Naingi, Naingi's away. Joseph Naingi is going to run away and score his second try of the game. Put it down to the hard work of Thakau. And then the absolute pace of this young Fijian flyer. We're all tied up, kick to come. What a day. Look at the highlights here. But just before that run from Nahingi, it was Setefano Takao who made that try, who created it on the outside. Just bringing the defense all from left to right. They were all flat-footed inside pass. That went under the post. Now if this conversion goes in, they'll be leading. Wangavulangi converts it. 14-12. There is the conversion. And so now, referee's time. The siren not too far away from sounding. The clock has been stopped because there is an injured player. Lutumailangi. Well, maybe Thakau. I think it is. Yes, it is. So, Setefano Thakau after throwing the big pass in field. may have occurred this will put a lot of pressure on the Sharks waiting for that ball to come to them every minute they wait to put pressure Nangalevu what an impact he's made from the bench big change coming Srinath Surya Bandara taken out Chanaka Chandimal put in for the Southern Sharks uh, some big changes here big moments as well that cast to his feet and now the referee can officiate and uh, there is still time good? on the clock. 14-12, okay, what a final. Two teams desperate, two teams accurate. And well, that's played in the air, so that could have been a penalty. The referee says no, play on. And so Nunga Levu has the ball. Raikin Buller gets it wide to Thakau. He in turn gets it wide again to he's going on the outside, lovely tap but he isn't touch. There's no doubt in my mind that he touched the white line. They've got to come back for the line out. And there are the Sharks desperate to try and get the ball so that they can get it in play. Just before that uh, touch on the line, uh, if you notice the tackle made on Satapana Takao by Vishnu Mitra Jaisinga, he knew he will fall in trouble straight away, ran straight into Satapana Takao, put him down. That's the visual, just pushed it to touch. Wakabulagi. Now the all-important line out, it's been turned over though. So, more possession. And on with it quickly are the Warriors out to Thakau. Now they push back to Raikumbula. Raikumbula. Dummies, one player to beat. Lottie Raikumbula, the strike, the power and the try. Is that the try that seals the championship for the Western Warriors in the first leg of the Carlton Super Sevens? Here we go, the replay. Lotte Rakabula. Look at that. Two step on, pushing it off. He's lost it forward. No try. And so, no try at all. He really, young kids at home, you've Perhaps. got to treat the ball like. Fine. It's bum or dad and you've got to put it down on the Six. ground, you can't just drop it. You've got a treasure possession. Ball is there, it's turned Six. around. No problem at all, but the Sharks have possession and a penalty. Now they'll want to tap and go. Quickly tapped by Chandamal. The kick and the chase skewered out to the left and look at the flying Jaya Singer. Wanted to try and control, that would have been a very good foot race between those two thoroughbreds. Yeah, we should be through Jansing, uh, still has the gas. He's been doing this right throughout this season. To the Southern Sharks. And aren't they fantastic? So now the Western Warriors running down the clock. Yeah, they're in no hurry to get there either. Final seconds Wait. of the game. Now we're into the final moment a try here by the southern sharks will give them the series give them the title 
So crucial this from Kegel that he finds his target. He's done that magnificently taken in by Naingi. Man that scored two tries. Now they've got the ball. Raikin Buller just wants to play for territory. And he's kicked it. As the siren sounds, the referee looks at his watch. And Richard Kelly says it's all over. The Western Warriors are your champions here in the first leg of the Carlton Super 7s. And the Western Warriors will claim the 25 points that are up for offer. And they'll take that through to next week in Colombo. The Sharks on 22. Central Kings 19. The Uber Vipers 16. But look at the jubilation. Look at how much it means to the Western Warriors. There you go, the First Lady. Also very happy. Yoshi the Rajapaksa. The son, of course, leading the Western Warriors. On the other hand, Southern Sharks disappointed. Look at that, the skipper, Yosh the Rajapaksa there. And uh, this will be a very important point to take over as we get the score confirmation. 14 points to 12, just two points really there. There it was, and let's have a hot look at the highlights of this enthralling and magnificent final. And they got off to the perfect start, really, with uh, Naimi. And there it was, Dinship. And then Surya Bandara got involved as well. So they led 12 7 to the Sharks. And then in the second half, Nangi again racing away. So two tries apiece.